Hey, what's up? I'm Ben from blogwithben.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own self-hosted WordPress website, even if you have absolutely zero experience. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a professional website, and I'll also show you how to create a digital product that you could sell on your site to generate a passive income. Now, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I am so glad you're here. My tutorials are known for being very thorough and they go beyond just building your website. I wanna help you start, scale, and monetize it so that you can share your talents with the world and earn a passive income online as well. So with that being said, we got a lot to cover. And be sure to subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel so you can easily get back to this video if you need to. And if you're looking to jump to any particular section of the video, you can find all the timestamps in my show notes below. Next, let's take a closer look at what we're gonna be making in this tutorial. What you're looking at right now is Rosa 2. And this is the premium WordPress theme that we'll be using to build your website. It has a ton of amazing features, and out of all the themes that I've created tutorials about, Rosa 2, hands down, gives you the most flexibility when it comes to customizing your site. Now, the Rosa 2 theme was created by Pixelgrade, and I absolutely love Pixelgrade because they bring you design-driven WordPress themes that can help you start a website and stand out from the crowd. Trusted by over 60,000 people, Pixelgrade themes are packed with a powerful yet easy to use visual system that gives you the flexibility to make a truly beautiful and unique website. Additionally, their company is backed by people who care about their customers' success. You really can't go wrong with Pixelgrade WordPress themes. Now, the Pixelgrade theme we're using in this video is called Rosa 2. And although it's touted as being a restaurant WordPress theme, we're gonna be using it as a health and fitness theme. But that's the beautiful thing about the Rosa 2 theme. It's extremely flexible and can be used for any industry or niche. And let's take a look at some of the features. For starters, the homepage comes with multiple hero blocks that have special scrolling effects. These built-in animations give life to your website, helping your content stand out and make a great first impression. Additionally, this theme comes with an innovative tool called the Style Manager that allows you to easily customize your logo, colors, fonts, and overall styling to match your particular brand. Rosa 2 also comes with the new block feature that allows you to quickly and easily build stylish and professional looking pages that normally would have taken hours to code and build. However, with this new block feature, you can build anything from landing pages to an online store and start selling digital products from your site in a few short hours. Now the blogging features include a beautifully and uniquely designed blog feed that displays full width blog posts. This allows you to present your content in a minimalist design that encourages users to engage with your content and stay on your site. Those are important metrics for SEO and can help your site rank in the search engines. Additionally, I'm gonna give you access to my code cheat sheet, which saves you the headache of having to manually code everything yourself. My code cheat sheet lets you easily copy and paste the ready-made code and gives you the ability to customize every aspect of this theme so that it fits your style and overall brand. And no website is complete without having a way for you to build your following. And this theme allows lead generation capabilities and it can help you build and grow your email list. I'm gonna show you how to set up your email marketing campaigns, create a landing page, and install an opt-in form within your website. This is the perfect launch pad for any digital business, and I'm gonna show you how to build everything you've seen so far, step-by-step. Step. And one final note, people nowadays are spending an increased amount of time on their mobile devices, which means they'll expect your site to be responsive. Having a responsive design not only helps you meet and exceed these expectations, but as of April 1st, 2015, Google Search expanded its use of mobile friendliness as a ranking signal. So if you wanna be found on Google, your site needs to be responsive. And as you can see, Rosa 2 is 100% responsive and it looks great too. The user experience on the desktop is mimicked on any mobile device or tablet, and the responsiveness of this theme can assure you that you're meeting the mobile requirements of Google's search algorithm. And that's the great thing about WordPress and Pixelgrade. They offer some pretty substantial layouts whenever you compare them to the other premium themes on the market. For example, this premium theme is going for about $130, and that's just for the theme alone. That doesn't even include the professional services to install the theme. Now, as you can see, this company is charging you nearly $400 to do what I'm gonna show you in this very video. Plus, this tutorial includes some web design and development aspects. 
and many WordPress designers will charge thousands of dollars for custom design and development. So if you think about it, you're saving thousands of dollars if you follow my video and just do it yourself. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so as always, I've packed this tutorial with a ton of value, but here are the main topics that we're gonna cover in this video. First, you're going to learn how to set up your web hosting account using Bluehost Web Hosting. Next, we're going to install the free WordPress.org software. Then we're gonna install the premium WordPress theme called Rosa 2. Next, you're gonna learn how to set up your website for success by installing plugins and creating a child theme for your site. Then you're going to learn how to design your website and create a truly unique experience for your site's visitors. Then I'll show you how to create and publish a media-rich blog post that will keep your audience engaged and coming back for more. You're also going to learn how to use HTML and CSS to customize your site's overall look and feel. I'm also going to show you how to install an AWeber opt-in form and create a landing page so that you can grow your audience with email marketing. You're also going to learn how to implement multiple revenue streams and monetize your website so that you're setting yourself up to earn a passive income online. And this includes building an online store and creating your own digital products to sell from your website. After that, I'll show you how to create a sitemap, set up your Google Search Console account, and implement SEO strategies so that you can work your way towards getting on the first page of Google's search results. And finally, you're going to learn how to secure your site and keep it safe from outside threats. Next, I want to go over what your investment will be when it comes to building a premium WordPress website. Now, if you're serious about turning your site into a business, then there will be some initial costs up front. But if you set up your site the way I show you in this video, you can monetize it and potentially have it pay for itself and much, much more. However, we all start somewhere, and in the beginning, you'll need to invest in yourself in order to be successful. So with that being said, here are the costs associated with building a premium, self-hosted WordPress website. First is web hosting. And for this video, we'll be using Bluehost. Now, we'll cover all the specifics and features of Bluehost in greater detail a little later on in the video, but just know that Bluehost is a great fit for WordPress websites, and web hosting is an essential part of starting any type of blog or website. Plus, all Blog with Bin viewers get a special offer for their web hosting for only $2.95 per month. Next is the Rosa 2 Premium WordPress theme. And this amazing theme has a ton of features that I'll show you in a few minutes and is affordably priced at only $95. Plus, that is a one-time fee, meaning you only have to pay that once and you get lifetime access to all the benefits and support that come with the premium Rosa 2 WordPress theme. Now, there is a free version of the theme that you can use instead, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes, but just know that in this video, we'll be using the premium version of Rosa 2 so that you can gain access to all the benefits that it has to offer. Next is your email marketing platform. And for this video, we'll be using AWeber. Now, I personally use AWeber on blogwithbin.com, and I've seen a ton of success from it over the years, so that's why I'm recommending it in this video. Plus, AWeber offers a 100% free plan to help you get started with email marketing and the AWeber platform. There's no credit card needed, no time restrictions, and you don't have to pay anything until you get 500 subscribers. But AWeber's free plan is a great way to get your feet wet with email marketing and start building your list. Finally, we'll be using eJunkie as our digital product e-commerce platform. And if you plan on selling digital products on your website, leveraging eJunkie will allow you to facilitate the entire sales funnel and checkout process with a few clicks of the mouse. Now, eJunkie starts at only $5 per month, but if you've lost income due to COVID-19, they'll give you a year subscription for free. Now, when it's all said and done, if you decide to build a premium WordPress website using this tutorial and sell digital products, your cost breakdown will look like this. Web hosting will be around $71 per year. The Rosa 2 theme will be a one-time fee of $95 plus tax. AWeber will be completely free for beginners. And the eJunkie digital product sales platform will be $5 per month. So your initial investment will only be around $175 for a professional website. However, prices may vary depending on the web hosting, eJunkie, and pixel grade plans that you decide to purchase. 
But either way, starting a professional WordPress website for under $200 is a great deal, and you're literally saving thousands of dollars by making it yourself. But remember, you're going to learn how to monetize your website so that you can start earning a passive income with your digital platform. And like I said, I know that there are some initial investments with a premium WordPress website, but if you monetize your site, you can have it work for you and can potentially have it pay for itself. The monetization strategies and techniques you're gonna learn in this video are the same ones that I use on blogwithbin.com. And as you can see in 2020, I was able to generate around $80,000 from just three digital products. This has definitely paid for all of my blog's expenses and changed my life in the process. And I'm not trying to brag or boast by showing you this. I just wanna show you that earning a decent amount of money with a website is possible. For example, this affiliate product brought me a little over $70,000 this year, as well as these two products. They generated around $12,000 this year as well. That's over $80,000 of passive income from just three digital products. So if you're on the fence about paying for a premium website, I totally understand that, but just know that in this video, I'm gonna show you how to monetize your site so you could potentially earn a return on your investment and have your website pay for itself. Finally, this is all important because blogging and having a website has become a billion dollar industry. And the sooner that you can get your foot in the door, the quicker you'll be able to start generating revenue with your site. So with that being said, let's get started with the step-by-step -step tutorial and make your website. All right, now in this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to set up your very own self-hosted WordPress website using Bluehost Web Hosting. Now, I personally use both of these services for the majority of my web properties, and just know that after this tutorial, you're gonna have an extremely powerful digital platform that will allow you to scale and monetize your site very quickly. Now, this tutorial will be taking you through my Bluehost affiliate link. And all that means is that if you decide to make a purchase, I'll earn a small commission. But by doing so, you're helping me keep my blog up and running and you're helping me provide for my family. So for that, I truly thank you. Plus, this link is an exclusive offer for WordPress users. Bluehost has partnered with WordPress and as you'll see in a few moments, this exclusive offer is packed with some amazing features. It really is a phenomenal partnership that they've developed. Additionally, whenever you sign up for Bluehost web hosting, you'll gain access to their new WordPress expert support service called BlueFlash. This is a totally free service for all Bluehost customers that provides you with your very own personal WordPress expert to help you get your website initially configured and launched. Now, you're gonna learn everything you need to know and more in this video tutorial, and I pride myself on being available to anyone who has questions or needs some extra help setting up their website, but this Blue Flash launch service is just an added layer of support where you can actually talk to somebody on the phone in real time if you come across any issues while building your WordPress website. And one final note, this offer comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so rest assured that you can get a full refund if you need to. With that being said, let's get started. So the first step in this entire process is to sign up for web hosting. And in order for you to take advantage of Bluehost's exclusive offer for WordPress users, you have a couple options. If you're watching this video on YouTube, simply click on the Bluehost link within the show notes below the video titled Access to Bluehost's Exclusive Offer. And again, that's an affiliate link. Or if you're watching this video on blogwithbin.com, simply click on the Resources tab in the menu at the top of the screen. And this will take you to my Resources page. And as you can see, I list all of the tools and resources that I use on a daily basis that have helped me find success online. Now, whenever you have some extra time, I really encourage you to take a closer look at everything on this page. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be setting up your web hosting account. So to get started, simply click on the Try Bluehost button. And again, this button is also an affiliate link. And as you can see, this is a special offer for Blog with Ben viewers. By using my affiliate link, you'll get a free domain, a free SSL certificate, an automatic WordPress install, access to Bluehost's new user dashboard, which is an amazing new feature, over $175 in free advertising offers from Google and Bing, and 24-7 technical support, 
all for only $2.95 per month. I should also mention that the $2.95 per month price is exclusively for Blog with Ben viewers. So just know that you're saving a ton of money on web hosting by using my affiliate link. Plus, because this package is optimized for WordPress, your web host servers come with proven performance, reliability, and functionality that will give your website a strong foundation for long-term success. Bluehost web hosting coupled with WordPress.org software is by far one of the strongest website platforms available. So to get started, simply click on the green Get Started Now button. And that's going to take us to the Select Your Plan page. And as you can see, you have a few options here. The Basic, Plus, and Choice plans. Then there's even a Go Pro plan. And again, this is all personal preference and your choice really depends on how you're running your website and online business. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the basic plan, which allows us to host one domain. And I should also mention again that Bluehost gives us this domain for free, which is pretty cool. However, if you plan on having multiple domains and websites, then I highly recommend going with either the plus or choice plus plan. These plans allow you to host unlimited websites and also come with over $200 in advertising offers from Google and Bing. Then, if you have the budget for it, I also highly recommend going with the Go Pro plan. This includes all the features in the Choice Plus plan, as well as a dedicated IP address, a high performance server, and much, much more. However, for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the basic plan. So once you've decided on what plan you're going to use, go ahead and click the green select button within that plan. And that will take us to the domain setup page where you have a couple of different options. On the left hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you don't have a domain name. And on the right hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you do have an existing domain. Now I should mention that if you're signing up with an existing domain, there are a couple of extra steps that you'll need to do in order to transfer that domain. However, for this tutorial, we'll be signing up with our brand new free domain name. So if you have an existing domain, you'll still follow along in this video, but after you're done with this tutorial, there's still a few extra steps that you'll need to do in order for your blog to be hosted with Bluehost. Luckily, I've made a separate video that walks you through that entire process. It's titled How to Point a Domain to Bluehost, and you can access it in the show notes below this video. All right, so we're going to be using our brand new free domain. So on the left-hand side of the screen under New Domain, just type in your desired domain name and click the blue Next button. And then if your domain is available, you'll get a green notification on the next screen letting you know that it is, and you can begin to create your Bluehost account. So this is the account information page and it's pretty self-explanatory, but this is where you'll enter your account, package, and credit card information. Now, if you have a Gmail or Google account, you can bypass this part and just sign in with Google. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna create a new account through Bluehost. So I'm actually gonna blur it out while I enter in my personal information, but I wanted to take a second to reiterate why Bluehost is so helpful to the WordPress community and their users. For starters, Bluehost has a 24-7 WordPress support system in place, so if you ever need any additional help or have any questions, they are there for you. They also have a one-click WordPress installation feature, which we're going to go over in a couple of minutes, but this makes getting your blog up and running a cinch. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked, so if for any reason you're unsatisfied with the service, you can get your money back. And finally, Bluehost is actually recommended by WordPress. Bluehost and WordPress have worked closely together since 2005 to create a hosting platform that's ideal for running a WordPress website. So you honestly cannot go wrong. Now the next thing you're gonna select is your package information. And as you can see from the drop down menu, you have a couple of options here. One thing to keep in mind about the pricing is that the longer the subscription, the lower the monthly price. So if you opt to purchase the 36 month plan, your monthly rate will only be $2.95 per month and you'll lock in that rate for three years. However, if you purchase a shorter monthly plan, then your monthly rate will be a little higher. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be going with the 12 month plan, which is only $4.95 per month, but that's still a great deal. You're getting a ton of value for less than a cup of coffee per month. Then once you've selected your plan, you have the option of adding some additional features to your plan. 
These are 100% optional, but I highly recommend that you at least select the domain privacy protection add-on. Reason being, anytime you purchase a domain, your personal information is viewable on the Whois directory, meaning anyone can find your personal info online. However, with the domain privacy protection add-on, it will keep your personal information safe and secure and will make it undetectable in the Whois directory. So it's totally worth the 99 cents per month, in my opinion. Now, the SiteLock Security, CodeGuard, SEO Tools, and Office 365 Mailbox are all optional, but for this tutorial, we're only going to add on the domain privacy protection. So you can uncheck the boxes next to the other add-ons. Now, another thing I want to point out is that Bluehost is extremely transparent with their pricing, which is why I use and recommend them. And as you can see, they display your price as you're deciding on which package to purchase. This also gives you peace of mind, and the upfront pricing assures you that there will be no surprises with your bill. Alright, next, you're going to select your payment option and enter your billing information. And you can either pay by credit card or PayPal, which is pretty convenient. But one thing I should mention is that you'll be billed annually. And all this means is that you'll be billed once a year for your hosting plan. And as you can see from my Bluehost email receipt, I purchased the basic 12 month starter plan that comes with a free SSL certificate and a free domain name, but I purchased the domain privacy protection add-on and my total cost is only $71.28 per year, which comes out to $5.94 per month. That's less than a cup of coffee per month to have your own website. And there are design companies and freelancers that charge anywhere from $400 to $10,000 to build a WordPress website. But we're doing it for less than $100. That is unreal and a huge savings. And once you've entered all the required payment information, click the small box confirming that you've read and agree to the terms of service, cancellation policy, and acknowledge the privacy policy, and then click the green submit button. And the next page is the account confirmation page showing your receipt. And one thing to note is that Bluehost conveniently emails you all of this information. And again, as you can see from my confirmation email, Bluehost provides all the specifics of my hosting account within this email. So be sure to keep an eye out for it and always keep this information in a safe and secure location. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is create a password for your account. So to get started, click the create account button. and then you'll be taken to the page where you'll manage your password. So where it says create password, simply enter your desired password and be sure to make it strong yet unique. And if you're having trouble coming up with a password, Bluehost has a suggest strong password feature where if you click on that, it'll auto generate a strong password for you. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then right below that, retype your new password. Now, I highly recommend that you copy and paste the password in a safe and secure location like an Excel spreadsheet, separate file, or a Google Doc. It's just a good idea to always have a backup of your password. Plus, you're going to need it in a few moments to log into your new account, so keep it handy. All right, after you've created your password, you should get two green checkmark icons letting you know that the passwords match. Then I'm actually going to reset my password really quick just for security purposes. Next, go ahead and check the small box confirming that you've read and agree to the Bluehost privacy policy in terms of service and click the Create Account button. And beautiful, your account is ready to go and it's time to log in. So click the Go to Login button. And this will take you to the Bluehost login portal. Now, anytime you want to access the back end of Bluehost and your WordPress blog, you'll do so through this portal. And to get here, simply go to bluehost.com and click on the login link at the top of the screen. And that will bring you to the login portal, which is what you're looking at right now. Now, one thing to pay attention to is to make sure that you have hosting login selected. There's an option to log into your webmail, but we haven't set that up yet. So if you're wanting to access your blog, make sure the hosting login button is selected. 
Then simply enter your email or domain name as the username and then enter the password that you created when you signed up with Bluehost and click the login button. Next, you'll be presented with a couple of quick onboarding steps. In the first step, Bluehost will ask a couple of quick questions to get a better idea of what type of website you're creating. So the first question, what kind of site are you creating? And if I'm being perfectly honest, it really doesn't matter what you select here because we're creating all three. This tutorial is going to show you how to create a blog, an online store, and a digital business. So like I said, it doesn't really matter which one you select here. Bluehost is using this to gauge what plugins and extensions to recommend to you. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to select blog. Then the next question is what type is it? And for this tutorial, we're creating a health and fitness website. So I'm going to select health from the dropdown. The next question is who are you creating a site for? And for this video, I'm assuming that you're creating the site for yourself. So select myself from the dropdown and click the continue button. Next, Bluehost is asking you what pages you want to add to your site. Again, it doesn't necessarily matter what you choose here because we're going to be reconfiguring your site altogether, but I recommend you either skip this step or just click the continue button. Next, Bluehost has a few more questions and will ask you to create your site title and tagline. And your site title and tagline are used in a few different places on your blog, one being in the tab of the browser. And this helps the reader distinguish which tab is what, and it creates a good user experience as well. Next, it's used in the search engine snippets for your search results. This is important when it comes to SEO, and it also creates a good user experience. So Bluehost is conveniently taking care of this step by making it a part of the onboarding process. You used to have to change the title and tagline in the back end of WordPress, but now where it says, what do you want to name your site? Go ahead and enter the name of your website. And for this tutorial, I'm creating a health and fitness site. So I'm calling this Beach Bootcamp Fitness. Then directly below that, add a catchy tagline. And mine's going to say, get the healthy body you deserve. Next, Bluehost is asking how comfortable you are with creating websites. Again, this doesn't necessarily matter because I'm going to be walking you through step by step and show you everything you need to know, but go ahead and select how comfortable you are and then click the continue button. Next, you'll be presented with some WordPress themes you can choose from. Go ahead and click the skip this step link since we'll be installing our own theme a little later on in the video. And congratulations, you're in. What you're looking at right now is Bluehost's new user experience. This is what you'll see every time you log into your account. And Bluehost has really streamlined the entire onboarding WordPress experience, making things easy to find and understand for anyone who is new to managing a blog. And take a look at this. There are companies out there that are charging nearly $400 per month to do what I'm going to show you how to do with Bluehost and WordPress in this very video. Again, this is one of the many reasons why I love the partnership that Bluehost and WordPress have created. And it's also why I'm a huge fan of their new backend interface. And speaking of the new interface, this is what you'll see every time you log in. And this is also how you'll access your WordPress blog, which has automatically been installed. Now, the first thing I want to address is the domain. You're probably wondering why it's looking all weird and funky. Well, that's because this is a temporary domain. And in order for your new domain to display correctly, you'll need to verify your email address and activate your domain. And Bluehost makes this process super simple and sends you an email where all you have to do is click a button. However, please be aware that you'll only have to do this if you registered your domain with Bluehost. If you registered your domain with a service like GoDaddy, then you'll need to follow a few additional steps in order for your domain to work with Bluehost. Again, luckily I've created a video that walks you through that process and the link is in the show notes of this tutorial titled Point Domain to Bluehost. Anyways, keep your eye out for this email from Bluehost. You'll need to verify your email with Bluehost within 14 days or your domain will be deactivated. So I'm going to click the verify your email button
And as you can see, the email has been verified with the Whois directory and your new domain should show up shortly. But like I said, if you're still seeing a weird temporary domain whenever you go to your Bluehost customer portal or visit your blog, don't freak out. It will be automatically updated by Bluehost shortly after you verify your email address and activate your domain within that email that we just went over. Okay, another thing I wanna point out, which is a new feature this year, is the list to launch. So let's go back to our homepage by clicking the Home tab on the left-hand side of the screen. And Bluehost has tried to help streamline the blog setup process by presenting you with a checklist of tasks, which they call their list to launch, where you can complete each task before you launch your blog. My only issue with this is that there isn't really any context and the list can seem a little overwhelming to someone who is just starting out. That's why I recommend that you don't worry about it and just follow my steps in this video. I can assure you that by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a beautiful, professional, and secure WordPress blog. Okay, next, let's start building your blog. So like I previously mentioned, one of the many reasons why I use and recommend Bluehost is that they've streamlined your blog's setup process and automatically install WordPress for you. So to get started with WordPress and access the back end of your blog, click the WordPress button. And just a quick heads up, it may take a few seconds to load if this is your first time logging into WordPress. And congratulations, you're in. You now have one of the most powerful and robust blogging platforms available. Now, before we start making changes, you may see some pop-ups within your dashboard. You can go ahead and close these since I'm gonna be helping you out. And then what you're looking at right now is your WordPress dashboard. This is basically home base for building your blog. Now again, it may seem like a lot if you're just starting out, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know step by step. And one quick thing I wanna point out is that Bluehost created a simplified version of the WordPress dashboard that you can access by clicking on the Bluehost tab on the left-hand side of the screen. Bluehost has basically consolidated the most important parts of building a blog into their own Bluehost dashboard. However, due to recent updates, your dashboard may look something like this. And the reason for this is that I recorded this video prior to a handful of Bluehost updates. So your dashboard may look a little different than mine during this video. Don't worry though, both user experiences are very similar and super easy to figure out. Your dashboard will still have the streamlined steps to launching your website and some how-to tips below that, but I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know in this video, so you don't really need to worry about these right now, but it's still good to know that those resources are there. Another thing I wanna point out about this updated dashboard is that if you click on the question mark icon in the upper right hand side of the screen, it will take you to additional support resources in the Bluehost knowledge base. Again, this is just an added layer of support to help you out if you need it. Also, if you click this person icon, you can access your billing info, additional products, security, and validation token if you need it. But the main reason I wanted to show you this is that you can go back to your Bluehost customer portal by clicking on Bluehost account. And that will take you back to the initial Bluehost portal we were at during the beginning of the video. And like I said, there have been a few updates to Bluehost and WordPress since I created this video that have slightly changed a few things within the user experience. But don't worry, I'll show you exactly what those changes are throughout the video and walk you through everything you need to know step by step. But for now, you should be proud and excited that your website is built on such a strong foundation. Okay, moving on. Next, let's install our premium WordPress theme. In this section of the tutorial, we're gonna go over how to install a WordPress theme to your site. Now, the right WordPress theme can go a long way in your website's success, and this portion of the video will show you how to turn a boring layout into a sleek, innovative, and mobile responsive design. Now, this tutorial is unique because I'm gonna show you how to install and design a premium WordPress theme. And if you're serious about your site and you wanna take it to the next level, then I highly recommend you invest in a premium WordPress theme. However, if you're on a budget and can't invest in a premium theme right now, no worries, there's a free version of this theme that can be used instead. 
Just know that it won't have nearly as many as the features or support that the premium theme offers. But I wanted you to be aware that there's a free version of this theme available. And I'll put a link to the free theme in the show notes titled Rosa 2 Free WordPress Theme. Now, I personally use a premium theme on blogwithbin.com. And that's not to say that free themes aren't exceptional, but premium themes typically give you more features, offer professional technical support, and are much more flexible when it comes to customization and design. Plus, this theme we're going to be using comes with a free child theme. And this is the first theme I've come across that offers that, and that will not only save us a ton of time, but it will allow us to build a much lighter and faster website, which is great for user experience and SEO. And that's just one of the many features and reasons why I decided to create this tutorial around the premium WordPress theme, Rosa 2. So with that being said, let's take a closer look at Rosa 2 and begin the installation process. Okay, so Rosa 2 is a premium WordPress theme that you'll have to access through Pixelgrade, which is the company that created the theme. And you can get the theme by clicking on the link in the show notes below titled Rosa 2 Premium WordPress Theme. Or if you go to my resources page on blogwithbin.com and scroll down to the theme section, you can easily access Pixelgrade and the Rosa 2 theme by clicking on the Try Pixelgrade button. Now just a heads up, both of these links are affiliate links and I will earn a commission if you decide to purchase Rosa 2, but like I said, your support helps me keep my blog up and running and investing in a premium theme is probably the smartest thing I did whenever I started my blog. So it really is a good business decision. All right, so this will take you to the Pixel Grade website and they have a ton of amazing themes available. If you have some extra time, go ahead and browse their selection and check them all out. But for this tutorial, we'll be using Rosa 2. So click on the Rosa 2 graphic or the Browse Themes button to get a much closer look at the theme. And then this page really lets you explore all the features and capabilities of Rosa 2. You can even demo the theme here by clicking on the demo button. And as you can see, it's a beautifully designed theme and surprisingly comes packaged with a ton of amazing features that will not only allow you to build a truly unique and professional website, but it will save you a ton of time because of how packaged and well-built everything comes with this theme. Now I can go on and on about this theme, but trust me when I say that you won't be disappointed with what Rosa 2 can do for your website. Another thing I want to point out before we get started is that you'll probably notice that Rosa 2 is advertised as being the best-selling restaurant WordPress theme. But one of the many reasons why I'm using Rosa 2 for this tutorial is because of how flexible it is. And because of that flexibility, it allows us to use this theme for any niche or industry. So I just wanted you to be aware that this theme isn't only for restaurants. We can use Rosa 2 for a ton of different things. All right, so after you've demoed the theme and you're ready to purchase it, click on the view pricing button. And this will take you to the pricing table where you have a few options on how to buy it. First is a yearly subscription option that costs $75 per year. That equals about $6 per month. And this means that as long as you pay $75 per year, you'll have instant access to Rosa 2, the style manager, one year of support, and one year of updates. However, if you go with the one-time purchase fee, which is what I did and what I recommend doing, then you only pay $95 once. And this gets you instant access, but you also get lifetime premium support from their customer success team and lifetime updates to the theme, which can be extremely important, as there will more than likely be security updates in the future that you'll need to install in order to stay secure. Then there's the themes bundle, which is a higher price point at $498, but this gives you access to every single one of their themes, as well as everything that we just went over. This option is great for anyone who thinks they'll have multiple sites or will be building sites for other people and clients. All right, so for this tutorial, I'm using and recommending the one-time purchase option so that we can get instant access to Rosa 2 and all of the add-ons, and we only have to pay one time. And I also wanna add that you're going to be learning monetization techniques in this video that will give you the ability to implement multiple revenue streams on your website. My blog currently makes anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000 per month from one passive income revenue stream. So I totally understand that purchasing this theme right now may seem like a cost, especially if you're on a budget, but think of it as an investment that can potentially pay for itself and much, much more. All right, so to get instant access to the premium theme, 
click the purchase button. And then you'll be prompted to create your account by entering your name, email address, creating a password, and entering your billing information. And Pixelgrade does offer a theme installation and setup service, but it costs extra. And you can purchase it if you'd like, but I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know in this video. Another thing I wanna add is that Pixelgrade offers a 14 day money back guarantee. So if for any reason you don't like the theme or if it just isn't a good fit for you and your audience, no worries, you can get your money back if you request a refund within 14 days after purchase. And then after you create your account, fill out the payment information and agree to the terms and conditions and privacy policy, go ahead and click the complete my purchase button Then after your payment has been processed, you'll more than likely be taken to a thank you page, but you'll also receive an onboarding email from Pixelgrade that will allow you to download the theme as well. So be sure to check your inbox and keep an eye out for that email. And then once you access it, go ahead and click that download link within the email. And this will take you to the login screen. So let's go ahead and log in to our Pixelgrade account. And then we're using the username and password that you just created a few minutes ago. And this will take you to your Pixelgrade dashboard. This is where you can see your active sites, which will connect after you install the theme. And we'll do that in a few minutes. Then below that is your available themes. And since we just purchased Rosa 2, this is where you can download the theme that you're gonna use on your blog. So let's get this party started. So go ahead and scroll down and click the download button. And after a few seconds, you'll have a zip file containing the theme. This is the file we're gonna to use to install the theme on our WordPress blog. Okay, so now that we have the zip file of Rosa 2, let's go back to WordPress and install the theme. So back at the dashboard, hover your mouse over Appearance on that side nav and click on Themes. And this will bring you to your theme management menu. This is where you can add themes, delete themes, and search for new themes. And by default, WordPress usually comes with a couple of pre-installed themes, but you can ignore them for now. We're gonna be adding a new theme. So click the icon that says add new theme. And this will bring us to the WordPress theme directory. And basically this is where you can browse through the thousands of different themes that WordPress has to offer. Now we already have our theme, so we're not gonna use this directory, but it's good to know that it's here if you need it. Okay, so all we're gonna do is upload, install, and activate the premium Rosa 2 theme. So to get started, click the upload theme button at the top of the screen. And then simply find the zip file that you just downloaded from Pixelgrade. So click that choose file button. It should have Rosa 2 in the file name. And again, it'll be a zipped file. There we go. Then click the Install Now button. And after a few moments, you'll get a notice letting you know that the theme was successfully installed. So go ahead and click the Activate link to activate the theme and make it live. And then Pixelgrade will get to work and start activating your theme. Then once the theme has been fully installed, it's time to go through the Pixel Grade Site Setup Wizard. So to get started, click the Let's Get Started button. And the first step is to connect your blog to pixelgrade.com. This ensures that you'll have access to all of Pixel Grade services and support. So click the Connect to pixelgrade.com button. Then click the Allow button. And then Pixelgrade will begin to connect your site and check your license. This will take a few seconds, so just give it a little time. And then once it's been successfully connected, you'll get a notification there. And then it's time to go through the site setup wizard. So click the continue button.
Next, Pixelgrade has a few plugins they recommend to use with the theme. And for this tutorial, we'll be using Customify, Nova Blocks, and the Contact Forms plugins. But we're not going to be using the HubSpot plugin. Nothing against it, but we're just not using it in this tutorial. So go ahead and make sure those first three boxes are checked and click the Continue button to ensure that they're all installed and activated. And the plugins will begin installing. Now, just a heads up, we're gonna install some additional recommended plugins a little later on in the video during the WordPress setup, but these are a good start. There we go. Then press the Continue button to move on to the next step. Next, you'll have the option to import the starter content. And I actually recommend that you import the starter content for this tutorial because it provides you with a good foundation for the design of your website. Now, please note that the starter content will be installing images that you're not going to use, but we can easily delete those images later on in the video. So go ahead and click the import starter content button. And the import process may take a few minutes, so just sit tight. Then once it's done, you'll get a mission accomplished notification and then go ahead and click the continue button. And congrats, your theme has been successfully connected and set up. Now, even though I'm gonna be walking you through everything you need to know step by step, Pixelgrade has some great resources available to help you build your blog. And I recommend that you check them out when you have some extra time. All right, so with that being said, let's start customizing your blog. So go ahead and click the View and Customize button. And this will take you to your theme's customization menu. And this is our first time opening it, so it may take a few seconds to load. But this is where we'll make the majority of our design changes throughout the video. And you're gonna get very familiar with this customization menu, and we're gonna cover it in greater detail a little later on in the tutorial. And you'll also notice that your site is displaying the restaurant starter content. And don't worry, we're gonna reconfigure and design this whole site, but the starter content gives us a great foundation to build off of so that you're not wasting time trying to figure out how everything is set up in the back end. It's not hard to figure out, but if you're new to this, it can be time consuming and tedious. So having this starter content is a great way to start your website design process off on the right foot. Okay, before we move on, I wanna show you a really cool feature of the premium pixel grade Rosa 2 theme. If you look in the lower right hand side of the screen, you'll see a purple theme help button. This is like your personal customer service representative at your fingertips. If you click on that button, you'll see that having an active theme license of Rosa 2 gives you front of the line service and support from their staff and technical support team. You can browse through their detailed and very helpful self-help support documentation. And I used these many, many times when I was first learning and exploring the theme. Then if you click the open ticket tab, you'll see that you can get individual help for multiple questions and situations that may come up as you're building your site. This is just an added layer of support that you'll have while you're using my video tutorial. And it's one of the main reasons why I love pixel grade and this theme. I also want to point out that pixel grade has put together some great help documentation to assist you in the building process, all while showing you the ins and outs of the Rosa two theme. I know I've said this a lot, but I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in this video, but having these resources are just an added layer of support to help you along with building your website. All right, so I'm gonna exit out of the customization menu real quick by clicking the X button. Like I said, you're gonna get very familiar with the customization features of this theme, but before we do any of that, we need to properly set up our WordPress foundation so that your site is set up for success. And another thing I wanna point out, I know it may seem like you have a lot of dashboards, but you also have a pixel grade dashboard within your WordPress dashboard that you can access by clicking on the pixel grade tab here. This is basically home base for your theme and pixel grade account. All right, moving on. Next, let's make some adjustments to your site so that you can set yourself up for success. Next, we're gonna create a child theme. This is by far one of the most important aspects of building a WordPress blog because it can save you a ton of time and headaches due to the updates that are made to the parent theme. 
And if you're new to the concept, a child theme is a theme that inherits the functionality of the parent theme, which is the initial theme that we just installed a few moments ago. That was the parent theme. Now the reason that a child theme is so important is because it allows you to modify or add to the functionality of the parent theme. It's hands down the best, safest, and easiest way to modify an existing theme because instead of modifying the parent theme files directly, you can create a child theme and override them within. Here's a quick example of why you should have a child theme. If you don't have a child theme, every change you make could potentially be lost when there's an update to the parent theme. But with a child theme, your changes are safe and you'll still inherit the functionality of the parent theme. Basically, if you're going to customize your theme, then you need a child theme. Now, there are a few ways to go about creating a child theme, but one of the many reasons why I love Pixel Grade and the Rosa 2 Premium theme is that they have created a child theme for you that you can easily install with a few clicks of the mouse. No plugins, no FTP, and no code. Pixel Grade provides the child theme file, and all we have to do is upload it to our blog. It's super simple, and it saves us a ton of time and effort. Now, I honestly can't emphasize enough how awesome this free child theme is. I've never come across a company that does this for their customers. If this is your first time using a child theme, then consider yourself lucky. This isn't typical. All right, so to access your free child theme, you'll need to head over to your Pixel Grade dashboard if you're not there already. And again, you can get there by just clicking on the Pixel Grade tab in your WordPress dashboard. Then click on the Customizations tab. And then towards the bottom there under the Advanced Customizations section, click on the Using a Child Theme button. And this will take you to Pixel Grade's knowledge base where you'll be able to access the child theme. Now I should mention that you can only access this link whenever you're logged into your Pixel Grade account. So if you're not seeing anything in line one, then go to your Pixel Grade account and log in. Okay, so to access the child theme, click the this link hyperlink, and that will prompt you to download the child theme file. Now your screen may look a little different than mine, but Either way, just click the download button to download the zip file of the Rosa 2 child theme. And there it is. Then let's go back to our blog and upload the theme. So just like before with the parent theme, hover your mouse over appearances and click on themes. and then click on the Add New Theme icon. Then the Upload Theme button. And find the child theme zip file that we just downloaded. It should be titled rosa2child.zip. There it is. Then click the Install Now button. And after a few seconds, you'll be notified that the theme was installed successfully. So go ahead and activate it by click the Activate link. Perfect. You can see that the child theme has been successfully activated and is running in place of our parent theme. Now you'll also see a notification offering to migrate all theme specific modifications from the Rosa 2 parent theme to our new child theme. We haven't made any modifications. However, if you made some design modifications like any CSS changes to the parent theme before installing and activating the child theme, then I recommend you migrate the customizations by clicking on the yes, migrate customizations button. However, we haven't made any customizations yet in this tutorial, so you can ignore it and click the no thank you button. All right, so let's check out our new child theme real quick. So go ahead and click the visit site link. And voila, there's our child theme in action. Now I recommend that you give it a once over to make sure everything looks okay, and it does. 
Our child theme is active and we now have a theme that mirrors the parent theme and preserves the custom code changes we're gonna make a little later on in the video. Nice job. All right, moving on. Next, let's go through the WordPress setup process to ensure that your website is set up for success. In this section of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up your WordPress website for success. Not only will you be getting some hands-on experience with your WordPress dashboard, but you'll also be laying the foundation for a successful site. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of building your website, there are a few house cleaning tips that I always recommend doing prior to launching your site and publishing your first blog post. These tips are merely recommendations and by no means do you have to set up your site exactly like I do. But from my experience, these tips have been very beneficial to my website's overall growth strategy and they've helped me achieve a much stronger blogging foundation in the process. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk you through those tips and show you the five things I always do before I start a website. So let's take a closer look at what those five things are. The first thing I recommend doing is to check the permalink settings. This is where we'll review and confirm the permalink structure to make sure our URLs are structured for SEO. This will also improve the aesthetics, usability, and forward compatibility of your links. If you're shaking your head right now, no worries, we'll cover it all a little later on in the video. Number two is to update Gravatar. This is where we'll update the profile and image that will be used for your Gravatar account. And we'll get into the specifics of why it's important a little later on in the video as well, but your Gravatar is a key component to your WordPress platform. Number three is to delete unnecessary plugins. WordPress pre-installs some pretty unnecessary plugins. For example, the Hello Dolly plugin displays Hello Dolly song lyrics at the top right-hand side of your screen in your WordPress dashboard. It's virtually useless and eats up some space, so this tip will show you how to get rid of the plugins that you're not going to use. Number four is to install recommended plugins. And I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding to your blog's infrastructure. This tip will cover the plugins I always use before I start a blog. Finally, number five, change display name. I'll show you how to change the way your name is displayed whenever you author a blog post. This gives you some flexibility when it comes to how your name is publicly displayed online. So with that being said, let's start with number one and check the permalink structure of your blog. All right, in this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna actually learn our way around the WordPress dashboard and set up a strong foundation before we start putting content online. It's easy to get excited once we finally get set up, but a lot of people jump the gun and start publishing content without getting their digital foundation set up properly. And it's extremely important that we set ourselves up for success before we launch our website and publish our first blog post. So before we start publishing content, let's take a closer look at the Bluehost and WordPress dashboards and set a strong foundation for our website. So the first thing we're gonna do is check and review our permalink settings. Now, if you're brand new to blogging, you're probably unfamiliar with what a permalink is, so let me give you a quick rundown of what permalinks are and why they're important. By definition, a permalink is a static hyperlink to a particular web page or blog post. And all it really is though, is it's the URL of the content that you're publishing on your WordPress blog. And these are the links that you're gonna share with the world whenever you wanna share your content. And these are the URLs that people will enter into their browser whenever they wanna view one of your pages. And that's why it's very important that these links are set up properly. Now, previously, WordPress's preset permalink settings weren't user-friendly or beneficial to SEO. However, while I was recording and creating this tutorial, I noticed that my permalinks were set up properly and I didn't have to change anything in the back end. And if we go to a sample post and look at the permalink, you can see that it's using the post title in the URL. And this creates a clean link that is optimized for the search engines because it's a URL structure that contains keywords only. Now, to ensure that your permalink settings are like this, simply hover your mouse over settings on the left-hand side of the screen and click on permalinks. And this will bring you to the permalink settings menu. And one thing I wanna point out is that this particular permalink settings menu is from a previous blogging tutorial on how to create a travel blog. But just know that the permalink settings will be the exact same for your fitness website. I'm just reusing this video so that I didn't have to reshoot it for this tutorial. And moving on. So as you can see, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalink. Now, the permalink setting I highly recommend you use is post name. And this generates a short, 
memorable, and SEO-friendly URL that's based off of the title of each of your blog posts and pages. So for example, if your blog post is titled 10 Cheap Ways to Travel the World, the URL for that post would be benstravelblog.com forward slash 10 free ways to travel the world. It's much better than the default setting that WordPress used to start you out with. So just make sure that you have post name selected as your permalink setting here. If it isn't, simply select post name and click the save changes button. Again, this will ensure that your permalinks are user friendly and optimized for the search engines. Okay, now that we've set up our permalink structure, let's move on to tip number two, which is updating your Gravatar. And before we do, let me show you how to get back to your Bluehost dashboard. So anytime you need to get back to home base, simply click the Bluehost tab in the upper left-hand side of the screen, and that will take you back to the Bluehost dashboard every time. All right, so if you're new to Gravatars, let me break it down for you. Your Gravatar is a globally recognized avatar. It's basically an image that follows you from site to site, appearing beside your name whenever you do things like comment or post on a blog. Even if you turned your comments off, it's always a good idea to have a Gravatar to enhance your online presence and increase your brand recognition. Here is a quick example of my Gravatar. As you can see, the Gravatar displays my image next to my comment. And simply put, Gravatars help identify your comments on blogs and web forums. Here's how it works. Basically, all you do is you upload an image and create your profile just once. And then whenever you participate in any Gravatar enabled site, your Gravatar image will automatically follow you there. It's a free service for site owners, developers, and users, and it's automatically included in every WordPress account. Now to see if you already have a Gravatar, back at your dashboard, hover your mouse over Users on the left-hand side of the screen, and click on Profile. And this brings you to the User Profile Settings. Then scroll down to where it says Profile Picture, and if your actual picture is showing, then you have a Gravatar. But chances are that you don't and you're just seeing a silhouette, especially if this is your first WordPress blog. But setting up Gravatars in your site is very easy to do. You sign up once, upload a picture, and anytime you comment on any Gravatar supported blog or website, your Gravatar comes along for the ride. So to get started, head over to Gravatar.com. You can just go ahead and click on that Gravatar link and that'll take you there. Perfect. Then to get started, you're gonna to wanna to click on the Create Your Own Gravatar button. There we go. Now, you'll need to sign up for a free WordPress.com account, and I'm not gonna walk you through the entire sign up process because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I will show you how to make sure that your Gravatar shows up on your blog. So I'm just gonna sign into my WordPress.com account, and remember, this is different than the WordPress.org account. The only reason we're using the WordPress.com is to create our Gravatar. All right, so once you've created an account and set up the email and image you'll be using for the Gravatar, you'll need to add the URL that will be associated with the Gravatar. This will ensure that the image you use in the Gravatar will work on your blog. So the first thing you want to do is click on My Profile at the top of the screen. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, click on the Websites link then click on the Add Website icon and simply add the URL and title of your blog. There we go. And then click the Save Website button and you'll notice that we now have a new website associated with this Gravatar. So let's check it out. So go ahead and click on the site that you just added to the profile. And this will bring us back to the home page of our blog. Then we'll need to get back to the user profile and the WordPress dashboard. So in the upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on dashboard. And this will bring you back to the WordPress dashboard. Then to get back to the user profile, hover your mouse over users on the left-hand side of the screen and click on profile. And then if we scroll down, it looks like our Gravatar picture is not there. Well, that's because we need to connect the blog to the WordPress.com account with an email address. 
So where it says contact info, simply enter the email address that you used to create the WordPress.com account. Then directly below that, add the URL of your website. And then at the bottom of the screen, click the update profile button. Then the final step is we need to verify the email address that we just added. So within a few moments, you should receive an email from WordPress asking you to confirm the new email address. Go ahead and click the link to confirm. And then back at the user profile, after you've confirmed, if you scroll down, you'll see that you now have a WordPress avatar set up and ready to represent you across the web. Nice work. Moving on. Next, we want to delete some of the plugins that come pre-installed with your WordPress site. Now, that's not to say that the pre-installed plugins aren't useful, but for the purpose of this video, these plugins will just take up valuable space that can be better utilized for other aspects of your site. You aren't required to delete these plugins if you don't want to, but since we're not using them in this tutorial, I'm going to delete them to save some space. So first things first, let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So in the upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on dashboard. And then once again on the left hand side of the screen in the side nav, click on where it says plugins. And this will bring you to your plugin manager. This is where you can add, delete, and deactivate plugins on your WordPress site. Now, like I previously mentioned, WordPress starts you off with some unnecessary plugins for what we're gonna be doing in this video. So to get rid of these plugins and free up some space, we'll need to deactivate and delete the plugins we're gonna get rid of. So first things first, click on the deactivate link under each plugin you wanna get rid of. And for this tutorial, we're deactivating the opt-in monster plugin because the other two plugins are already deactivated. And then after you click the deactivate link, it may take a few seconds to actually deactivate the plugin, but you should get a notification letting you know that it was successfully deactivated. There we go. Then to delete the plugins, simply check the boxes next to the Akismet, Hello Dolly, and opt-in monster plugins. Then towards the top of the screen, click on the Bulk Actions drop-down menu and select Delete. Then click the Apply button. And you may get a final notice asking you if you're sure you want to delete them. Click OK. And our plugins will disappear one by one. Perfect. Next, we're going to install the recommended plugins. Now, like I said in the intro, I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding. Now, if you're new to the idea of plugins, WordPress plugins are bits of software that can be uploaded to your website. Their purpose is to extend and expand the functionality of your WordPress site. And there are literally thousands of plugins to choose from. But to make things a little easier on you, I'm gonna list out each plugin that you should install on a Google Doc, and then I'll link to that Google Doc in the show notes below the video. That way you can always come back to the video and easily access the plugins. Just look for the link below the video titled Recommended Plugins. Now we're only going to be adding a few additional plugins. Like I said, I try to limit the amount of plugins I use on my blog because the more plugins that you have, the more data you're using, and it also opens you up to the possibility that some of the plugins may not play nice with one another and could potentially break your site. So the additional plugins we're about to install have been tested and all work seamlessly with one another in this theme. I should also mention that all of these plugins are free and they'll help increase the functionality of your site. It's a win-win. All right, so to start adding plugins, from the plugin management menu, click on the add new button at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to where you can search through the available plugins. So towards the upper right hand side of the screen where it says search plugins, let's type in the name of the first plugin we're going to install. Before you start typing, make sure that keyword is selected in the dropdown. This ensures that our search results are accurate. And then in that field, go ahead and type Yoast. And once the search results populate, it should be the very first plugin listed. 
And as I mentioned a little earlier, the Yoast SEO plugin is my number one recommended plugin when it comes to SEO and starting any type of website. It's an essential component to building a strong SEO foundation and will help take care of a lot of the technical aspects of SEO so that you can focus on what's important, your content. So to install and activate this plugin, simply click the Install Now button. And then once it's installed, you'll be able to activate it from the same screen. So go ahead and click on the Activate button. And then you'll be taken back to your plugin management menu where you can see that the plugin has been successfully added to your list and is activated. Now once the Yoast SEO plugin is activated, you may get a notification from Yoast telling you that there are issues concerning your SEO. You can go ahead and ignore this for now because we'll address it whenever we configure the plugin a little later on in the video. All right, let's add another plugin. So just like before, click the Add New button. Then in the search field, this time type in Titan Anti-Spam. This is actually my replacement for the Akismet plugin because the Akismet plugin started charging $5 per month if you ran ads or promoted things on your blog. However, this Anti-Spam plugin does the exact same thing. It's free and it protects the comments on your blog from spammers. So let's go ahead and install it. So click the Install Now button. and then activate. There we go. And let's add our next plugin. So click the add new button. And in the search field type stackable. And this plugin gives you the ability to add additional Gutenberg blocks to your WordPress editor. And we'll be using this plugin quite a bit during the design phase of the tutorial. It's actually a really cool plugin and you'll get to see what it's all about a little later on in the tutorial. So to install it, just follow the same steps as before. So click the install now button. And then activate. Then you may be prompted to opt in to their security and feature update notifications. I'm going to skip this for now and then this plugin has its own getting started page which I actually recommend that you check out whenever you have some extra time. But for now let's go ahead and install our next plugin. So hover your mouse over plugins and click add new. And then in the search field this time type in WP Coder. And we're going to use this plugin to add custom HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to our footer. It's a neat little plugin that allows us to easily inject code to specific places on our blog and quickly build things. So go ahead and install and activate it. There we go. And let's add another plugin. So click the Add New button. And in the search field, type GitWid, all one word. I know it's kind of an odd title, but this plugin is going to give us the ability to add a full width Instagram feed to the bottom of our homepage. So go ahead and install and activate this plugin. There we go. And let's add our next plugin. So follow the same steps as before. And in the search field, type Quick Featured Image. And we're going to use this plugin to add specific featured images to the pages of our blog. This gives us much more control over how our blog's pages and posts look when they're shared across social media networks. And you'll see what I mean whenever we cover it a little later on in the video. 
But for now, go ahead and install and activate it. There we go. And then let's add another plugin. So type in GDPR. And this plugin is called GDPR Cookie Compliance. And if you're unfamiliar with what GDPR is, it's basically a new European law stating that if you have web traffic coming to your site from the European Union and you're collecting their data like email addresses, IP addresses, and so on, then you need to disclose to the visitor any data collection that you may be doing. And I know data collection sounds kind of scary, but the majority of sites on the internet do it. And if you're going to have traffic to your blog from the EU, then I recommend you add the GDPR cookie compliance plugin by Move Agency. It's free and will help your blog stay GDPR compliant. So go ahead and follow the same steps to install and activate this plugin. And then finally, we're going to install the PHP compatibility checker. Now, this plugin isn't required, and it should only be installed if you saw the PHP update required warning in your WordPress dashboard stating that you're using an older version of PHP. So if you saw that warning and you want to update to a more recent version of PHP, then this plugin will make sure that your plugins and themes are compatible with the newer versions of PHP before you update anything. So if you're wanting to update your version of PHP, I highly recommend that you install and activate this plugin. And then once you're done with it, you can easily remove it and delete it. Also, if you do plan on updating your version of PHP, go ahead and install and activate this plugin and then head over to my other video tutorial titled How to Update Your PHP. You can access it in the show notes below this video. And in that tutorial, I walk you through the process of using this plugin and updating your version of PHP step by step. All right, we've now installed and activated all of the essential plugins that we'll be using for this website. A little later on in the video, we'll configure them, but for now, we're good to go. Now, before we move on, I wanna point something out really quick, so let's head back to our WordPress dashboard by hovering your mouse over Dashboard on the left-hand side of your screen and click on Home. And if you're seeing this PHP update required notice in your WordPress dashboard, please pause this video and watch my quick tutorial titled, How to Update Your PHP Version in WordPress. And I'll walk you through everything you need to know so that you can get back to building your site as soon as possible. However, if you're not seeing this notice, then let's move on to the next step. All right, next we're gonna change how our name is displayed on our website. And what I mean by this is when we first installed WordPress, Bluehost automatically creates your profile username from the email address you signed up with. This username is also used for our display name, which is the name that's shown whenever you author a blog post. Not cool unless you want the entire world to see your email, and it's also unprofessional looking. So when I say that we're changing the display name, we're essentially changing the way our name is displayed on our website and blog posts. So the first thing you wanna do is hover your mouse over Users and click on Profile. And this will bring you to your profile settings where you have the ability to customize certain aspects of your profile, one of them being how your name is publicly displayed. So there are two things that I always change. First, I change the nickname and then the display name. So on the left-hand side of the screen next to where it says nickname, I'm going to enter the name that I want to use for my display name. And remember, this is going to be used for the byline of all your blog posts. So try to keep it professional. And then directly below that where it says display name publicly as, simply select the nickname that you just created from the drop-down menu. And scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the Update Profile button. And as you can see, if you look in the upper right hand side of the screen, you'll notice that the display name has been changed. And now every time you author a blog post, this name will be used instead of your email address. All right, moving on. Next, we're going to configure the plugins that we just installed. So the first part of the design process is configuring the plugins that we just installed. Reason being is that they play a big part in how our site is presented online. Plus by configuring your plugins, it will allow you to have a much more efficient and secure digital platform for starting a website. Now what we're gonna do next is configure the Yoast SEO plugin. 
And this plugin is one of my most highly recommended plugins and it's helped my site rank in the search engines. Best of all, it's free. All right, so first things first, we need to configure it. So to get started, go to the Yoast settings page and you can get there on the left-hand side of your screen in your WordPress dashboard by hovering your mouse over the Yoast SEO icon and click on general. And this will bring you to the settings page. And if this is your first time using the plugin, you may see a few notifications. The first, asking you if you wanna build your index so that Yoast can process your content to help speed up your site. And we're gonna do this after we configure the plugin so you could skip that for now. There might also be a few other notifications that have to do with allowing the search engines to crawl your site and Google Search Console, but we'll take care of both of those things a little later on in the video as well. So you can skip these for now and we'll just worry about configuring the plugin. So to get started, click the configuration wizard link. And this will bring you to the Yoast SEO configuration wizard where the following steps will help you configure your SEO settings to match your website's needs. All right, so the first step is determining which environment your site is in. Reason being, the plugin wants to know if your site should be indexed by the search engines. And when they say environment, all they wanna know is whether or not your site is live or under construction. So since we're in the process of building our website, we'll select option B. But if your site is already live, then go ahead and select option A. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to activate it once your site is ready to publish. Additionally, once your website is ready to launch, we're gonna come back to the Yoast configuration wizard and select option A. But as I said, since we're in the beginning phase of building our site, we don't want it to be indexed, so we'll select option B and click the next button. Next is site type, and I'm selecting blog since the website will have blogging capabilities. Then go ahead and click the next button to move on to the next step. Next, Yoast is trying to determine whether or not you're an organization or a person. So if you're an organization, type in the name of your organization, upload your logo, and add your social network URLs. But if you're a person, select person, and then the dropdown will pull whatever you've set your display name to. So if you want to change how the search engines display your name, you'll need to change that in your WordPress profile. Then go ahead and click the next button to move on to the next step. Next is the search engine visibility. This is where you can configure what content types you'd like the search engines to index. And unless you have specific requirements, I recommend leaving this as is and click the next button. Next is the multiple authors section. And if you're going to have multiple people write blog posts, select yes. And if it's just you, select no, and then click the next button. And now we're at the title settings. This is where you can change the website name that Yoast will display to the search engines and the symbol it will use as your title separator. I actually like it as is, so I'm gonna leave everything alone and click the next button. Next, Yoast wants to know if you'd like to subscribe to their newsletter. I recommend signing up. It's a super helpful newsletter and it keeps you up to date with everything that's going on in the world of SEO. And then they may also have some upgrade options and further trainings. We can skip this for now and click next. And congrats, your Yoast SEO plugin has been configured and now Yoast will take care of all of the technical aspects of SEO for your blog. This is going to improve your blog's overall performance in the search results and give you some peace of mind when it comes to SEO. All right, so go ahead and click the close link button. And then back at your dashboard, you'll probably see a notification for a huge SEO problem after you've configured the Yoast SEO settings. Don't worry about that for now. We'll fix that whenever your blog is ready to launch. I also want to point out that Yoast offers some free resources to help boost your SEO even more. If you scroll down a bit on your dashboard, you can see that you can extend Yoast even more with some additional plugins, as well as learn SEO through their Yoast SEO Academy. So if you have some extra time, I highly recommend checking those out. Now, before we move on, there are a few more things we want to do for our SEO. The first is we need to address this notification. 
and this is relatively new for Yoast, but they now offer to index your site's SEO data to help speed up your blog. And to break it down, by clicking this button, Yoast will store metadata for all pages in a separate database. I know it sounds kind of technical, but just know that this allows them to fetch all of your page's metadata in one simple database request rather than lots of individual requests. This results in a much faster page load time. So basically, this will speed up your site. So I highly recommend doing it. So go ahead and click the Start Processing button. And it could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. And for the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward through this process so that you're not just sitting here watching it load. But once all objects have been processed, you'll get a notification that all is well and you've sped up your site. Nice work. The next thing we want to do for our SEO is add our social accounts to our profile. This will help the search engine bots know what social networks our blog is associated with. Again, this is important because when the search engines crawl your site and see that you're connected to multiple popular social networks with followings, it can give you more authority and help to boost your search engine ranking. So to let the search engines know about your social profiles, you'll need to update your user profile. So on the left-hand side of the screen in your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over Users and click on Profile. I realize mine says Your Profile, but that's just because I'm using an older version of WordPress in this section of the tutorial. But Yours will say profile. Just wanted to clear that up. Then scroll down a bit and you'll see the multiple fields where you can enter your website's URL along with the links to your social profiles. Once you've filled them out, go ahead and click the update profile button and the search engines will now know what social profiles your website is associated with. All right, so that's gonna do it for SEO. Next, let's configure your GDPR plugin so that your website is GDPR compliant. Next, it's time to configure the GDPR cookie compliance plugin. Now, before we dive in, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, and the information provided in this video does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available in this video and my blog are for general informational purposes only. And if you have any legal concerns regarding your website and compliance, then I highly recommend you reach out to an attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter. Okay, now that that's out of the way, in this section of the tutorial, we're going to configure the GDPR cookie compliance plugin so that you're notifying your visitors about your cookie policy. And if we fast forward to our finished website, you can see the plugin in action. So this plugin will give your site's visitors the option to accept or change their cookie settings. Additionally, we're also going to change the colors of the plugin so that it matches the color scheme of your website. And one more thing before we get started, if you're unfamiliar with what a cookie is, it's not the yummy cookie you're used to eating. In the tech industry, a cookie is a small piece of data stored on the user's computer by the web browser while they're browsing a website. And cookies were designed to be a reliable mechanism for websites to remember information such as items added in the shopping cart in an online store or to record the user's browsing activity. However, due to this, it caused some privacy concerns and the European Union created the GDPR, which is short for the General Data Protection Regulation and it's a regulation in EU law on data protection and privacy in the European Union and the European Economic Area. It also addresses the transfer of personal data outside the EU and EEA areas. So in order to stay compliant, you have to notify your site's visitors that you're using cookies and give them the option to opt out. Now, there is more to the law than that, and that's the gist of this plugin and what it can do, but it's the first step in you staying compliant with the European Union law. And one final thing, if you know that you won't have any traffic from the European Union, then you can disregard this and move on. However, chances are you're going to have traffic from one of the countries in the EU. So let's get this plugin set up. Okay, so to access the plugin settings in your WordPress dashboard, on the left-hand side of the screen, the side nav, simply click on GDPR Cookie Compliance, and this will take you to the plugin settings. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but for this tutorial, we're keeping it simple and sticking with the default settings, which is the banner at the bottom of the screen that I just showed you a few moments ago. So the first thing we're gonna configure are the brand settings. 
Now, I'm aware that we haven't even gone over how to change the color scheme of our website, so if you don't know what your brand colors will be or if you don't have a logo yet, no worries. You can just watch this for now and come back after we've covered those topics in this video. And yes, I'm going to show you how to set your website's color scheme and create a logo in this video, but if you haven't decided on those yet, just watch these steps now and come back when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to change the primary color which is used for the buttons, links, and a few other places on the cookie notice. And to do that, simply click the select button here, and this will display a color picker tool where you can easily set the color that you want to use. However, you can also use a hex color code. And all a hex color code is, is it's a way of specifying color using hexadecimal values. This code, which starts with a pound sign followed by a few numbers, is generally associated with HTML and is how color is translated in computer code language. And one way to find the hex color code is to go to color.hex.com and you can literally find any color you want and their hex color code. Okay, so I'm gonna replace the blue hex color code with the color that I wanna use for my site. And again, if you don't know your color scheme just yet, go ahead and skip this and come back after we've covered it in this video. Next, I'm gonna leave the secondary color as is, but I will replace the logo. And this logo is used on the pop-up when the user clicks to view their cookie settings on the banner. So to change the logo from the GDPR logo, click the Upload Logo button, and please note that the recommended size is 130 by 50 pixels. And then this will take you to your media library. This is where you'll upload and store the images that you're going to use on your website. Now I'm actually recording this portion of the video out of order. That's why you see all these images in my media library. But if you're just starting out, you'll just see the starter content that we uploaded earlier in the video. Nevertheless, this is where your images are stored. So to add a new image from your computer, you're gonna click the upload button and then select the file that you wanna use from your computer. However, I've already uploaded the images to my media gallery, so I'm gonna select it and then click the upload logo button. I apologize for the steps being a little different than yours, but like I said, I recorded this portion of the video tutorial a little late, so the experience isn't the exact same as you, but don't worry, we're gonna cover the media library in greater detail a little later on in the video. Okay, so we now have our logo that's gonna be used by the plugin, and it looks great. Then I'm gonna leave the rest of the settings as is and click the Save Changes button to push these changes live. Perfect. Next, if you head over to the banner settings, you'll see that you have the option to turn it on and off, and you can actually change the verbiage that's used within the banner as well. Again, I'm leaving it alone for this tutorial, but you can easily edit the text here. Then below that are some additional settings, but again, I'm leaving everything as is. And then now that we've briefly covered the basic settings, you also have the ability to really dive in and configure the plugin settings in the side nav here. And the developers of this plugin even created a video tutorial that you can access here that gives you a good overview of the various features of this plugin. Finally, if you're so inclined, there is a premium version of the plugin available that you can purchase. I personally bought it because I feel that it offers a ton of value for the price, but if you're on a budget, the free version works quite well. Then if we fast forward and take a look at our finished website, you can see that the cookie notice banner is displaying on our homepage and it is consistent with our overall color scheme and brand. This gives it a much more professional look and feel and helps to ensure that you're remaining compliant with the new GDPR law. Okay, moving on. Next, let's create our site's pages, categories, and primary navigation menu. The next thing we want to do is configure our blog by adding additional pages and creating a primary navigation menu. Having a primary menu with separate pages and categories allows you to diversify your content and it helps your visitors navigate through your blog. This not only creates a better user experience, but it's great for SEO. Now, if you've been following along exactly as I've done in this video, you should have the demo content and primary nav displaying a menu, reservations, features, and an online store. This was all implemented whenever we uploaded the starter content during the pixel grade setup. Again, we did this so that we would have the foundation for our site in place. 
but we'll wanna get rid of these particular pages before we start building anything. So to get rid of them, head back to your WordPress dashboard by hovering your mouse over your site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on Dashboard. Then on the side nav, hover your mouse over Pages and click on All Pages. And this will bring you to your page management menu. This is where you can monitor, edit, delete, and add pages to your website. Now, like I said, when we downloaded the Pixel Grade Starter content earlier in this tutorial, that included a handful of pages, which we're not going to use. So let's get rid of the pages that we're not going to use on our site. And the quickest way to do that is to check this box next to Title so that it selects all of the pages. Then be sure to uncheck the boxes next to the pages that you want to keep. And for this particular video, we're keeping the home page and privacy policy page. So make sure those two boxes are unchecked. And please don't worry about deleting these pages. I'm gonna show you how to build everything a little later on. Okay, so to delete these pages that we don't need, where it says bulk actions, click that drop down and select move to trash. Then click the apply button. And it may take a few minutes because we're deleting so many pages, but you can tell by looking at the bottom of your screen and seeing that WordPress is hard at work. Then once they're gone, you should get a notification letting you know that the pages have been moved to the trash. And then the two pages that should remain are the home page and the privacy policy page. Perfect. Now it's time to add the pages that we want to use on our blog in our primary navigation menu. And I should point out that a page is different than a blog post because a page is a static standalone piece of content that is separate from your blog feed. Okay, there are a couple ways to add a new page to your website, but the fastest way is at the top of the screen. If you hover your mouse over the plus new link and then select page from the drop down, that will let you create a new page for your site. And then this will bring you to the WordPress visual editor. And what you're looking at right now is the brand new WordPress editing experience. This was a major change in the WordPress 5.0 update and it really streamlines how you build and design your pages and blog posts. Now, before we begin, I wanna point out a few things. First is that there has been a WordPress update since I recorded this video. And all that means is that there will be a few things that look slightly different than what is presented in my video. But don't worry, I'll cover all of those differences and I can assure you that they aren't anything drastic that will leave you wondering what you need to do. It's super simple to figure out and it's very intuitive. Next is that you have multiple views for the WordPress editor. And all this means is that you can configure how your editor looks in the back end. And let me show you what I mean. Currently, my editor is in full screen mode, but I don't personally like that. So to change it, click the three dot icon in the upper right hand side of the screen, and this will open up the more tools and options. Then from the drop down, select the view that you want. I'm going to uncheck the full screen mode so that it goes back to the default view. There we go. And then now let's take a closer look at the new editing experience. And I'll go into greater detail as we start to create our pages and blog posts, but let me give you a quick rundown of the new editor. One of the major differences in this editor is that each section is broken down into a specific type of block. There are image blocks, paragraph blocks, column blocks, and much, much more. The blocks are a new experience that really give you a lot of creative control over what your blog looks like. Now, before we dive in, you'll notice that the layout of the editor is super different than what you may be used to, but like I said, it's kind of familiar. We still have a field for our title. Then there's the content section directly below that, and that's where you'll add your various blocks of content. Then on the right, you have the document and block settings and page attributes. Then there are additional editing options. You also have access to the Yoast SEO plugin if you've installed it. And finally, your preview and publishing options. All right, now that you know your way around the visual editor, let's create our about page. So the first thing we wanna do is give our page a title. And since this is our about page, we'll type about in the title section. 
And just to reiterate, we're not going to be adding content to the pages just yet. We're simply creating them so that we can add them to our primary menu. Then once we've created all of our pages and added them to our navigation menu, we'll worry about adding content to those pages. All right, so once you've named the page, go ahead and publish the page by clicking the publish button. And don't worry about anyone seeing this page without any content on it. We haven't launched our blog yet. Then press the publish button one more time to make this page live. And it may take a few seconds to publish since it's our first time publishing, so just sit tight real quick. There we go. And you'll get a notification that the about page has been published and is now live. Perfect. Next, we'll just follow the exact same steps to add additional pages. So just like before, hover your mouse over the plus new link and click on page. Then let's add our workouts page. Now you obviously don't have to add the exact same pages as I do whenever you're building your website, but hopefully this video will give you some inspiration as to what pages you can include in your new site. And this workouts page is basically going to be a page that drives traffic to our free workout landing page. And you'll see what I mean a little later on in the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish it by clicking the publish button and then click it one more time to make it live. And again, just to reiterate, the page is live, but no one can see it until you launch your blog. So don't worry that there isn't any content on it yet. No one can see it. Okay, next we're gonna create our blog page. So just follow the same steps as before. Hover your mouse over the plus new link and click on pages. Then title this page blog. And you may be wondering where do the blog posts go? Well, we'll add those later. All we're doing now is creating the page where your blog feed will live. Okay, so go ahead and publish this. So click the publish button. There we go. Then you're gonna follow the exact same steps and create the rest of your pages. And I'm gonna speed through these for the sake of time, but if you wanna build your blog the exact same way I do in this video, then you'll wanna create and publish a contact page, a meal plans page, a resources page, a free daily workouts page, which will serve as our landing page, and a shop page. And again, as you can tell, I am fast forwarding through these steps but it's the same exact steps for each one. You're gonna add a page, you're gonna give it a title, and you're gonna publish it. Then later on in the video, we're gonna be adding content and really dive into the specifics of creating that content and setting these pages and blog posts up for a good SEO foundation. But like I said, we'll do that later on in the video. For now, we're just setting these pages up so that we can use them in our primary navigation menu. And almost done, one more page. And this will be our contact page, so I'm going to title it contact, and then I'll go ahead and publish it. Then once we've created all of our pages, if you visit your pages management menu by hovering your mouse over pages and the side nav and then click on all pages, you'll see that our pages have been created, published, and are ready to go. The next thing we're going to do with our pages is use them to create our primary navigation menu. But before we do that, let's visit our homepage real quick. So hover your mouse over the site title and click on visit site. And then you should only see a features menu item. This is because we've deleted all of the starter content pages and this features item is all that's left from the demo menu. It's not a page, but a custom menu item. So don't worry or think that you have some random page floating around out there. Plus, we're gonna create a brand new primary navigation menu and give your website's visitors a great user experience and easy way to navigate your site. And if we fast forward real quick to the end of the video, you can see what I mean. The primary nav we're about to build is broken up into two parts, and that's due to how the theme was designed. But I really like the way it's laid out and think that it's a unique user experience for your website's visitors. All right, first things first, we need to clean up the old menus before we create our new primary navigation menu. So to get started with your menu and the upper left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on menus. And this will take you to your menu management page. This is home base for your blog's menus 
and it's where we'll be building our primary navigation menu. But first, we need to get rid of the menus that were loaded with the starter content. If you recall, whenever we were going through the pixel grade setup, the starter content included some menu items as well as pages and images. So we'll want to get rid of these demo placeholder menus before we start building our primary navigation menu. And it's pretty simple. Make sure you have menu one selected and click the delete menu link. And you should see a notification that the menu has been successfully deleted. And there's one more menu we want to delete. So make sure you have menu two selected and click the delete menu link. There we go. Now you may see a social links menu, but we're not gonna worry about that in this tutorial, so you can ignore it. And now it's time to build our primary navigation menu for our homepage. And as you just saw with the demo menus, there were two menus associated with the primary nav, menu one and menu two. Let me show you what I mean. If we fast forward to the end of the video again, you can see that the way the Rosa 2 theme displays its primary nav is in two sections. That's because it's actually two separate menus. You have a menu to the right, which is considered the primary menu, and then another one to the left, which is the secondary menu. And it will make more sense whenever we start building our menus. So let's go back to our menu settings. And as you just saw in the previous example, our primary navigation menu is actually two separate menus. So in the menu management page, let's start building the first menu. And this is gonna be the menu that is positioned to the left-hand side of the screen on our homepage. So click the create a new menu link. And then this is where you can name your menu. I'm gonna name this my home menu since it's gonna contain my home menu item. So where it says menu name, type in the title of your new menu and click the create menu button. Next, it's time to start adding the pages you want to display within the menu. So on the left-hand side of the screen under the Pages section, simply check the box next to the pages that you want to add. And I'm going to add the About, Workouts, and Meal Plans pages. There we go. Then click the Add to Menu button. And then WordPress goes to work and starts building your menu. Now, we'll come back to this in a few moments, but what about a home option? I like to give my site's visitors a way back to my home page within the navigation menu. This creates a friendly user experience and it helps people navigate your website. So instead of adding a page, we're gonna add a custom link. And again, all this is doing is it's creating a way for our visitors to get back to our home page through the primary navigation menu. So go ahead and click on custom links and then that will open up and you'll be able to configure the URL and link text of the menu item. So for the URL, type in the URL of where you want this part of the menu to take your visitors. We want it to take visitors to our homepage, so just type in your primary domain. So whatever your website's main domain is, enter that in the URL field. Then where it says link text, type in home. This will be what appears in your primary navigation menu. Then click the Add to Menu button, and you should see that the custom link has been added to the menu structure, and more than likely, it'll be at the very bottom. Next, you'll want to situate the menu items so that they appear the way you want on your live blog. For example, the menu items listed at the top of this menu structure will be the farthest to the left on your blog's nav menu. So I want the home to be the first option on the primary nav, so you can simply drag and drop the menu items so that they coordinate with how you want them to appear on your blog. Pretty cool. Next, we need to determine where this menu will display by setting its display location. So right below are the menu settings. And if you recall, we want this particular menu to sit on the left-hand side of the screen. So check the box next to where it says secondary menu, and then click the save menu button. and you'll get a notification that the menu is live and updated. Awesome. 
Next, we'll want to do the exact same thing for our second menu that will be positioned on the right hand side of our home page. So just like before, click the create a new menu link. And then I'm naming this menu shop since it will contain my shop page within the menu. Then click the create menu button. Next, let's start adding our pages. So I want the blog, resources, shop, and contact pages to display within this menu. So under the pages tab, select the pages that you want to add to this menu. And then click the add to menu button. There we go. Then rearrange them if you'd like. And again, just drag and drop the menu items like so. Then within the menu settings, we'll want to set the display location. And for this menu, you'll want to select primary menu since it's gonna sit on the right hand side of the home page. And then click the save menu button. And you'll get a notification that the menu has been updated. All right, so let's check it out. So hover your mouse over your site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on Visit Site. And boom, look at that. Our primary navigation menu, which is actually two separate menus, is ready to go, and it looks great. Okay, moving on. Next, it's time to start designing our homepage. All right, now we get to do some fun stuff. We're gonna to start to design and build your homepage. All right, now we get to do some fun stuff. We're gonna to start to design and build your homepage. And if we fast forward real quick, you can get a better idea of how we're gonna structure this page. Now, you'll notice that the colors and images have changed, but the overall structure of the page will stay the same. That's one of the main reasons why I recommended that you install the starter content during the pixel grade setup. It starts you off with a solid foundation design-wise so that you're not having to piece together various blocks of content and trying to figure out how everything fits together. Now, even though the Rosa 2 starter content is aimed more towards the food and restaurant niche, we can still manipulate it to make it whatever we want. Plus, having this demo content and structure in place will cut down on a ton of time and allow you to launch your website much faster. Okay, so back at our site, the first thing we're gonna update is the logo. And by default, the theme places your site title and tagline where the logo will be. And one thing I wanna point out is that when the user scrolls down, the color of the title changes from a dark color to white. This is a really cool feature and unique user experience, but that means that we'll need to create two separate logos, a light colored logo and a dark colored logo. This ensures that the logo displays correctly against the white and transparent navigation menu. Now, when it comes to designing your logo, you have a ton of options, but one quick, free, and easy option is to use canva.com. This website can help you create stunning graphics with their free design software, and I use them quite a bit. You can get some high quality design elements from them for free, and I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can use them to create your logo if you want. Okay, so after you sign up, for your free Canva account, you can easily create custom graphics using their design software. You can choose from their library of photos, elements, text, music, videos, and much, much more. And as you can see, I was able to create this simple logo of some waves for our beach-themed fitness blog. And then after I download the image to my computer, I'll head back to the website. And then to start customizing the logo, you'll need to access the customization menu. So at the top of the screen towards the upper left hand side, click on the paintbrush icon where it says customize and this will open your website's customization menu. Anytime we need to make some tweaks to our theme, we'll more than likely do so through this menu. So to update the logo, go ahead and click on the site identity tab and this will give us the ability to change a few things within our site. 
For now, we're going to focus on changing the logo. And as you can see, this theme puts the site title and tagline where the logo should be. That doesn't look terrible, but I want to replace the text with the black and white logos that I created in Canva.com. So I'm gonna add the black logo first. So go ahead and click on the first select logo button. And this will bring us to the media library. This is where we'll upload and store the images that we're gonna use on our website. So to add the image of the new logo, simply click on the select files button to search for the logo on your computer. And then once you upload your logo to the media library, you'll probably notice that there are some additional photos there. Don't worry about that. Those are just the images that came with the starter content whenever we went through the pixel grade setup a little earlier in the video. But now that you have your logo in your media library, there are two things that I always recommend doing. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the attachment details. And the first thing I recommend doing is adding the alt text. And without getting too technical, the alt text is what the search engines will see since they can't actually see images. So you'll wanna be descriptive whenever you're filling out the alt text. There we go. Next thing you should do is give the image a title. By default, it will show the image's file name and it's what will show up whenever someone hovers their mouse over that image. So I recommend changing it for a good user experience. Plus it's best practice and good for SEO. And then after you've filled out the alt text in title, Go ahead and click the select button there on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Then you'll have the option to crop the logo. I'm gonna click the skip cropping button since we're gonna be using the full image. And there we go, our black logo is in place. And now you can't see it because by default, it starts with the white logo, but once you scroll, you'll be able to see this black logo and I'll show you what I mean in a few seconds. But let's go ahead and add our second white logo. So follow the same steps as before, but this time click the select logo button under the logo on the white transparent header section. And this will take you to the media library again. So click the upload link since we're uploading a new image. Then click the select files button and find the white version of the logo. And then don't forget about the alt text and title. I know this part seems kind of tedious, but it's just a good habit to get into and will pay dividends when it comes to SEO. There we go. And click the select button. And we're going to skip cropping again. And voila. But then there's one more detail. The site title and tagline are still showing up and pushing our logo to the left. So to remove the text, simply uncheck the box next to where it says display site title and tagline, and the text will magically disappear. And don't worry, the black version of the logo will display whenever you scroll down. I just forgot to do that when I was recording this video, but if you scroll down, you'll see the black logo against the white nav. I should also point out that if you think your logo looks a little small, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you how to adjust the size in a little later on. The next thing we wanna do is add a favicon, or as WordPress calls it, a site icon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a favicon or site icon is, it's basically the tiny image that web browsers use to help distinguish between web pages. And if we take a look at the top of my screen, you can see what I'm talking about. These images in the tabs are favicons. They're great for branding efforts and they help people navigate online. Additionally, some browsers and mobile devices will display a larger image like the Safari browser, which is what you're looking at right now. And the site icon that we're gonna create will also be used as a browser and app icon for your blog. So that's why it's important to have a site icon for your branding efforts. Now, before you choose your site icon image, Keep in mind that WordPress recommends that you use an image that's at least 512 pixels wide and tall. That's because the image will be used for your favicon and app icon. And you can easily create your own site icon with, you guessed it, canva.com. Just use the same steps as we did to create the logo, but make sure your image is 512 by 512 pixels. Super simple and it's free. 
All right, so to add the image you're gonna use for your site icon, simply click on the Select Site Icon button. And this will bring us to your media library. So click the Upload Files link. And then the Select Files button. And then don't forget about the attachment details. Be sure to fill out the alt text and the title fields. Again, I know this is somewhat tedious, but it's a good habit to get into. Then once they're filled out, click the select button in the bottom right hand side of the screen. And as you can see, the image I just uploaded is now being used for the favicon and site icon. Looks great and looks a lot more professional. And if you're not seeing it right away, give it a few minutes and clear your browser's cache and history, refresh the page, and it will show up. The final thing I wanna show you about the logo is how to adjust the size. And this is one of the many reasons why I love and recommend pixel grade themes. They make things that are typically hard, super simple to do. So in order to access the section of the customization menu that lets us adjust the size of the logo, we'll need to go back a slide within the menu. So click that arrow towards the upper left-hand side of the screen. And then open the Themes option tab. And then click on the Header tab. And you'll have even more customization options for your header and logo. And for now, we're just focusing on the logo height. So the first editing tool will give you the ability to change the size of the logo when it's viewed on a desktop. Then check this out, at the bottom of the screen, you even have the option of changing how your page is viewed based off of what device is being used. So you can toggle between mobile, tablet, and desktop, all giving you a preview of what your homepage and logo will look like based off of what device is being used by the person visiting your blog. This is super cool and a very helpful tool, trust me. And then if we go to the tablet view, Rosa 2 allows you to edit the mobile logo height separate from the desktop height. And what's great about this is that it leaves the desktop logo size alone and lets you configure the mobile view of the logo separately. This really gives you a ton of flexibility to make your homepage look great on all devices. Beautiful, love it. Then anytime you make any type of edits or changes to your website through the customization menu, you'll need to publish your changes so that they're live. And to do that, you'll just need to click the publish button. And our changes are live. So let's go ahead and exit the customization menu real quick and check it out. So click that X on the upper left-hand side of the screen. And look at that, we now have a sleek and minimalist looking logo that works well with this nav as we scroll. You can see that the white and black logo interchange depending on what color the background is. Awesome, I really love that effect, looks great. All right, moving on. Now the real fun begins. It's time to start actually designing and building your homepage. And if we fast forward to the end of the video again, you can see what we're going to be making. This homepage was one of the main reasons I chose to create a tutorial around the Rosa 2 theme. I thought it was so nicely put together and just has a professional look and feel to it. Another great thing about it is that it's basically already built for you since you'd installed the starter content. All you have to do is swap out the text, images, links, and colors, and your website's homepage will be ready for the world. Okay, so in order to start making changes, we'll wanna access the theme's customization menu. So just like before, click the customize paintbrush icon at the top of the screen. And then the first thing we're going to edit is the theme's color scheme, which is a set number of colors that are used throughout your website. Now by default, Rosa 2 starts you off with this gold and dark blue color scheme, and it's not bad at all, but if that doesn't match your particular brand, then this is how you change the color scheme of your site. So in the customization menu, click on the style manager tab, and then open the Colors tab. And as you can see, you have a ton of options as to what colors you can use for your base color palette. 
And they've categorized them with some cool names like Lemonade, Pool Party, Mountain Meadow, and so on. And you'll notice that as you hover over each color palette, you get a preview of that on the right-hand side of the screen. And these colors give you a great base to start with, but you can go even deeper with the filters. And this lets you adjust the color properties by using the filters for each color palette. So there's filters that are vivid, softer, pastel, grayish, and so on. The filters really give you a lot of creative control over the color palettes. And then if you click on the Customize tab, you can adjust how the colors are used on your site by modifying their usage level. You can adjust the coloration level, the color diversity, and shuffle the colors by clicking on the various buttons here. And as you can see, this too gives you a ton of flexibility with how the colors are used on your website. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use a different palette. So let's go back to the palette selector. And then all the way at the bottom is the one I want, the Hot Sweet palette. Beautiful. I love this color scheme because it's unique and it really jumps out at you. So let's make this color scheme live and click the Publish button. And then let's exit out of the customization menu and take a look at it. And there we go, you now have a new color scheme. Like I said, I love how this looks and, and the mix of colors, although unique, still work well with one another. We have our teal looking action bar at the top and then the pinkish heading with some off-white backgrounds and dark text, love it. Okay, moving on. Next, we're gonna actually start building the home page by updating the various blocks of content. And this time, instead of using the customization menu, we're actually going to edit the page. So to do that, click the edit link at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to the WordPress editor. Now you probably noticed that the page is already built which will save us a ton of time, but all we have to do is replace the images and content with our own. Again, I can't say it enough, having this demo starter content and the foundation laid out is saving us a ton of time. Okay, so back at the top, the first block of content that we're going to edit is called the Hero of the Galaxy. And each block can be easily manipulated through the block settings on the right-hand side of the screen here and within the toolbar above the block as well and you can easily access these editing options of each block by simply clicking on the block tab on the right hand side of your screen. However, there are two things I wanna point out before we make any changes. First is that there have been some updates to WordPress since I recorded this video. That's just the way it goes because technology moves super fast. So some things may be different from what you see in this video. One of them being the document and block settings. For starters, if you're not seeing anything here on the right hand side of your screen, then you'll need to open the block settings by clicking on this gear icon on the upper right hand side of the screen. This will bring up the block in document settings. So if you're not seeing the block settings at first, that's how you'll get them to show up. Secondly, the Nova blocks that are used throughout this theme have gone through an update as well since this video was recorded. So that means the block settings will look a little different than what is presented in this video. I'll do my best to explain it as we go and show you what it will look like on your end, but please be aware that there may be some slight differences as to what you see and what is presented in this video whenever I'm talking about the block settings for the pixel grade Nova blocks. And don't worry, once you get going, this will become second nature and you won't even notice a difference, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention before we start editing. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna change here is the background image. So in the toolbar in the upper left-hand side of the image, Click on the image icon to change the media. And this will take you to your media library where you can upload a new image. So click the upload files link. And then the select button and find the image that you wanna use. I recommend using a larger image. I'm using one that's 920 by 1275 pixels. So keep that in mind whenever you're choosing an image to use for your background image of this block. And remember, it has to spread across the entire screen, so make sure it's an appropriate size. And then don't forget about the attachment details. So enter your alt text and title. And remember, the alt text is just descriptive text 
and then the title, although it isn't viewable on the homepage, it is in the metadata. So I'm using the actual title of my site here. Then click the select button. And beautiful, look at that. We now have a full width image being used in our Hero of the Galaxy block. Next, and this is really cool, you have the ability to change the scrolling effect on the block. By default, the theme starts you out with the parallax effect. And this is a cool effect that gives it kind of a 3D look and feel. You can see that the text moves against the background image as you scroll. It's pretty cool. But you have the option to change that effect here in the scrolling effects tab. Again, I know my block settings look a little different than yours, but this is what yours will look like. And you'll notice that the layout is a little cleaner and a little different, but again, this is due to the update of the Nova blocks. So I just want you to see that yours will look a little different, but you'll still have the scrolling effects tab. And whenever you click on it, we'll have the same options. And you can pick between static, which keeps the image and text as one, so nothing moves as you scroll, but I like the parallax effect, so I'm gonna switch it back real quick. There's also the dropler by pixel grade effect, but I'm not a fan of that to be honest, but you can check it out if you want. Then if you selected the parallax scrolling effect, you can adjust the focal point. And this gives you the ability to change where the main focal point of the text is against the image as you scroll. So simply drag this circle icon here and you can easily change the focal point. Then below that you have some more options that have to do with the layout and scroll indicators. And just for reference, this is what yours will look like. Again, it just looks a little different, but I just wanna be as helpful as possible and show you what you're gonna see on your end. And we'll come back to those in a few moments, but now let's adjust the text on our Hero of the Galaxy homepage block. Now these new blocks make it super easy to make major changes to your site. Simply click on the text and it will open the headline block and You'll see your editing options for this particular block of text. And it's pretty straightforward. Simply highlight the text that you want to remove and start typing. And since this is our health and fitness blog, I'm titling this Beach Bootcamp Fitness. There we go. Then below that is another paragraph block with a tagline. So just like the headline, simply highlight it and add the text that you want to display. Perfect. Then there's a heading block below that that the theme is using to show the year 2020. I'm actually gonna remove that, so check this out. Anytime you wanna completely remove a block, click on that three dot icon, which is sometimes commonly referred to as a meatball icon because it looks like three meatballs, within the block editing toolbar. And this will present you with even more editing options for this particular block. And at the very bottom there, just select remove block, and voila, the block is gone. All right, let's move on to the next block. So scroll down a bit. And this block is referred to as the Media Card Constellation. And this particular block allows you to display images alongside short pieces of content. And one thing I don't think I really went over is that within each main block, like this Media Card Constellation block, there are additional blocks of content. And if you click on each one, you can see an outline of the block along with the editing options. This gives you a great visual as to what blocks you're working on and making edits to. Okay, so the first change we're gonna make within this block is the headline. So just like before, simply click on the block of content that you wanna edit and change the text. And this section is gonna direct traffic to a landing page that we're gonna create a little later in the video. And we're gonna title this Free Daily Workouts because this landing page is going to promote free daily workouts to entice people to sign up to our mailing list. And without getting into the weeds, our free workouts are going to be in PDF format, which I'll show you how to create a little later on in the video. But essentially, these free PDFs are our free offer, and it's what we're gonna to use to entice people to sign up to our mailing list. And this section of our homepage will drive traffic to our signup forms. If you're scratching your head right now, no worries. We're gonna cover it all a little later on in the video. Then below that is a paragraph block where you can add some text explaining what this is. And I'm just gonna add some dummy text as a placeholder, but again, this is where you would add text explaining and enticing people to click the link below. And I also wanna point out that you have the ability to change this little accent icon, but 
We'll do that a little later on through the customization menu. So you don't need to worry about that right now. And then that brings us to the learn about us link. This is commonly referred to as the call to action, or as you'll hear me call it, a CTA. And this particular block is called a button block. This is what the user will click on to take them to the desired landing page. And by default, the theme starts you off with the CTA of learn about us, but that doesn't necessarily fit with what we're trying to do with this particular block. So let's change the CTA text. And to do that, simply click on the text to open the button block settings, and then type what you want the CTA to be. And don't worry about where this will link to, we're gonna add that later. Then if you look on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see some additional block settings where you can change the background and text color along with the border and link settings. And once again, your block settings are gonna look a little different due to the recent updates to WordPress and the Nova blocks, but this is what your button block settings will look like. You can see you could choose from the styles and the color settings and the border settings all from that one section. And then if you click on the color settings tab, that's gonna open up the text color and background color editing options. But I'm gonna leave everything as is for now. And like I said, we'll revisit these CTAs and add the correct links a little later on. Next are the images within the block. And the theme starts you off with two slender portrait sized images which they referred to as a gallery. They call these two images a gallery. And then let's change the images within the gallery to something that fits our brand. And remember your block settings and toolbar may look a little different than mine due to the recent updates, but the steps to change the images within the gallery are the same. Plus I'm gonna cover the differences here in a few moments. So to change the images, make sure you click on them and that will open up the toolbar on the upper left hand side of the screen then click the change media icon within that toolbar. And this will bring you to the gallery settings. Now you may see a couple of preloaded images within this gallery from the starter content. You can go ahead and click the X on those images to remove them so that you can start from scratch. And think of your gallery as a group of photos for each media card constellation block. The format's pretty similar to your media library. Simply click the select button to upload the images you wanna use. And then I'll find an image on my hard drive. And then don't forget about the alt text and the title. Then for this particular example, I'm gonna add another image to this gallery. So click the add to gallery link. And then click the select button and then find the image you wanna add. Then it takes you to your media library, but make sure you have the image selected that you wanna use. For some reason, it selects another random image, so uncheck it and make sure the image that you just uploaded is selected. Then don't forget about the attachment details and the alt text and title. Then click the add to gallery button. And we now have our two images within our gallery that will display in our media card constellation block. Now you can add a caption if you'd like, but I'm not gonna do that for this tutorial. So go ahead and click the update gallery button. And boom, our gallery is now in place and our images are displaying within the block. Next, you can get even more creative with the presets that Pixel Grade offers. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that you can toggle between different image presets that changes the entire look and feel of how the gallery is displayed. However, your backend and block editing section probably doesn't look like mine due to the updates. So here's what you'll see whenever you're editing the images. So the block settings have been consolidated and you still have the same editing capabilities, but you'll just get to them differently. For example, to access the image presets under the modules section, click on the media composition tab, and this will open the editing options and gallery presets for your images. It's the exact same thing I'm about to cover in the tutorial, but due to the updates, it's just laid out a little differently. And I'm going to go through these one by one, but you can see that you have a ton of flexibility in how the block looks. This gives you a lot of creative control over how your images are displayed on your site, and you can really switch things up pretty easily. 
And as I click through each preset, you really get a sense of how unique you can make each block with just a few clicks of the mouse. It's pretty cool. They even have a surprise me button that picks a preset at random. I suppose this is there if you can't make up your mind, but still pretty cool. And then below that are the element settings. And this gives you the ability to change the image container height. However, do the updates, you're gonna get there differently in your backend. So to change the image container height, you can find this under the media composition tab and then click on that settings tab. Then towards the bottom there under the display section, that's where you can change the image container height. And then below that, you can also change the image position as well. This gives you the ability to edit the position of the image within the block. And let me show you what that looks like on my end. So I'm gonna set the image container height to zero, and then I'll adjust the image position a bit. You can see it moves the image up and down within the block, pretty cool. There we go, I like that. Then in regards to the content, you also have the ability to change some aspects of how the content is displayed. And I'll show you how to access this in a second, but in the content settings, you can change the emphasis level of the content area. And this gives you some additional flexibility with the design. Same goes for the block area. Pretty cool. However, your updated version will look like this. And to access those settings, simply open the color contrast tab And then under the settings tab, you can change the block and content area emphasis. And as you can see, the block emphasis allows you to change the background color of the entire block. Then the content area emphasis allows you to change the background color of the content area, but also change the size. Gives you a lot of flexibility. Awesome stuff. Okay, so I'm actually going to only have one image here. So real quick, I'm gonna change my media. Then at the gallery, I'll click the X over the image that I want to remove. And then click the update gallery button. There we go. Then I'll obviously want to change the image position since her head is cut off. And remember, you'll do this in the media composition settings tab. And again, this is what your version of the settings will look like. So once you open the media composition settings tab, Towards the bottom in the display section is where you can change the image position. Okay, back to my version. To change the image position, you'll just move this lever back and forth until you find an acceptable position for your image. There we go, looks much better. All right, moving on to the next section. So next we have another Hero of the Galaxy block. And remember, yours will look a little different than mine, but nevertheless, the steps are very similar. And we'll just follow the same steps as before to change the image and text. So click on the Change Media icon within the toolbar in the upper left-hand side of the screen. And this will bring you to your media library. This should be somewhat familiar to you by now. And then click the Upload link to upload an image. And then the Select File button to find the image on your hard drive or wherever you happen to store your image. And remember to use a larger image for this. I also recommend compressing your larger images before using them on your website. You can do this at a free site like compressjpeg.com and I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but I highly recommend that you compress your images before uploading them to your site. It will help with load times and overall site speed. And then don't forget about the alt text in the title for the image. Then click the select button. And beautiful, we now have a new background image for this block. Next, let's edit the text. So simply click on the headline block and change the text. And what's great about this block is that it gives you the ability to promote maybe a specific feature of your website or something about your brand. It's just really a great way to showcase it and bring attention to it. For example, I'm showcasing the weight loss training that this website's gonna offer. There we go. Then by default, this headline is set to be an H2 tag, but you can easily change the heading size here under the heading settings. 
You can set it to H1, which is the biggest, or H3, which is the smallest. But I recommend H2 for headings throughout your page. H1 is typically used for titles, and H2 are for headings within your content. Next, I wanna shrink this a bit so that it doesn't take up so much space. This is a personal preference, but I like these sections to be a bit smaller. So under the Layout tab, you have the ability to change a few things like the padding and content width. So for this section, I'm gonna set the content padding to medium and leave the content width at large. There we go, I like the way that looks a lot better. And once again, this is what your version of the block will look like, so just make sure you're under the block settings and then find the design customization section and click on the layout tab. And this will open up the custom padding. And again, I'm using medium for the content padding and then leaving the content width at large. And I realize we're going back and forth between what you're gonna see and what I'm gonna see, but again, the reason for that is because there are a lot of updates that were deployed after I had already shot the video. So instead of reshooting this entire video, I just shot smaller samples so that you could still see what it's gonna look like to create your website on your end. Okay, moving on. Next, we have another media card constellation block. And these will be the same steps as before when we were editing our free daily workout section. So, First thing I'm gonna do is change the headline and content. And just like before, start typing what you want it to say within the content blocks. And this is gonna be our meal plan section. Then feel free to add some enticing text below the headline to drive traffic to the CTA. And then that brings us to the button block, or our CTA. And we'll change this to learn more. And again, don't worry about adding a link just yet. We'll do that in a little bit. Next, let's update the photos in the gallery. So click the change media icon in the toolbar within the upper left-hand side of the screen. And this will bring you to your gallery settings. And it looks like the preloaded starter content is here. So let's close these out by clicking on the X to remove them. Then to add new images, click the select files button and upload the images that you want to use for this particular gallery. There we go. And you can actually drag and drop the images to change their order if you want, but I'm gonna leave them as is and click the Update Gallery button. And check it out, we now have four new images in our quote unquote gallery. Looks great. Then if you want to edit the layout of the images, you can within the presets. Remember, these are located under your Media Composition tab, and then you're going to find that in the Module section of your block settings. And then you can choose different presets to change how the images of the gallery within this block are displayed. All right, so let's move on to our next block. So if you scroll down a bit, you'll come to another Hero of the Galaxy block. And once again, these are the same steps as before. So let's change the background image by clicking the change media icon in the toolbar in the upper left hand side of the screen. And upload an image. Then select the file you want to use. I'm gonna skip the attachment details for now, but be sure to add those and click the select button to add the image. Next, you'll wanna change the text. So go ahead and start typing out the headline that you wanna use within the block. I'm gonna have this say, nutrition made easy. And then I'm also gonna change the padding. So within your block settings, I know it's gonna look a little different, but find your layout tab. and then change the content padding to medium. Perfect. And once again, your block settings will look like this, and you can get here by clicking on the image, 
And then under the design customization section is where you'll find the layout tab. And this gives you the ability to edit the custom padding and the content width and so on. Again, we're setting the content padding to medium and the content width to large. Then on to the final block of our homepage. So the first thing I'm gonna change is the headline. So go ahead and edit the text. This is gonna direct traffic to our online store. So I'm titling this shop online store. And then be sure to add some descriptive text below the headline. Then for the CTA, I'm gonna change the text to shop now. Remember, we're gonna build our online store a little later. Next, it's time to change the images. So click on the images and then click the change media icon in the toolbar. And once again, you'll probably have some starter images there. Go ahead and remove them. Then select the files you wanna use for this particular gallery. And then once you have your images, remember you can swap the order of the photos by simply dragging and dropping them. This will change the order of how they display within the block. It's pretty cool. Then once you have the images in the order you like, click the Update Gallery button. And voila, we now have our gallery in place. Next, it's time to add the actual link to our button block or our CTAs. So if you look at the Shop Now text, this is our CTA and is what we'll use to link to our actual online store that we still need to create. Nevertheless, we still wanna to link to it. So in order to do that, simply click on the Shop Now text to open the button block settings. And then one way to add the link is to click the link icon within the blocks toolbar and this will open the link settings. Now you'll probably have a default pixel grade URL as a placeholder, but to change that, just click the edit button and then add the URL that you want the CTA to link to. So this is going to be our shop. And I realize that we're linking to a page that doesn't have any content on it, but we're gonna build our online store a little later on. That's just so that the URL is in place and the CTA will link to the correct page. Okay, once you've added the URL on the page, that you want to link to, click the submit arrow, and you have now successfully created your first CTA that links to another page. So let's update our other CTAs on this page. So scroll up a little within the healthy meal plan section, go to the learn more CTA, and just follow the same steps as before. So click the text to open the settings, click the link icon within the blocks toolbar, click the edit button, and then add the URL of the page that you wanna to link to. And so we're gonna to link to our meal plans page. And then click the submit arrow. And that one is done. One more to go. Then let's scroll up to our free daily workout section. And then it's the same steps as before. Click the learn more text to open up the button settings. Click the link icon within the blocks toolbar. Click the edit button and add the URL of the page that you wanna to link to. And we're gonna to link to our free daily workouts landing page. Then click the submit arrow. And nice work. You now have three CTAs on your homepage driving traffic to other key parts of your blog. The next thing I wanna cover has to do with SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. And without getting into the weeds, if you installed the Yoast SEO plugin, you'll be able to streamline a lot of the technical aspects of SEO while also positioning your blog for success when it comes to search engine results and your overall SEO. 
You can configure your SEO settings for each individual page and blog post within the back end of your WordPress editor by either clicking on this Y icon in the upper right hand side of the screen, or if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can access the Yoast SEO settings for the page as well. Now, I'm not gonna go into a deep dive here, but I'll show you the basics for how to optimize your pages and posts for the search engines by using this plugin. So the Yoast SEO plugin is a very powerful tool and should be used every time you create a page or blog post on your site. Reason being, there's some quick technical aspects of SEO that you can edit within the plugin that can really do wonders for your site's overall SEO. And the first aspect is the focus keyword. So in that field, simply type in the keyword that you're trying to rank for. And all this means is that Yoast will run a check on the content of the page to see if search engines will recognize what your page is about based off of this keyword. So if you set a focus key phrase for a page within Yoast SEO, the plugin evaluates the page's content and provides feedback on how to improve the content to rank higher for the search term. Next, you can change how your search engine snippet looks from your WordPress editor. This is a super cool feature. Yoast recently added a preview mode so you can see how your snippet will look on mobile and desktop. And you could toggle between the two here. Then to edit the snippet, simply click the edit snippet button and this will present you with some additional editing options where you'll have the ability to edit the SEO title, slug, and meta description. First is the SEO title. By default, Yo starts you off with what is called snippet variables of the title of the page, dash separator, followed by the site title. But if you wanna change how the search engines present your page within the search results, you can do that in the SEO title field. And keep in mind that this only edits the title in your search engine snippet, not what shows up on your actual blog and site. This is strictly to optimize your pages and posts for the search engines. Now you'll probably notice the orange line moving below your text as you type. Well, this helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines and lets you know when you should stop adding to your title. Next is the slug. And the slug is the part of a URL which identifies a particular page on a website in an easy to read form. In other words, it's the part of the URL that explains the page's content. And the slug is typically shown above the search engine snippet in the search results. And for this example, you'll see that the URL slug has been set to front, well, it's supposed to say front page, but that's misspelled for some reason. But if it's your home page, I recommend removing the slug. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then by default, it may automatically add home dash page as the slug, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. Next is the meta description, which is the preview text that people will see whenever they search for your blog post or page within the search engine. It's also used within the HTML of your post, but we won't get into that for now. So within the meta description box, simply start typing a preview of your post. And you wanna be sure to use keywords and make it enticing to help improve your click-through rate. Now, you'll probably notice the orange line moving below your text as you type. This is the same feature as the SEO title field, and it helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines, and lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet by turning green. And there we go. Now once we have our snippet, then after you've created your search engine snippet, again, you can review what it will look like up here in the preview and toggle between mobile and desktop. It's always a good idea to preview your snippet and knowing how you come across in the search engine results can go a long way in your success with SEO. So this is a super cool new feature. And I think our search engine snippet is ready to go. So go ahead and click the close snippet editor button and you've now taken your first step towards optimizing your page for SEO. Nice work. Okay, so now that we have everything in place, it's time to preview our work. So if you scroll back up to the top of the page, you'll see the preview button. However, due to the WordPress updates, your preview button is gonna look a little different than mine, and here's how. So whenever you click the preview button, you'll have the option to view your content based off of what device is being used by the user. You can toggle between desktop, tablet and mobile. However, I found that the tablet and mobile previews don't work properly at the moment. I don't know if it's a bug or a conflict with a plugin, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna preview the desktop version. So make sure that desktop is selected from the dropdown and then click the preview in new tab button. 
and this will open up a separate tab and allow you to preview your work before you publish it. This is a very useful tool because it gives you the ability to see how your content within the WordPress editor will transition to a live browser. And I highly recommend that you preview your work every single time before you publish it. And our preview of our homepage looks amazing. We have our hero sections with some great CTAs and images driving traffic to other pages within our blog. Looks great. All right, so let's go ahead and publish this. So back at the editor, to publish your changes, click the update button. And then soon after that, you'll get a notification that the page has been updated and is live. Then to check it out, click the view page link. And I should point out that yes, this page is live, but no one can see it yet because we haven't launched our blog. So don't worry, it's live, but not online just yet. Either way, it looks amazing. I absolutely love how this homepage is structured. It keeps the user engaged and drives traffic to key places within our site. Love it. Next, it's time to add our featured image. And if you're new to the concept, a featured image is the image that will be displayed whenever someone shares this page on social media. And the first thing you'll need to do is find an image to use. But before you do, please note that the ideal WordPress featured image size is 1200 by 628 pixels. This ensures that your featured image looks good when your site is shared, regardless of what social network it's being shared on. Now you probably don't have an image in those exact dimensions on hand, so I recommend using a service like canva.com to create a custom sized image for your featured image. And let me show you how to do that. So let's head over to canva.com and then to create a custom sized image, click the create a design button. Then from the drop down, select custom dimensions and enter 1200 by 628. and click the Create New Design button. And this will take you to the editing features of Canva. Now, I've already uploaded my image and resized it, but just click the Upload button, add the image you want to use from your computer, and drag and drop the edges of that image to resize it. Then all you have to do is download it to your computer, and you can do that by clicking the Download button in the upper right-hand side of your screen. then one thing that I do recommend doing before you download the image is to compress the file. This will create a lower quality image, but not by much, but doing so will decrease the size of the file and help increase the overall speed of your website. And then click the download button and you'll have a featured image that's ready to be used. Okay, so back at our website, the way Pixel Grade designed this theme was so that the featured image was automatically selected within the page. That's why we installed and activated the Featured Image plugin earlier in the video. We want the ability to pick and choose what featured image is being used when people share our links on Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Because having the right featured image goes a long way in your branding efforts. So to add the featured image to the homepage, we'll need to go back to our WordPress dashboard. So on the upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over the site title and click on Dashboard. and then hover your mouse over Pages in the side nav and click on All Pages. This will bring you to your Pages Management menu, and we briefly covered this a little earlier in the video, but this is where you can manage all of the pages of your site. You can edit, publish, unpublish, delete, and view your pages here. But you can also, due to the Featured Image plugin, add your featured images to your pages. And you can see in this column that no image has been added yet. So to set your homepage's featured image, click the set featured image link in the homepage row. And this will take you to your media library. And this should be somewhat familiar. Just click the upload link. And the select files button. And find the image you want to use for your featured image. Then I'm skipping the attachment details for the sake of time, but don't forget about those. And then click the Set Featured Image button. And 
and then you'll see that the image has been set and ready to go. Now I know that it's a square in the preview, but whenever people share your blog's homepage URL, it'll look like this. And what you're looking at right now is Twitter's card validator. This lets you preview what links will look like when they're shared on Twitter. And you can see we have our featured image along with our SEO title and meta description that we created with the Yoast SEO plugin. Pretty cool. Anyways, having a featured image is key to having a successful site and promoting your brand on social media. Okay, the final thing we need to do to our homepage is reconfigure the default separator icons. And let me show you what I mean. So let's head back to the homepage by hovering our mouse over the site title and click on visit site. And then the separator icons I'm referring to are these little accent icons. It's not a huge deal, but you do have the ability to change them if you want. And here's how you can do that. So first thing you'll need to do is open your customization menu. Then open the themes option tab. Followed by the separators tab. And then you'll see the additional separators you can choose from. Now, since my title has the word beach in it, I'm gonna use this little wave separator. Seems to fit with the brand. And then once you've selected your separator, click the publish button to make your changes live. And then let's exit out of the customization menu. So click the X in the upper left hand side of the screen. And there we go, our homepage is complete. You can see that the new separator is being used throughout the page. Looks great. Okay, moving on. Next, let's edit the alert bar at the top of the screen. So one of the many reasons why I love this theme is that they provide a free alert bar, or as Pixelgrade calls it, a promo bar. And if you're new to the concept, a promo bar is a thin banner that spans the width of the web page that attracts visitors' attention without getting in the way of the content of your site. Now I realize that this particular alert bar is intended to alert people about the hours of operation due to the fact that this theme was primarily used for a restaurant website, but we aren't running a restaurant website for this video and we don't have any hours of operation. However, we can still leverage this promo bar to drive traffic to our landing pages and opt-in forms. And here's how you could do that. So first things first, we'll need to go to our WordPress dashboard to edit the promo bar, which is actually its own separate block. So hover your mouse over your site title and click on dashboard. Then the promo bar settings live within the appearance section. So on the side nav, hover your mouse over appearance and click on block areas. And this will bring you to your block management menu. Now I know this may be confusing because we use content blocks in the WordPress editor, but these blocks are different and are set apart from the blocks we use to build content within our pages and blog posts. Okay, so to start editing the promo bar, find the promo bar in the management menu, it should be the first one, and click edit. And this will bring you to the back end of the promo bar. Now go ahead and click on the text within the promo bar and this will bring up the block settings. Now, one thing I want to point out is that once again, you'll have the updated version of the block settings, so yours will look a little different. However, you'll still be doing the same thing I'm doing in this video and editing the display settings. Here's what I mean. Once you click on the text within the promo bar, your settings will look like this. And all you'll do is click on the display tab and make sure current status is selected. And then to change the text in the promo bar, we'll update the text within the open and close note fields. And then let me go back to my screen and show you how to do that. So all you're gonna do is change the current status notes by adding the text you wanna display within the open and close notes fields. By adding the same text in both fields, 
you can ensure that the message in your promo bar will stay the same regardless of what time it is. So go ahead and add your desired message in the open and closed note fields. I'm going to say free daily workouts claim here. And then copy and paste it to the close note field as well. There we go. And you can see that our promo bar is now displaying a brand new call to action. Again, without getting into the weeds, this promo bar is set to display various messages based off of what time it is. That's why they have an open and closed note field. That's very helpful if you have hours of operation, but we don't and we're leveraging the promo bar to drive traffic to our landing page so that it can collect email addresses and grow our email list. Now we obviously haven't built the landing page yet, but we have the link. So the next step is to add the link from our landing page to the promo bar text. That way, whenever someone clicks on it, they'll be taken to that particular page. And to do so, it's pretty straightforward. Simply click on the promo bar outside of the text. So anywhere in the block, but make sure you click away from the text. And this will bring up the link settings. And this is just like our CTAs on our homepage. Simply add the URL of the landing page you wanna direct traffic to. And this is gonna direct people to our free daily workouts page. Then make sure you flip the switch next to open in new tab so that it's off. This will ensure that whenever someone clicks on the promo bar, the page will open in the same browser tab. It's just the best practice when linking to pages within your own site. Okay, so now that the promo bar is ready, go ahead and click the update button to publish the changes. And you should get a notification letting you know that the block has been updated. And then let's check it out and visit our site. So hover your mouse over the site title and click on visit site. And beautiful, look at that. We now have a professional and free, I might add, a way to alert and grab the attention of your site's visitors and direct them to your landing page, which we still need to build, but your landing page is where you'll embed an opt-in form and collect email addresses to build your email list. Okay, so before we move on, let's check out what we've built so far. So you've put together a professional promo bar, you've set the primary navigation menu, you've designed a unique logo, updated the overall color scheme, and design this beautiful homepage to entice user engagement, show off your brand, and direct traffic to your landing pages and online store. This is a great first step in the overall design and build of your site. Awesome job. All right, moving on. Next, let's start adding content to our pages. So the first page we're going to configure is the About page. And if we fast forward real quick, you can get a better idea of what we're going to be designing. So your about page is not only a great place to introduce yourself, but it also serves as a way to communicate your mission and vision to your site's readers. And this theme presents your content with a cool minimalist look and feel, and I just love the way it looks, and it's super simple to do. So let's get started. All right, since we're editing our about page, let's access it first. So click about in your primary nav. Then to start editing at the top of the screen, click the edit page link. And this will bring you to the back end of the page and give you access to the WordPress editor. And I know we covered this a little earlier in the video, but just a quick refresher, you have a title section. Below that's the content area. And there's the document and block settings along with some additional editor settings. Then you have the Yoast SEO settings and the preview and publish options. All right, so now it's time to start building the page and adding our various blocks of content. So anytime you wanna add a different type of block, you can do so by clicking this plus icon. This will open up a pop-up menu where you can browse the various types of blocks that WordPress has to offer. Now, you're probably noticing that your pop-up menu looks different than mine, and that's due to the WordPress update. Yours will look like this. 
And you'll also probably notice a few subtle differences between your editor and mine, but I can assure you that they all do the same thing. So within your block pop-up menu, if you click the Browse All button, you'll have another pop-up menu to the left where you can browse all of the blocks that are available. And this new block feature really gives you a ton of flexibility when it comes to the layout and design of your pages and blog posts. And we'll get a lot more familiar with the different types of blocks in a few moments, but I just wanted to show you how to access the block menu and add different blocks before we moved on. Okay, so the first block we wanna add is within the Nova Blocks section. So find that, it should be at the very top, and then select the Hero of the Galaxy block. You can also type that in the search field and find it as well. And this is the large image with the headline on it that spans across the screen and sits above our content. Now you can see that the theme uses an image of the moon as a placeholder, but we'll wanna add our own image. So to change the background image, click on the image and that'll open up the toolbar in the upper left hand side of the screen. And then within the toolbar, click on the change media icon. And this will bring you to your media library. Just like before, we're uploading a new image, so click the upload link. And the select files button. And then find the image you wanna use. And I recommend using a larger sized image. I'm using one that is 920 by 1280 pixels, and I compressed it using compressjpeg.com before I uploaded it to the site. And again, I highly recommend that you compress all of your images before uploading them to your site. It'll help with speed time, load time, and just overall best practice. There we go, then don't forget about the attachment details. And then click the select button. Perfect. Next, I wanna shrink the height so that this block doesn't take up so much space on the screen. So to do that, simply click on the block tab on the right-hand side of the screen. And once again, my settings will look a little bit different than yours due to the updates, but this is how yours will look. And then under the design customization section, click on the layout tab. And that'll open up the content padding, the content width, and the minimum height. And then to change the height, I've selected half, and then the content padding at medium, and the content width at large. And let me show you how I did it on my end real quick. So again, mine looks a little different, but I'm gonna click on the Layout tab. And then under the Minimum Height section, select Half. There we go. Then you can shrink it even more by adjusting the content width and the content padding. And again, you'll do that within the Layout tab. And then under the Content Padding section, I'm gonna select Small and you can shrink the size of this block even more. Pretty cool. So I'm actually gonna keep it at medium, so I'll switch it back, but that's how you can get creative with the design of this block if you'd like. Okay, next, let's edit the headline. So this is our About page, and I'm gonna title this About Me. And then feel free to add a catchy tagline below that if you want. I'm just gonna say, Welcome to my fitness blog. Not sure how catchy that is, but it'll do. Next, it's time to start adding actual content to the page. Now, you can simply place your cursor below the block and start typing, but you can also add specific blocks if you'd like. Let me show you what I mean. So, to add a block, click the plus icon, and this will open up the block menu. And remember, your block pop-up menu will look a little different than mine, but it still holds all of the same blocks. And for this example, we're gonna be using the paragraph block. And you can search for it by typing paragraph in the search field here in the block pop-up menu. Then once you find it, click on the paragraph block to add it to your page. And all a paragraph block is, is it's a block for text. And if you start typing, WordPress will automatically create a paragraph block, but I wanted to show you how to find it here as well. Then I'm just adding some dummy text for the sake of time, but this is where you would start writing and introducing yourself to your audience. And as I do, you can see the outline of each paragraph block as well as the editing toolbar and block settings. And once again, yours will look a little different. And as you start writing, if you click on the body of text, 
you'll see that you'll have even more creative control with a toolbar and some block settings. And again, yours will look a little different than mine, but again, it's pretty similar and easy to use. Next, I wanna add a heading. And this will be a different sized and formatted font that stands apart from the rest of the text. Having different headings within your content is good for SEO, content structure, and readability. Headings help people skim through your content and quickly find what they want. So to achieve this, we'll need to add a heading block after the paragraph block. And to add a completely new block, find the three dot icon within the paragraph block, and this will bring up even more editing options. And then from the drop down menu, select insert after, since we're inserting a completely new block after this paragraph block. Then to add a new block, click the plus icon, and this will bring up the block menu. Now we're actually going to add what is called a headline block. It's still considered a heading, but the headline block has some added design elements to it. And once again, this is what your block pop-up menu will look like. So find the Nova Blocks section and select the headline block. You can search for headline block in the search field, or you can click the Browse All button in the block pop-up menu. And that will display the extended menu of all the blocks and patterns that you could use. And then under the Nova Blocks section, find the headline block and click on that. And then after you find the block, as you can see, it still gives us the H2 heading tag, which is good for SEO, but the actual design is really unique and helps your heading stand out. And then I'm gonna use this heading to introduce the owner of the site. So for this example, I'm pretending that someone named Kaylee is running the website, so I'll type, hi, I'm Kaylee, this is my story. Then this is a great opportunity to include different types of media to help introduce yourself and create that trust with your audience. And one of the best mediums to do that with is video. Luckily, the new WordPress editor makes adding video to your site super simple. There's no coding, there's no headache, you just copy and paste the link of the video and you're good to go. So for this particular example, I'm using a YouTube video. And YouTube is great because you can grab the link of the video super quick. And for this example, I'm using a video from Love Sweat Fitness. This is a great health and fitness website geared towards helping women reach their fitness goals. So once you have a video you wanna use, click the share icon below the video, and then just click the copy button to copy that link. And that's the link we're gonna use on our site. Then if we head back to our website, all you're gonna do is paste that link from YouTube below the heading, and WordPress will automatically embed the YouTube video within the content. Now you can add a caption below this video if you want, but I'm gonna leave it as is. And overall, it looks amazing. We now have an embedded and responsive YouTube video within the page. Okay, then I'm gonna add some dummy text below the video. And again, this is where you would start typing. Then let me show you how to get creative with the layout of your text. And we need to add a new block for this, so click the three dot icon within the paragraph block. And then within the more options drop down, select insert after. And then let's add a block. And then from the block menu, search for columns. And you should find it within the layout elements. There it is. Then within the columns block, you can select what variation you wanna display. So go ahead and select the first option there where the columns are evenly distributed 50-50. Then you should see two evenly split areas to add different blocks. So on the first one, click that plus icon to add a block. And we're gonna add an actual heading block, so search for heading there in the search field. And there it is. Then I'm gonna title this section, My Mission. And you can see that we have our beautiful H2 heading font size. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, so follow the same steps as before. Click the plus icon for the block menu and then find the heading block. There we go. Then I'm gonna title this section, My Vision. Perfect. 
Then again, I'm pasting dummy text below this, but this is where you can give an explanation of the mission and vision for your site. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more dummy text right below those columns to even things out. And this is a great first section of your about page. You got a beautiful headline there introducing yourself with a YouTube video, followed by some columns of text and headings with your mission statement and vision. Looks great. Okay, let's keep going. So let's add another section of text starting with a headline block. So click the three dot icon to open the more options. Select insert after. Then click the plus icon to open the block menu. And then find the headline block. And this one I'm gonna title, What is Beach Bootcamp Fitness? This is a great opportunity to explain what your site is about while also answering a pretty important question that your audience is probably gonna have if this is their first time visiting your site. Then directly below, let's add an image block. So once again, click the plus icon. And then this time in the pop-up menu, search for image. There it is. And this is pretty straightforward. We're just uploading an image to use, so click the upload button. And then once you find your image, boom, check that out. Our image is conveniently embedded within our content. You do have some editing options available. You can change the size of the image with these blue dots by dragging and dropping them. Or you can change it in the block image settings on the right hand side of the screen. You can also add a caption below the image if you want. Pretty cool. Then I'm gonna add a couple of paragraphs of content below that. And then let's add another headline. Hopefully these steps are becoming familiar to you, but to insert a different type of block after the text, click the three dot icon to open the more options. Click insert after. Then click the plus icon. And find the headline block. And this section is actually going to house our embedded opt-in form that we'll be using to collect email addresses of people who want to access our free workouts. So we'll title this headline, Free Daily Workouts. And I'll add a little text below the headline, and then we'll add the actual opt-in form a little later on in the video. But for now, our About page is really coming together. So let's go ahead and preview this before we publish it to make it live. So click the Preview button, and remember, yours will look a little different. After clicking the preview button, you'll need to click the preview in a new tab button. And the page looks great. We have our hero image and a great looking headline along with some different types of media, unique content layout, And then at the very bottom is where we'll embed our opt-in form that will help us collect email addresses and grow our list. And we'll do that a little later on in the video. For now, let's go ahead and publish our changes. So back at the editor, click the update button. And it may take a few moments for the page to update. But after a few short seconds, you should get a notification letting you know that the page has been updated and your changes are now live. Then go ahead and click the view page link to check it out. And no surprise, it looks great. I love how easy it is to create and design different layouts and styles of content. You used to have to do major amounts of coding to achieve things like this. And now all you have to do is basically click your mouse a few times. Really is amazing. All right, moving on. Next, let's create our workouts page to help direct traffic to our landing page. So for this particular video and website, I'm creating various pages to not only provide information to the site's visitors, but to get them to take action and sign up for my email list through one of my various opt-in forms. 
This is a key component to building an email list and is one of the main ways you're going to not only build your audience, but it's a great way to monetize your blog as well. And we'll get into the specifics of that a little later on, but for now, let me show you what we're going to be making. So if we fast forward real quick, you can see the workouts page we're going to create. And for this particular page, I'm using three featured blocks with some CTAs and an opt-in form at the bottom of the page. Now, you don't have to build your page exactly like this, but I wanna show you some creative options you have when it comes to driving traffic to a landing page and growing your audience. As you can see, whenever a visitor clicks on one of the free download buttons, it takes them to another landing page, which is where I have even more information about my free downloads, and then give the visitor another opportunity to fill out the opt-in form. Again, you don't have to structure your website exactly like this, but hopefully I'm giving you some ideas as to how you can design your site, grow your email list, and drive traffic to your free offers. Now, if you're scratching your head again because I'm talking about email lists and free offers, let me break it down for you. But a free offer is something free that you offer to your audience in exchange for their email address. It's typically a free ebook, video, white paper, etc. And then whenever the visitor fills out the opt-in form, they'll have access to your free offer, and in return, you've captured their email address. And don't worry, we're gonna cover list building and opt-in forms a little later on in the video, but just know that building these pages is the first step in the process. So let's begin building our workouts page. So first things first, go ahead and go to the actual page. Click on workouts in the primary nav. And then to start editing it, click the edit page button at the top of the screen. And then we're basically following the exact same steps and layout structure as our about page. So the design of our site remains consistent. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add the hero of the galaxy block. So click the plus icon to add a new block. And then find the hero of the galaxy block. And again, do the WordPress updates. Your steps to find the block may be a little bit different than mine. But then once you find the block, we're gonna to wanna to change the background image. So click the change media icon in the toolbar there. And you should be familiar with these steps to upload an image. So click the upload files. And then the select files button and find the image you wanna use. And remember for these hero of the galaxy boxes, I recommend using a larger sized image. For this example, I'm using an image that is 1,920 pixels by 1,275 pixels wide and tall. Then don't forget about the attachment details and click the select button. There we go. And then I'm gonna change the size and padding again. So find the layout tab. And once again, your block settings will look a little different. To change the padding and the height of this image, click the Layout tab. And then from there, I'd set the content padding to medium, content width to large, and the minimum height to half. Okay, and then back at my version, I'm gonna set the minimum height to half. And let's change our headline. So I'm gonna title this Free Daily Workouts. And the tagline, to quick workouts made for people on the go, something catchy. Then below that, let's add the featured content blocks with the CTAs. So click the plus icon to add a new block. And then find the stackables tab. You'll wanna click browse all blocks. And find the stackables section. And then within that section, the block you want is called the feature block. And then look at that, Stackable even has a welcome video showing you how to use the blocks. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna close this for the sake of time, but if you wanna go ahead and check it out, go ahead. And then as you can see, the block layout is pretty straightforward. You have a section for the block's headline, a paragraph section, a place for an image, and your call to action button. Love it. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to change is the heading. And it's pretty straightforward. You'll just swap out the placeholder text with the text that you want to display. And I'm gonna type five minute workout. And then below that, you'll just replace the demo text with what you want it to say. And this could be a few short sentences describing the five minute workouts. Then to add an image, just click on that gray icon and it'll take you to your media library where you can use an existing image or upload a new one. I'm using a new image, so I'll click upload files and then the select files button. And then once you find your image, I'm skipping the attachment details for now. But don't forget about the alt text and the title. Then click the select button and the image will be added to the block. Next, let's edit the call to action button. So click on it to open the button settings. And this is just like whenever we were editing our home page, you can swap out the button CTA text and write your own call to action. And this is gonna be directing traffic to our free workouts that are going to be a downloadable PDF. So I'll have our CTA say free download. And again, I'm gonna show you how to create that free downloadable PDF a little later on in the video. Next, you'll need to assign a URL to the button so that whenever someone clicks on it, they'll be taken to that page. And for this example, I'm directing traffic to one single landing page, which is our free daily workouts. So enter the URL in that field. And remember, we still need to create this free daily workouts landing page, but having the URL here will ensure that the button will direct people to the correct place. Next, let's change the color of the button. So on the right-hand side of the screen, under the style settings, look for the button tab. And then if you scroll down a bit, you'll be able to edit the background and text color of the button. And you should see the theme color palette that you selected earlier in the video. And then I'm gonna select this pink color for our button color. And then I'll use white for the text. Beautiful, looks really nice. Okay, so we have our first featured block, but we'll be creating two more of these blocks. But instead of creating them all over again, I wanna show you something cool that will save you some time. If you know that you're going to be using similar blocks within a page or post, the new WordPress editor has a new feature where you can duplicate a block and basically make a copy of it within the page. And let me show you what I mean. So within the block, open the more options menu by clicking on those three dots. Then from the drop down, select duplicate. And this will duplicate the block with the exact style and content that you just created. Now you'll obviously need to swap out the heading, text, and image, but it's a quick option whenever it comes to building the page if you know you're gonna be using the same blocks over and over again, like we are. And you'll walk through the same steps to add the image. And I realize you probably know how to upload the images by now, but just a quick refresher, click the upload link, and then the select files button, and then find the image that you wanna use on your hard drive or wherever you store your images. And then don't forget to fill out the attachment details. And then after you do so, click the select button. And I'm having the button link to the same page for this example, but if you want to link to a separate landing page, don't forget to update the button URL. And then let's add our final feature block. So just follow the same steps as before to duplicate this block. And I'll title this one 15 minute workouts. And I'm gonna go through the steps of uploading the image pretty quickly for the sake of time. And again, I'm leaving this button URL alone because each one of these feature blocks will be driving traffic to the same landing page. Now I do wanna point out that it's probably not the best strategy to have three calls to action link to one page, but if you're following along step-by-step, step, it's not a big deal if you do. Again, I just wanted to give you an idea of how you could play around with these blocks, the different things that you could do with them and different ways you can structure your pages. But again, if you do have the time, I would probably link to three separate pages or maybe even three separate opt-in forms depending on how you're structuring your free offer. But if you are following along step-by-step, step, not a big deal, still gonna work, you're still gonna drive traffic to your landing page. It's, it's still going to be beneficial to your audience, but I just wanted to bring that up. All right, let's keep going. 
And the final thing I want to do on this page is embed an opt-in form. So let's add a headline introducing the form. So click the plus icon to add a block. Then find the headline block. And this is going to be enticing people to opt in for our free workouts. So I'll title this free daily workouts. And don't worry about the form. We're going to add that a little later on in the video. And again, if you're scratching your head when I say form, I'm referring to the web form that your blog's visitors will fill out. That's how we'll know who to send our free daily workouts to. And it's how we're going to be growing our email list. But again, don't worry. We're going to cover it all a little later on in the video. Next, don't forget about your Yoast SEO settings. You'll want to be sure to update your search engine snippet. And then everything's looking good. So let's preview it real quick. And perfect. Everything is in place and it looks great. Like I said a little earlier, we'll embed the email opt-in form a little later on in the video. And then let's test out one of our call to action buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And it's functioning properly. It's linking to our landing page that we still need to build, but it's working. That's a good thing. All right, so let's go back to our workouts page and publish it. Just click the update button. There we go. And then view the page to see it live. And it looks great. Now, like I said, you don't need to build these exact same pages on your site, but hopefully these examples are starting to give you some ideas as to what you can do on your website. And again, don't worry about not having the opt-in form at the bottom of the page. We're going to do that a little later on in the tutorial. Okay, moving on. Next, let's create and structure our meal plans page. Now, in this portion of the tutorial, I'm not only showing you how to create a page showcasing various meal plans, but you'll also learn how to implement a revenue stream by essentially creating an online store within your site. Now, I know we're going to have a dedicated quote unquote online store within our site, but I'm also structuring this meal plan page so that you could sell digital products like meal plans in PDF format from this page as well. And if we fast forward real quick, you could see what I mean. So the structure of the page is pretty similar to the other pages we've been building so far. But one thing that's different about this page is that we're actually selling digital products and linking out to our cart from this page. This gives you a great way to showcase your products, gives your audience a way to easily purchase your products directly from your site, and it opens up a potentially lucrative revenue stream. And the great thing about digital products is that you don't have any physical inventory to worry about and keep stocked. Plus, it's a passive income stream, meaning you don't have to actively attend to it. It's basically set on autopilot, and you just sit back and watch the sales come in. All right, so let's get started and build our meal plans page. So go ahead and access the page in your primary navigation menu. And then click the edit page link to start editing it. And then just like the other pages, we'll want to add our hero of the galaxy block. So click the plus icon and add that new block. Then browse through the block menu and find the hero of the galaxy block. And then let's change the background image. So click the change media icon and follow the same steps to upload a new image. And then I'm gonna go through the upload steps pretty quick, but you'd click the upload link the select files button and find the image that you want to use. Then don't forget about your attachment details. And click the select button. There we go. And let's swap out the headline and tagline text. 
So this is gonna be our meal plans page that showcases our digital meal plans that we're going to sell. So I'll title this Healthy Meal Plans. And then add a catchy tagline below that. Next, I'm gonna shrink the padding so that it doesn't take up as much space. So on the block settings on the right hand side of the screen, you'll open up your layout tab. And then within that minimum height section, go ahead and select half. And remember your settings will look a little different than mine due to the update, but it's still pretty straightforward. Next, we're gonna add the feature block section. So click the plus icon to add a new block. And within the block menu, search and find the feature block. And again, this should be somewhat familiar since we just used the exact same block for our previous workouts page a few minutes ago. And then I'll just update the block to feature my digital meal plans. So I'm gonna title this one Protein Pack. And then I'll leave the description text as is for the sake of time, but you obviously wanna add some text explaining what the product is. Then for the button, it's the same steps as the workout page. Just click on it to open the block editing options. And for the text, I'm gonna have it say buy now for $24.99. It's a pretty straightforward call to action. Then for the URL of the button, I'm just gonna have a hashtag as a placeholder for now, but we haven't created our product yet. However, once we have the digital product, we'll link to it here so that your audience can purchase it directly from this page. It's a super cool feature. Okay, next, let's change the color of the button. So under the style tab, the block settings, find the button tab and click on it. And scroll down and you'll be able to adjust the color of the button and text. And again, I'm using that pinkish color for my button and white for the text. Next is the image. So click on the gray placeholder image and upload the image that you're going to use. Now for this particular page, I've created some graphics using Pixelmator. It's a graphic design software like Photoshop, but it's for a Mac. Either way, I created graphics for this page because it's basically a sales page. And I wanna showcase my products in a unique and cool way that tickles the visitor's buying bone. And as you can see, I've created some graphics that look like actual books. But remember, these products will be digital PDFs. So you'll wanna be sure and communicate to your audience so that there isn't any confusion on what they're buying. All right, let's add another feature block. So I'm gonna do the duplicate option. So we'll duplicate this block by clicking that three dot icon for the more options. And then click on duplicate. And voila, we have an exact replica of the block. Saves us some time. So this one is gonna be my veggie pack. So I'll edit the title and description. We can leave the button as is, and then click the image to upload a new one. And follow the same steps to find your image and upload it. There we go, looks great. Then I'm gonna break up this page a bit and add another Hero of the Galaxy block. It's just a way to diversify the layout of this page. So click the plus icon to add a new block. And then from the block menu, find the Hero of the Galaxy block. And let's add our background image. So click the Change Media button. and upload the image you wanna use, and just follow the same steps as before to upload an image to your media gallery. And I know some of these steps are repetitive, but I do this so that these steps come as second nature to you as you gain more experience in building your site. Okay, next, let's shrink it down a bit. So under your layout tab on the right-hand side of the screen, change the minimum height to half. 
and yours will look a little different than mine, but remember these settings will still be under your layout tab. And then staying in the layout section, find the content padding and change it to small. And this will shrink it down even more so that it doesn't take up so much space. Perfect. All right, then swap out the text with something to help entice your visitors to make a purchase. I'm letting them know that all of my eBooks are an instant download. And then I'll also let them know that they're available worldwide on all devices. Then feel free to change the scrolling effects and focal point if you'd like. And yours will look like this. Under the design customization section, click the scrolling effect tab. And then from there, you can configure the scrolling settings for this block. But I'm leaving this as is. However, I am changing the heading size. So I'll click on the heading to open the settings. And it's currently using an H1 sized heading, but I wanna use an H2 heading. So click the H2 tab in the block settings. And look at that. We now have a nice looking page break that is also enticing our site's visitors to make a purchase. Okay, let's add another feature block for our next product. And again, I'm just duplicating the above feature block. So open the more options menu within the block and select duplicate. Then check this out. I wanna move this block below our hero of the galaxy block. So to do that, towards the upper left hand side of the block, look for some arrow icons and then you can actually move the placement of the block by clicking on them. So I'm moving this down, so I'll click the arrow that's pointing downwards, and check that out. Our block almost magically moves directly below the Hero of the Galaxy block, pretty cool. All right, so this is gonna be my gluten-free meal plan. So I'll update the title, the content, and the image of the block. And yes, it's the exact same steps as before. So just go ahead and go through those. There we go. Then for the final block, I'm gonna save you some time and just fly through this one. So I'll duplicate it. And this block is gonna be my paleo meal plan. And again, I'll update the title, the content, the image, follow all those steps to get it looking nice. And there you have it, our meal plans sales page is really coming together. Then don't forget about the Yoast SEO settings. And instead of scrolling to the bottom of the page, you can also click this Yoast icon in the upper right hand side of your screen. And this will give you the ability to update your search engine snippet as well as configure the other aspects of Yoast for this post. You can click the Google Preview tab and gives you another quick way to optimize your content for SEO as well. All right, so let's preview it. So click the Preview button, and then you'll need to select that you want to preview it in the other tab. And it's looking good. I really love this feature block and how the content is structured. It not only looks professional, but it presents your site's visitors with helpful info about the products, and it gives them an easy way to purchase digital products directly from your website. All right, so let's publish this. So back at the editor, just click the update button to push these changes live. And then once it's ready, click the view page link to check it out. And no surprise, it looks fantastic. Now we obviously aren't linking to our products yet because we haven't created them, but I'm gonna cover that a little later on in the video where all you'll have to do is add a link to each individual button on this page 
and it will allow your site's visitor to purchase each digital meal plan directly from your site. This is a great way to not only monetize your website, but helps your audience with products that are beneficial to them. It's a win-win. Okay, moving on. Next, we're gonna create your landing page so that you can begin to build and grow your email list. So the next page we're gonna create is our landing page for our free workouts. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what that will look like. Now the purpose of any landing page is to capture your visitor's email address. And in order to do that, you'll need some sort of opt-in form. Now, as you can see, the landing page we're about to build will have an opt-in form front and center, and will give you a way to not only build your email list, but build a relationship with your audience through email and then eventually monetize that email list. Another cool feature of this landing page is that we can add this cool full width video block that gives us the ability to embed a YouTube video. This is yet another way to incorporate different types of media within your blog, and video is a great way to keep your audience engaged and coming back for more. Then I'm also gonna show you some various ways to diversify your content with different layouts for your text, as well as the testimonial section. And then finally, we're gonna add another full width call to action at the bottom of the page to help drive traffic to your opt-in form. Okay, so back at the site, if you recall, we added the landing page URL to our promo bar. So if you click the claim here text, it will take you to our landing page. Then to start editing it, click on the edit link at the top of the screen. And then just like before, we'll want to add a Hero of the Galaxy block. So click the plus icon to add a new block and find the Hero of the Galaxy block. And I know I might sound like a broken record, but your experience will look a little different than mine due to the WordPress update. But then once you find the Hero of the Galaxy block, we'll want to change the background image. So click the Change Media button in the toolbar there and follow the same steps as before to upload an image. So you're going to click the upload link and then the select files button and find the image you want to use. And then don't forget about the attachment details and click the select button. There you go. Then I'm going to change the size and padding again. So you'll find the layout tab in the block settings on the right hand side of the screen and then change the minimum height to half. And then I'm going to change the headline. So I'm going to title this join BBF and get free workouts. And then I'm actually going to remove the tagline block. So click the more options icon and select remove block. There we go. Now it's time to start adding content. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a headline and some text explaining what this page is all about. So once again, click the plus icon and this time find the heading block. Then add the text to the heading within the block and try to use language that influences an action but also directs traffic to your opt-in form. Remember the landing page's purpose is to not only explain your free offer, which are free workouts in PDF format, but you're going to capture email address as well. So be descriptive and try to think like a marketer. So this is gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm going to title this, I'm ready to get my free workouts. Then I'm just gonna add some dummy text below the heading, but again, this is a good opportunity for you to explain what your free offer is and what the visitor needs to do in order to receive it. Then a little later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to embed a signup form below this text. But for now, let's add a video block after the text. So click that three dot icon to open the more options. Then select insert after. And click the plus icon to open the block menu. 
Then within your block pop-up menu, you'll want to click the Browse All tab so that you could search all of the blocks available and find the Stackable section and then select the Video Pop-up block. Now this is different from our embedded YouTube video because it gives us a little more flexibility in how the video is presented. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you can see the layout settings that you can choose from to change how the video is displayed. And there are some paid and free versions, but for this video, we're using the free layout. So select Video Pop-Up 2. And boom, check that out. Our video is now stretched the full width of the page. Now I should point out that this block is obviously using a placeholder image and isn't linked to our video yet. So to change that, click the Style tab under the block settings. And then under the General tab, enter the URL of the video that you want to use in the field provided. And please note that it only allows YouTube or Vimeo URLs. Then moving down a bit to the Background tab, clicking on that will give you the ability to swap out the image that is being used for the block. So once the Background tab is opened, go ahead and click on that image placeholder to change it. And this will bring you to your media library. And pretty sure you know what to do here. And as you're uploading your image, try to use an image that is either from the video or something that is very similar. This image is gonna be basically representing your video on the page within this video block. And I'm skipping the attachment details for the sake of time, but don't forget those. And then click the select button There we go. And one final touch is the background tint strength. And you can actually change the strength of the tint with this little lever. Just move it to the left and right, and you can change the tint of the image. Pretty cool. Okay, let's add another block. So click the plus icon to open the block menu. And then find the heading block again. then this section is going to explain what is included in our free offer. So I'll use the heading, what's included. And I'm just adding some dummy text at first, but again, this is where you can explain to your audience what they'll get from the free offer. And check this out. Let me show you yet another way to diversify your content and switch up how your text is displayed. So we have a nice paragraph of text, but let's add some list content. And let me show you what I mean. So first let's add a new block just follow the same steps as before to do that. Click the More Options icon, and then select Insert After, and click the plus icon. Then within the block menu, you're gonna click on Browse All, and then find the Stackable section, and select the Icon List block. And remember, this is within the Stackable blocks. And this particular block will allow you to create unique numbered or bulleted lists within your content, similar to how you would in a Word doc or an email, but you can get pretty creative with the styling. Check this out. So first, I'm gonna write out my list of what's included in this free offer. Again, this list not only breaks up your content, but it's informing the reader what they'll get whenever they sign up, which is ultimately influencing them to fill out your opt-in form. Okay, then after you've typed out your list, by default, the block starts you off with these checkmark icons. But if you want to change them, simply open the icon tab and the style section of the block settings. And then you can change things like the icon type, shape, color, and size. And then I'm going to go with the circle star. And then I'll make it that pinkish color. Looks great. All right, and let's keep going. So I'm gonna add another section with a new heading. So follow the same steps to insert a block below. Click the More Options icon. And then select Insert After. And click the plus icon. And then add another heading block. And this section is gonna be titled, Does It Work? And this will be where our customer testimonials will live. These are great because they give social proof that your product works. 
It's been said that having testimonials on your sales page or landing pages can increase conversions by 50%. Luckily, we have some cool testimonial blocks that can help us display professional and effective testimonials. So go ahead and follow the steps to insert a block after this text. And then select insert after. And click the plus icon. And then follow the steps to find the stackable section. And find the testimonial block. And you can see that the block already starts you off with a great looking foundation for a few testimonials. It's pretty straightforward. You can edit everything within the block. And we'll start with the image. So just click on it and follow the steps to upload an image of a happy customer. Now you'll obviously need to reach out to people who have already used your product or blog or free offer, but I can assure you that as time goes on and whatever it is that you're helping your audience with, you will find happy and satisfied people in your audience that will be more than happy to leave a glowing comment about you, your blog, or your product. Sometimes all you have to do is ask. So don't be afraid to ask your audience for a review either. Plus, as you can see, it's promotion for them as well. You can display their name, or if they have a blog or a business, you can place it under their picture within the block. This is another way for them to get in front of another audience as well. It's a win-win for both parties. And then we'll follow the same exact steps to add our second testimonial. And I'm just gonna kinda go through this, but again, we're gonna add an image. There we go. And I love this block. This is a great tool to help increase conversions. Looks good. Okay, moving on. Next, let's add our CTA block. So insert a new block below the testimonials. So click the plus icon and then find the stackable section and select the call to action block. Then just like our video pop-up block, we're gonna change how it's presented on the page. So on the right hand side of the screen in the block settings under the layout tab, you can select different designs. And for this video, I'm using the call to action two. So go ahead and select that. And then the block changes to a full width layout, but it looks a little off. So to fix that in the block settings toolbar, click on the align center icon and that adjusts the layout and gives it some more padding. Looks much better in my opinion. Next, let's change the text so that it matches the rest of our page. So the first thing to do is highlight the text. Then under the block settings, make sure you have the style tab open. And under the style tab, click the reset button next to where it says typography. And this will reset the text so that it matches our current settings. Then let's change the size of the font and use the H2 headings. So click H2. Then set the size to 75 pixels. And voila, our heading matches the rest of our page. Looks great. Next is the CTA button. So to edit it, find the button tab and open it. Then within it, you have the ability to configure some of the settings like the URL that the button will link to. And for now, I'm placing the pound sign as a placeholder. The reason for that is we're gonna be doing something special with this button in a few moments. So we'll come back to the link in a few minutes. Next is the color. So scroll down a bit and select the button and color text you wanna use. Then you'll also wanna change the call to action. So just swap out the text and type what you want it to say. And I'm having this direct people to our opt-in form. So I'll have it say, get started today. Then change the heading text with a catchphrase or something to entice people to click the button. I'm saying sign up and get free VIP access. Then we wanna change the background image so that it matches our overall style and brand. So in the block settings, find the block background tab. Then once opened, simply click on the image and you'll be taken to your media library 
where you can upload a new image to use. And I recommend using a larger sized image. For example, I'm using an image that is 920 by 1280 pixels. This way I can be certain that it will look good on all devices whenever it's spread across the screen. Then you can change the background tint strength if you'd like. This can help with text and, and allowing the button to stand out. There we go. Then don't forget about your Yoast SEO settings. Be sure to edit your search engine snippet before publishing. And all right, our landing page is starting to come together. So let's preview this real quick. So click the preview button. And again, you're gonna wanna preview in the other tab. So click that as well. And our landing page is looking good. Now we obviously have to add our opt-in form and link out our call to action button, but overall I'm really liking the structure and look and feel of this page. Okay, so let's go back to the WordPress editor and let's publish this. Now I know what you're thinking, we haven't added the form or the link to the CTA, but no worries, that's what we're gonna do next. But I just wanna update the page so that our changes are saved before we move on. All right, so let's view the page to make sure everything looks good so far. So click the view page link at the top of the screen. And once again, no surprises, the page looks great. We have our full width video there with some list content, testimonials, and our full width CTA at the bottom. Again, we'll update that and I'll show you how to do that a little later on in the video. Overall, I'm really happy with how this page has come together. This is going to be a great landing page. All right, and don't forget to add the featured image to your pages. This is also something that you'll want to get in the habit of doing for all of your pages and blog posts. So in order to add the featured image, you're going to want to head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover your mouse over your site title in the upper left hand side of the screen and click on dashboard. And then click on pages. And from there, find our free daily workouts page and add your featured image. Again, I know this may seem tedious, but you should always get in the habit of adding your featured images to your pages and posts. The good news is that whenever we create blog posts, you'll be able to add featured images right there within the back end of the WordPress editor. You won't have to use this plugin. However, for your blog pages in this theme, you'll have to leverage the plugin to edit your featured images. That's just the way this theme was built. Okay, so after you find your image, don't forget about the attachment details. And then once that's finished, click the set featured image button. Okay, so now that our featured image is set, let's visit the home page. So hover your mouse over your site title and click on visit site. Then if we visit the various calls to actions throughout the page, you can see that we have successfully linked them all to our landing page. And as you can see, our promo bar links to our daily workouts landing page. Then if we go back to the home page, and go down to our free daily workouts section of the home page, and if you click on the learn more call to action, That also links to the landing page. And if we go to our workouts page and click on one of the calls to action, that too links to the landing page. Again, this tactic is a great way to not only build your following, but grow your email list and create a relationship with your audience through email. 
because the goal here is to get people to opt in to your mailing list through the opt-in form that we're about to create. So with that being said, let's make your email opt-in form and start implementing strategies that will help you build and grow your email list. The next thing we're going to do is add and configure an email opt-in form on our site. And if you're new to the concept, here are the basics. We're going to create an email opt-in form and add it to various locations on our website. And once your site's visitors fill out the opt-in form, their information will be stored and you'll be able to begin your email marketing relationship with them via professional email marketing software. But the first thing you need to do is sign up with an email marketing company. I personally use AWeber on blogwithbin.com and highly recommend them for anyone who is serious about growing their email list and establishing a strong relationship with their audience. I've been using AWeber for quite a while now and their email marketing team has helped me grow my audience and open up a line of communication with the people I'm trying to serve. AWeber has given me the tools to establish trust with my audience while also helping me generate a passive income online. Because of that revenue stream, AWeber basically pays for itself, and it all started because I created an email list with AWeber. Now the great thing about AWeber is that they now offer a 100% free membership that lets you use the majority of their premium features for free as long as you have less than 500 subscribers and only one email list. Now if you acquire more than 500 subscribers, then you have to purchase a paid plan. However, this free plan lets you really try the platform for 100% worry-free, no strings attached. Now like I said, I've been using AWeber for a while now and I love it, but this free trial really gives you the opportunity to really see if it's going to be beneficial to you and your audience. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on setting up your AWeber account. However, I have a step-by-step full-length AWeber tutorial, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes, but this video will get into the nitty-gritty of setting up your account, creating your first email list, building an opt-in form, creating your email journey, and monetizing your email list. Just head over to Blog with Ben YouTube channel and check it out. Another thing I want to point out before we get started is that this portion of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an opt-in form, sometimes called a sign-up form, using AWeber. However, I also have tutorials on how to do this with Constant Contact. As you can see, they offer sign-up forms as well as MailChimp. They allow you to create sign-up forms as well. And I'll put a link to Constant Contact and MailChimp tutorials below the video if you want to check those platforms out. All right, so for this tutorial, we're using AWeber. So what you're looking at right now is the AWeber dashboard. And AWeber makes it super simple to set up your site sign-up form. And the great part about it is that it's all inclusive. Everything is handled through the AWeber platform, which makes this process even easier. So to start building your form, click on the sign up forms in the navigation menu. And this will bring you to the sign up forms management page. Now, since we're going to be creating our own sign up form and adding it to our website, click the green create a sign up form button. And from that drop down, select sign up form. Next, it's time to design the form. If you look in the upper right-hand side of the screen, you can see that AWeber has broken the sign-up form creation process into three steps. Design, Settings, and Publish. Super simple and efficient. So our first step is to design. And as you can see, you're presented with a template gallery. These are all pre-made forms that you can choose, edit, and add to your site. Then below that are the elements of the form. And this is where you'll build out and actually design your form. You can also add additional fields to the form if you'd like. And then you can get a little technical by adding tags to anyone who submits through this form. This can help you segment your lists and send targeted emails. That's a little more advanced, so no need to worry about that at the moment. So right now, let's focus on creating our opt-in form. So back at the template gallery, whenever you find one you like, click it, choose your color scheme. And this particular form only has one color scheme but we can change the colors within the editor in a few minutes, and then click the Load Template button. Now you can begin to design the form. Now as you can see, each section of the form is broken down into rows that you can edit. If you hover your mouse over the form, you can see the different sections that you have the ability to edit and change. So the first thing I'm gonna remove is the footer and header so that there isn't a bunch of added white space on the form. Now you can keep these if you'd like and you can even add text to them. However, I'm gonna remove them. So 
hover your mouse over those particular sections and click the delete trash icon to completely remove them. I'm also going to remove the Powered by Aweber text. So hover your mouse over that section of the form and click on Delete. And this will remove it entirely from the layout of the form as well. One thing to note though is that you can remove and reinstate the various elements of the form here as well within the Elements section. This gives you an easier way to add the header, footer, and Powered by text back to the form if you want. Okay, next I want to change the color of the button. So if you click on the button, you'll be able to access the editing options. First, I'm gonna change the color of the button. So click on the color block, and that will pop up a color picker. And it's pretty straightforward. You can move that little circle around the color tool, or you can enter the hex color code. And I'm gonna enter the hex color code from our website's color scheme. There we go. Looks nice, looks like it matches. Then press the OK button to make that change live. And if you need some extra help finding a hex color code, you can visit hex-color.com. And I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but you can literally find any hex color code through that website. Next, I'm gonna change the call to action text. So in the form button pop-up, you can easily change the text. So instead of submit, I'm gonna have it say, get your free workouts. And then once it's set, click the green save field button to make the change live. And our form's starting to come together. Next, I wanna edit the width of the form. So in the upper left-hand corner of the editing sections, you should see a dropdown. If you click on it, this gives you the ability to toggle between different aspects of the form you wanna edit. So where we need to go is the form type. So click on that first option in the menu then to the right, you'll see some additional fields, one of them being width. So I'm gonna change this to 1000 pixels. The reason for this is because we'll be embedding this form on different pages within our blog and having it at 1000 pixels ensures that it will spread evenly across the screen regardless of what device is being used to view and fill out the form. Okay, moving on. So go ahead and click the save your form button anytime you make changes and wanna to move to the next step. Then once saved, click the Go to Step 2 button. Next, it's time to configure the settings. And it's where you'll edit the form's properties and set the thank you page. So the first thing is the form name. Now your subscribers won't see this name. This just helps you distinguish which form is which in the back end of Aweber. Next, choose where your subscribers go after they fill out the form. This is called your thank you page. And Aweber offers several default thank you pages and even a smart version that shows a video on how to confirm. You can even create your own thank you page and set it here if you'd like, but for the sake of time, I'm just keeping the basic version for this tutorial. And you could preview the basic version by clicking the preview button here. And no surprise, it is pretty basic, but still gets the job done. Finally, there are a few additional options to set the already subscribed page, and this is for people who try to sign up to your list who have already subscribed, obviously. I'm not changing this page for this tutorial, so let's just leave this as is. And there are some additional advanced settings, but I'm not gonna mess with those right now either. And then once everything has been filled out and configured, click the Save Your Form button. And then go to step number three. Next, you'll be asked who will publish this form to your site. Click the I will install my form and select the JavaScript tab. It should already be selected. Then highlight that code and copy it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command C on my keyboard. Then after you've copied the code, next it's time to add that code to our site. So let's go back to our free daily workouts landing page and then click the edit page button to get to the WordPress editor. Then if we scroll down a bit, I'm going to embed the form in between those first two paragraphs. And we'll do that with a code block. 
So follow the same steps to add a block after the first paragraph. So open the More Options, select Insert After, then click the plus icon, and the block we want is called Custom HTML Block. So type that in the search field, and there it is. Then all you're going to do is place your cursor within the block and paste the code from Aweber. Now I know it doesn't look like a lot, but whenever you preview the page, you can see that our Aweber HTML has been translated and the beautiful opt-in form we just created is displaying and is ready to capture email addresses. Perfect. Now before we publish this, I want to show you a cool trick that we're going to do with our CTA at the bottom of this page. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see it in action. So basically what we're going to do is create an experience so that whenever someone clicks on our CTA button here, it'll take them to the form at the top of the page. This is yet another way to drive traffic to our form and it gives you one more chance to create a conversion when someone scrolls to the bottom of the page. Okay, so back at our site, the way that we're going to achieve this is by adding some HTML called an anchor element. So the first thing you want to do is head over to my code cheat sheet and find the opt-in form anchor element section. Then highlight and copy that code. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard. And back at the site, we want to place this anchor element around the form. So due to how this page is laid out, I'm going to add the HTML above the very first heading. So follow the steps to add a new custom HTML block above the first heading. And hopefully these steps are becoming familiar to you. Then within the HTML block, simply paste the code from the cheat sheet, like so. Perfect. Next, head down to the CTA at the bottom of the page. Then open the button settings by clicking on the button. Then in the URL field, replace the pound sign placeholder with the URL of this page, followed by a pound sign and the word form. And make sure there are no spaces or dashes between the URL and the pound sign form portion of the URL. It should look like this in your URL. Okay, now that that's set, let's go ahead and update the page. So click the Update button. And then after the page has been updated, let's view it. So click the View Page link. And if we scroll down a bit, you can see that we have a beautiful email opt-in form that is embedded within our content and also connected to our Aweber account. And when we scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the CTA, it shoots us back to the form, prompting us to fill it out. This is a great tactic to capture leads that aren't sure about filling out the form, but after they scroll and read compelling content on the landing page, they're given another opportunity to fill out the form by clicking on the CTA and then being taken back to the opt-in form. This is yet another way to keep your audience engaged and increase conversions. But we're not done yet. I want to include this form throughout other places within the site. So if you recall, we were going to add this form to the bottom of our About page. So you can copy the opt-in code from the landing page or head over to Aweber and get it there. But once you've copied that sign up form code, head back to your about page. And go to the WordPress editor.
Then we're adding this form at the bottom of the page, so follow the same steps as before to insert the custom HTML block after the free daily workout section. And if you recall, we placed that section at the very bottom of the content. So we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, click on it to open up the block settings, and then click on the more options and select insert after. Then click the plus icon and find the custom HTML block. And then just paste the code within the block and update the page to push those changes live. Then when we visit the page and scroll down to the free daily workout section, our beautiful opt-in form is displaying and ready to capture email addresses. Perfect. Okay, let's add it one more place. So I'm gonna head over to the workouts page. And open the WordPress editor. And then follow the same steps to add a custom HTML block after the free daily workout section once again. So scroll down to the bottom of the page, then click the plus icon and find the custom HTML block. Then paste the code within the block and let's update this page to push those changes live. And if we view the page, and scroll down to the bottom of the page again, voila, our opt-in form is displaying there as well. Again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to build your email list, and the first step in doing that is to have a way to collect email addresses, and the sign-up form gives you the ability to build and grow your subscribers. All right, moving on. Next, let's create our contact page. So in this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna configure your contact page. And if we fast forward real quick, you can get a better idea of what that's going to look like. We're gonna be using the free plugin WP Forms Lite to build this contact form. And having a contact form is a great way to keep a line of communication open between you and your audience, and it's also a great way to build your email list. So to add a contact form, let's go back to our dashboard. Like I said, we're gonna be using the WP Forms Lite plugin. And this plugin came pre-installed when we initially set up our blog, but if you don't have the WP Forms plugin, be sure to install and activate it for this part of the video. All right, so in order to access the plugin, we'll need to get to our WordPress dashboard. So in the upper left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on Dashboard. Okay, the first step is to create the form. So on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over WP Forms and click on Add New. And this will bring you to the setup screen for the WP Forms plugin. So first things first, you can name your form here. And if you plan on having multiple forms, then I recommend doing that. So I'll name this one Contact Form. Then to create the form, click the Create a Simple Contact Form button. And that will bring you to the form builder. And it gives you a nice preview of what the form will look like. And this is one of the main reasons why I chose to use this plugin. I really like the design of the form and how it looked on the page. Now the free version of the plugin, which we're using, still has some very powerful form features and building options. You can add fields and edit the fields here. However, I'm keeping everything as is. This default form gives us everything we need for our contact page, but again, if you have other features that you wanna to add to your form, you can do so here. But I wanna show you one thing before we do. If you click on the settings tab on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll be presented with some general settings that you can change, like the form name, CSS class, button text, 
and so on. However, the reason I wanted to show you this is the notifications. And if you click on the notification tab, you'll see that the default notification email address is set to your admin email address that you used for whenever you signed up for the WordPress account. Now this isn't a problem if you used your blog's email address or a professional email address, but if you used your personal email to set up this blog, then you'll want to change that here because this is the email address that will receive notifications when someone tries to contact you through this form, and it's the email that's used on the form email. So it's what people will see whenever they reply to your inquiries. So if you don't want to use your admin email for that or your personal email, if you signed up to WordPress with your personal email, all you have to do is swap out the admin email tag here with the email that you want to use. And if you do change your email, don't forget to save your changes by clicking the save button again. The next thing I want to show you is the confirmation message. So if you click on the confirmation tab, you have the ability to edit the autoresponder email that's sent whenever someone reaches out via the form. And by default, they start you off with a pretty generic message, but you can easily change that here and tailor it to your site. Okay, so now that our form is ready to go, it's time to embed it in our contact page. So first, let's save it. So click the Save button in the upper right-hand side of the screen. Then we'll need to get the embed code in order to add it to the contact page. So click the Embed button right next to the Save button. And then you should see a pop-up that gives you the code, but it also gives you a helpful video on how to add the code to your blog. It's very thoughtful of them, but I'm about to show you how to do it, so you don't have to watch that video, but you do have to copy the code, so highlight it and then copy it. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command-C on my keyboard, and then close the window. And then we're gonna add the code to our contact page. So let's exit the WP Forms plugin by clicking the X in the upper right hand side of the screen. Then we'll wanna to go to our contact page. So the quickest way to get there is to actually go to the page. So let's visit our site. And then click on contact in the primary nav. And that'll bring us to the page. Then to edit the page, click the edit page link at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to the WordPress editor. Then we need to actually build out this page. So like all the other pages, let's add the hero of the galaxy block. So follow the same steps as before to add that new block. And then find the hero of the galaxy block. There it is. Then we want to change the image. So click the change media button to add a new background. And again, hopefully these steps are very familiar to you by now, but again, just to reiterate, I like to go over every single step just to kind of drill it in so it becomes second nature to you whenever you start building your website on your own. Then once you have the image, remember we always make the necessary change in the layout settings so that the hero image matches the rest of the pages on the site. And your layout settings will look a little different, but you'll still click the Layout tab and set the minimum height to half. Perfect. Next, let's change the headline of the block. And since this is our contact page, I'm gonna title this Reach Out, Contact Me. And then I'll take care of the tagline in a bit, but now it's time to add the form. So this is pretty cool. All you have to do is paste the short code that we copied from the WP Forms Lite plugin under the hero image. So place your cursor here and paste that short code. And I know it doesn't look like much, but it will whenever we publish a page. Next, I'm gonna add some text above the form. So follow the steps to insert a block above the short code. Click the More Options icon, and then select Insert After. and then just add some text. And you can start typing, but I'm gonna add some dummy text. And this could be where you write a brief explanation of your contact page. And let's preview our work, so click the preview button. And just a reminder, your preview button will look a little bit different. You'll have a drop down, and you'll need to select that you wanna view it in another tab. 
and it looks great. We have a clean and professional looking contact form that was free, I might add, that gives you a way to keep the line of communication open with your audience. But one thing we wanna change is the tagline on the hero image. I forgot to remove it, so I'm just gonna completely remove that block real quick. There we go, and then let's push these changes live, so click the update button. And then let's view the page. And beautiful, looks great. Having a contact page is yet another way to communicate with your audience and grow your email list. Now I know it sounds tedious, but again, don't forget to add your featured image to the page. I know I said I wasn't gonna go over it, but I feel like this is just a good habit to get into. So you'll wanna head back to your WordPress dashboard. And then go to your pages management menu. Then find the contact page and add your featured image like so. Again, your featured image may not seem like much, but this is the image that will show up whenever people share your pages and blog posts across all social media channels. So it's very important that all of your pages and posts have a featured image that professionally reflects the content on your site. And once you have your image, don't forget about the attachment details and then click the set featured image button. And there it is, ready to go. Nice work. Okay, moving on. Next, let's publish your very first blog post. So now that we've configured and customized your site, we can now start adding actual blog post content. This is the exciting part. This is when you become an actual blogger. All of your hard work up to this point is for this moment, and the Rosa 2 theme gives you the ability to present your content in a modern and stylish design. If we fast forward real quick, you can see that we're gonna create a blog post that uses various types of media within the post. And the new WordPress editor makes it super simple to add GIFs, Instagram posts, images, and YouTube videos, which all have a positive impact on user engagement and the time people spend on your blog. So with that being said, Let's get to it and start creating blog content. So back at your site, the first thing we need to do is attach the blog feed to the correct page. And that will make sense in a few moments. So first, go to the actual blog page. Then open the customization menu. and click on the home page settings tab. And then within the tab, under the post page section, click on that drop down menu and select blog. Then click the publish button to push these changes live. This will ensure that our blog feed will show up on the blog page. And when we exit out of the customization menu, you'll see that the blog feed is now showing up on the blog page. And I realize that the demo content is showing up right now, but we'll change that in a few seconds. But it's good to know that we now have a blog feed and that our actual blog posts will show up here whenever we publish them. Okay, now that our blog feed is set up, the first thing I wanna address are the categories. Now you can see that this particular blog layout presents the blog categories at the top of the blog feed, as well as the blog post that is associated with that particular category. And if you're new to categories, a category is a group of related blog posts that are about a similar subject. And when you create a blog post, WordPress lets you add it to a particular category. For example, in this tutorial, I'm gonna create a category called cardio. Then when I write a blog post about cardio workouts, I'll add them to the cardio category. Then what's even cooler is that you can add that category to your primary navigation menu as a sub-menu item or even as a main menu item if you'd like. 
Bottom line, whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. This is not only a cool feature, but it's great for user experience as well. Your readers will appreciate the convenience of not having to search through your entire site to find relevant blog posts. Okay, so there are actually a couple of different ways to add categories. You can do it in the back end of the blog post, or you can do it within the WordPress dashboard. We're gonna cover both ways in this tutorial, but right now I'll show you how to add categories in the WordPress dashboard. So let's access our dashboard. And then on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over posts and click on categories. And this will bring you to your categories management page. You'll see that WordPress starts you off with an uncategorized category by default, but if you downloaded the starter content in the beginning of the video, you'll see additional categories here as well. No worries though, we're gonna remove these and you can easily create new categories here. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm gonna get rid of all the categories except the recipes. So I'll click the box next to the categories I wanna remove and then click the bulk actions dropdown and select delete and then click the apply button. And the categories will disappear and you should get a notification that they've all been deleted. Next, it's time to add our new categories. Since this is a health and fitness site, I'm gonna be creating categories that you'd usually associate with a fitness blogger. And these are just examples, so don't feel that you are confined to these categories that I make in a few minutes. When you're making your categories, think about your content and your target audience. Your category should be like a topic bucket that can house various types of blog posts. For example, the first category I'm gonna create is workouts. And to create that category, Simply type workouts in the name field there. And be sure to type this out the way that you want it to be displayed on your site. Then directly below that is the slug. And the slug is the URL friendly version of the category name. And it's usually lowercase and contains only letters, numbers, and hyphens. So this slug is going to be workouts, but with a lower case W. And then directly below that, you'll see a dropdown for the parent category. And the reason for this is because categories are able to have a hierarchy and WordPress's example of this is that you may have a jazz category and under that have children categories like bebop or big band. However, for this tutorial, we're not gonna have a category hierarchy, so go ahead and skip that as well as the description and click the add new category button. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that our new category has been added to our blog. All right, let's add our second category. So in the name field, this time I'm gonna type cardio And then the slug is going to be cardio, but with a lowercase c. And then again, I'm gonna skip the parent category option in description and click the add new category button. There we go. Then the third category is going to be nutrition. There we go, and then once again, click the Add New Category button. And next, I'm gonna add the BBF News category. And one thing I'm gonna point out is that since this category is two words, when you create the slug, be sure to add a dash in between the words. That's required. And there we go. So now that we have all of our categories, the next thing we wanna do is clean up our blog feed and delete all the sample posts that are currently being displayed as published posts. This way we can start with a clean slate whenever we start our blog. So let's head back to our post management page. So on the left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over posts and click on all posts. And this will bring you to your post management page, very similar to your pages management menu. This is where you can easily access all of the blog posts at once. So as you can see, we have a handful of demo blog posts that were used as placeholders whenever we uploaded the starter content during the theme installation. Now we obviously want to get rid of these, so one quick way to do that is to check the box next to where it says title, and that will select all of the blog posts in the list. Then from the bulk actions dropdown, select move to trash, and then click the apply button 
and the posts will be deleted and moved to the trash. Then if you click the trash link here, you can empty the trash and completely remove the demo posts so that they don't take up extra space on your blog. Then if we go back to our site, and visit the blog feed. You'll see that all the posts have been removed from the feed and you're ready to start blogging. Okay, now that the sample posts have been removed, it's time to create and publish your very first blog post. But before we do, let's take a quick look at the type of blog post that I'm gonna show you how to create. So what you're looking at right now is the blog post we're about to make. I wanted to include multiple types of media within the post so that you could gain a strong understanding of how to diversify your content with images, GIFs, social posts, and videos. Now you obviously don't have to add all of these media types to every post you create, but this example will be a good foundation for your future blog posts. Okay, so back at our blog, to create a new blog post you have a couple options, but the quickest way is to hover your mouse over the plus new icon in the top of the screen and click on post. This will bring up the blog post WordPress editor and it's how you'll create a brand new blog post every time you wanna create new content. And it's the exact same setup as creating a page. So you should be very familiar with how to get around. We have our title section. Then below that is where you'll find your various blocks of content. Then we have some additional document and block settings followed by the Yoast SEO plugin and the publishing settings. All right, so for this particular example, we're gonna be creating a list post. And lists are a very popular format for bloggers because they're easy to write and readers love them because they're easy to scan and consume. Plus people love sharing list posts on social media. They typically have a much higher click-through rate when compared to long form blog posts. So for this example, our post will be 10 quick and easy at-home workouts. Next, it's time to start writing your blog post. So right below your title where it says start writing, place your cursor there and begin typing. Now I'm using dummy text, but this is where you'll type out the intro of your post. And some quick tips, try to add a few short burst paragraphs introducing the post and always add keywords that you're trying to rank for within your intro. For example, I'd actually include the title 10 quick and easy at home workouts within the first paragraph of my intro because that's the keyword phrase that I'm trying to rank for. And as I begin to create the paragraphs, you can see the paragraph blocks taking shape whenever you click on each paragraph. I know I covered this a little while back in the video, but it's a good refresher on how to access the editing toolbar within each paragraph block. All right, next, let's start creating our list. And since this is going to be a list of 10, we'll wanna add a heading introducing our first workout. So let's add a heading block. So go ahead and click that three dot icon to open up the more options menu. Then select insert after. Then click the plus icon. And then from that pop-up menu, find the heading block. And then our first quick and easy at-home workout is going to be squats. So our first heading is obviously going to be titled squats. Then you'll wanna start typing out your content for this particular section. However, for the sake of time, I'm just pasting some dummy text again. And then it's time to switch things up a bit and I wanna add some media to the post. And the first type of media that we're gonna add is a GIF. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a GIF is, it stands for Graphics Interchange Format, and it's basically a short animated loop. GIFs are a fun way to diversify your content and add some life to a blog post. Nowadays, you can literally find thousands of funny GIFs to add to your blog, and a popular site for GIFs is Giphy.com. I'll put a link in the show notes, but this is a site that is my go-to whenever I wanna find a GIF. All right, and then once you find your GIF, go ahead and click on it. And then you'll wanna grab that social link, so click on where it says media. Then copy the source link, it should be the first one there. And go ahead and click that copy button. After doing so, you'll get a notification that it's been copied. Then back at the WordPress editor, we're gonna add the GIF through the image block and I'm gonna place it in between those two paragraphs. So click the three dot icon there to open up the more options. And then this time select insert before. 
Then press the circle icon to open up the block menu. And then search and find the image block. And then within the block, click the insert from URL button and paste the link that we just copied from Giphy.com in that field and click the apply button. And boom, there's our GIF. Then to resize it, simply drag and drop either one of those blue dots there and you can change the size of the GIF in the post. It's a pretty cool workaround. Then to center the GIF, select Align Center from the Settings toolbar. There we go. Looks good. And then you can add a caption below the GIF if you'd like, but I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, moving on. Let's add our next section. So follow the same steps as before to insert a new block below this paragraph. Click the More Options icon, and then select Insert After. And click the plus icon. And we'll be adding a new heading, so find the heading block. Then our next at-home workout is going to be push-ups. And then I'll add some text below that. There we go. Next, let's embed an Instagram post within our content. This is a great tactic to not only diversify your content, but it also helps to drive traffic to your social media accounts. Plus, it's super easy to do. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to the Instagram page that has the post you want to use. Most likely, it's going to be your Instagram post. Then once you find the post you want to embed, click on it, and that will open up the post. Then click those three little dots, and this will bring up some sharing options for the post. And we're just going to grab the link to it, so click the Copy Link tab. And once you get a notification that the link has been copied, head back to your blog. And then simply place your cursor where you want the post to display and then paste the link within the content. And I'm placing it in between these two paragraphs. And the copy link from Instagram will transform into the embedded version of the post. Now I know it looks a little weird, but it seems that there's still a bug with this particular block. It's not a huge deal because it doesn't necessarily affect how the post looks whenever it's published, but it does look a little off within the back end of the editor. Just wanted to give you a heads up about that. I've even tried changing the alignment and it still looks weird in the back end, so just keep an eye out for it and know that WordPress is working on it. Also, whenever we preview our post, you'll see that it looks okay on the front end and that's all that really matters. Okay, moving on, let's add our next section. So once again, follow the same steps to insert a new heading block. And I know this stuff seems repetitive, but the more I repeat the steps, the more familiar they become and you'll have an easier time creating your blog content. And click the plus icon. And we'll be adding a new heading, so find the heading block. Okay, so this section is going to be about planks, so go ahead and title it accordingly. And then add some text below it. There we go. Then within this section of content, we're going to embed a YouTube video. And this is truly super easy to do. So first you'll need to get the shareable video link from the actual YouTube video. So go to YouTube and find the video that you want to embed. Then to access the link, click the share icon at the bottom of the video. Then click copy to copy the link. And back at our blog, simply paste the link within the editor like you're pasting text. And there we go. Our YouTube video has been embedded. Next, you can add a caption below the video if you want, but I'm going to leave it as is. And overall, it looks amazing. We now have an embedded and responsive YouTube video within our blog post. Next, I want to show you how to add some list content. And we did this a little earlier in the video with our landing page, but let's do it here as well. So follow the same steps to add a new heading block. And for this heading, I'm going to change the size. So if you look over on the heading settings on the right hand side of the screen, you can change it from an H2 to an H3. 
and this will make the heading a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to list out three quick tips. So I'll title it Quick Tips. Then we're going to add another block below this heading. So click the plus icon. And then find the block titled List. And then this gives you the ability to write out a list. And for this example, I'm listing out some quick tips, but having list content is a great way to break up your content and present things in a different way. And if your audience wants to skim through your post, the list content makes it easier to read and consume. All right, looks great. Next, let's add another section. So I'll add another heading block. So click the plus icon. And we'll be adding a new heading, so find the heading block. And this section will be about lunges. And then some more text. And then in this section, I'm going to add an image. So decide where you want the image to display and follow the same steps to add a new block. And I'm adding it in between these two paragraphs. Then find the image block. And I'm uploading a new image, so I'll click the upload button within the block. And once you find your image, Boom, perfect, looks great. Now you can add a caption below the image or adjust the image settings if you'd like, but I think it looks great as is, so I'm gonna leave everything alone. Next, I'm finishing the post off with an opt-in form. Now you don't have to do this for every post, but for posts that you're trying to drive traffic to specific things like your products or your other landing pages or your free offers, I highly recommend adding an opt-in form at the bottom of the post. So I'm gonna add the headline block and the title, same as all the other opt-in form headlines, free daily workouts. Then let's add the custom HTML block. And then paste the Aweber code from a little earlier in the video. You'll have to either go back to Aweber to get this code or just snag it from your landing page. Either way, having an opt-in form at the bottom of your blog posts is a great strategy to grow your email list and drive traffic to your offers. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm actually not going to list out 10 things, but this should give you a good idea as to how to create and structure a blog post with different types of media and content. Next, I'm gonna show you how to add a hyperlink to your text. And all a hyperlink is, it's, it's a clickable link within your content that is linking to additional and relevant content. You can link to external sources, and you can also link to an internal source within your own site. Either way, having hyperlinks provide a more in-depth experience for your readers by leading to related information that doesn't duplicate the content on your blog posts, but instead adds additional layers of meaning and context. Also, having internal and external hyperlinks are good for user experience and SEO. Okay, so to add a hyperlink, highlight the text that you want to use as the hyperlink. Then click the link icon in the toolbar. And add the URL that you want to link to within the field provided. Then below there, you'll see that you have some options to open in a new tab. And I recommend doing this if you're linking to an external source. But if you're linking to a page within your own blog, I'd leave this alone. Next, there's a nofollow option, which tells the search engines not to follow this link and to ignore it. It's a good practice to enable this setting on links that lead to third-party websites that you don't particularly endorse. And finally, there's the sponsored link or advert, and you'd use this if you're linking to a paid or incentivized link. Note that selecting this setting will also automatically select the search engine should ignore this link setting as well. All right, our hyperlink is ready, so click the apply button and it's set. You can tell by the font being underlined. Next, let's add our featured image. Now, unlike the pages, we don't have to leverage the featured image plugin for our blog posts. We can just update the featured image right here within the WordPress editor. So on the right-hand side of the screen, within the document settings, open the featured image tab, and click on the Set Featured Image button. And pretty sure you know what to do here.
And once you find the image you want to upload, don't forget about the attachment details. And click the Set Featured Image button. And there you go. Your featured image is set and will display within your blog feed, blog post, and social networks when it's shared. Next, let's edit the excerpt. And all an excerpt is, is it's the short description text that's used in the blog feed to help preview the post and let the reader know what the post is about. So you'll want to get into the habit of updating this as well for every post. So then the document settings, open the excerpt tab, and start writing out what you want it to say. I recommend limiting it to about two sentences. Just try to keep it short and sweet. Next, we'll wanna configure our Yoast SEO settings. So just like within our blog's pages, you can access the Yoast settings in the upper right-hand side of the editor by clicking on the Yoast icon. Then the first thing we wanna edit is our search engine snippet. So click on the Google Preview tab and edit your snippet. Again, this is just like our pages. You have a mobile and desktop preview of your snippet, pretty cool. And then you can edit the snippet title here. And remember to try and hit the green status bar when creating your title and meta description. And once again, as I start typing the meta description, you can see the orange bar turns to green, letting me know that it's good to go. Then when your snippet is ready, go ahead and click the close button. Next, let's go over the readability analysis. So when you open that tab, you'll be presented with Yoast's analysis results. And the readability analysis uses an algorithm to determine how readable your post is. Yoast has carefully crafted this algorithm to make it as accurate as possible without being too strict. It features several checks that give you advice when you write your post. In other words, by following this advice, you can make your text easier to read and understand, which is good for the overall user experience and SEO. Now you'll probably also notice that Yoast gives you a score on your readability analysis, resulting in a colored smiley face. Red is bad, green is good. But I'm using dummy text in this post, so it's obviously not going to be good and a green smiley face all over the place. However, should all of the bullets be green? Yoast says no, not every bullet has to be green. What you should aim for though is a green happy bullet overall. And having an orange bullet for one of the checks is okay. Your article will still be able to rank even if it doesn't pass all the tests. This is merely an indication, not a necessity. Next is the SEO analysis. And this ranking system is very similar to the readability analysis, but it's ranking your overall SEO for the post. Again, I'm using dummy text, so my score isn't going to be that good but you should aim for an overall score of a green smiley face here as well. You can also add related keywords and key phrases that you wanna rank for. Just click that plus add related key phrase tab, then type your keywords or key phrases, and Yoast will crawl your content to make sure that you're using the keyword or the key phrase a sufficient amount of times within your content. Then the final piece of the plugin is the cornerstone content tab. And this is a new feature of the plugin that lets you mark the most important and extensive articles on your blog. This is important because it's telling the search engines which posts are the most important. And providing the correct internal link structure between your posts tells Google which article is the most important and has a positive impact on your rankings. So if this post is a cornerstone piece, flip that switch on to mark it as a cornerstone piece of content. And there you have it. That's the Yoast SEO plugin in a nutshell. All right, moving on. Next, let's add our category for the post. So go ahead and open the post settings by clicking on that gear icon there. And then within the document settings, open the categories tab. And you should see all the categories that we previously created. Now by default, all new posts will be set to the uncategorized category. But to change that, simply check the box next to the category that you want the post to be associated with. And don't forget to uncheck the box next to uncategorized. I should also mention that you can add a new category here as well. This could come in handy if you need to add a new category while you're creating a post. Okay, finally, I'm gonna show you how to set your permalink. Now, if you recall, at the very beginning of the WordPress setup portion of the video, we set our permalinks so that they use the post title. However, you can review and edit your blog post permalinks within the WordPress editor by clicking on the permalink tab here. And then you can see the URL slug being used and an example of what it will look like. 
but you can also change it here if you'd like. This can come in handy if you feel like the URL is too long or if you want to change it for SEO purposes. And remember to always separate each word of the permalink with a dash. All right, that's gonna do it for the configuration of the post, so let's preview our work real quick. And it may take a few moments to load the preview, but just give it a few seconds. And there we go. So far, so good. Post is really coming together. I like how it's turning out. Having various types of media within your posts will help diversify your content, increase user engagement, and increase the time that people spend on your blog. These are all important metrics for improving your SEO. Okay, now it's time to publish our post. So back at the editor, click the publish button to make this post live. And then you'll be asked if you're sure you're really ready to publish. But before you do that, I wanna point something out. You also have the ability to schedule your posts out for future dates. So if you click the publish tab, this opens a calendar widget that allows you to set the specific time and date that you'd like the post to publish. This can come in handy if you're creating multiple posts in one sitting, and if you don't want to publish them all at once, or if you have a seasonal campaign running that you need your content to match up with like Black Friday or a specific holiday. This calendar feature lets you schedule your posts so that they'll publish on a specific date. All right, so we're gonna publish this right now, so go ahead and click the publish button again. And then you'll get a notification that the post is live. You also have the ability to view the post or copy the link right here. This is a new feature of the editor, it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and view the post by clicking the view post button. And boom, we now have a professional looking and media rich blog post. Nice work. All right, moving on. Next, let's add our social sharing buttons to our blog posts. Next, we're gonna add social sharing buttons within our blog posts by leveraging the Jetpack plugin. This is one of the main reasons why I use the plugin. Plus, giving your audience an easy way to share your content is paramount to online success. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what that will look like. So the Jetpack plugin has a social sharing feature that lets you add social network sharing buttons within your blog posts. Like I said, this gives your audience an easy way to share your content with their followers. So this is just another way for you to reach more people with your content. Okay, so back at the blog, there are a few things that we'll need to do in order for this to work. The first thing is we need to set up our Jetpack plugin. So head back to your WordPress dashboard, And then you should see a notification from Jetpack prompting you to get started with the setup. So go ahead and click the Setup Jetpack button. And again, just like the Gravatar, you'll need a WordPress.com account to access Jetpack. And if you followed the video up to this point, you should already have a WordPress.com account. But if you don't have one, just quickly sign up for your free WordPress.com account before moving on in the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is approve the connection. So click the Approve button. And the approval may take a few seconds, so just sit tight real quick. Next, you'll see that Jetpack offers some paid plans. And if you're interested in them, I recommend you check them out. But for this video, we're just gonna use the free version. So scroll down to the bottom and click the start with free button. And this will take you to your Jetpack plugin. And yes, I know another dashboard, but there are a lot of useful tools at your fingertips here within the Jetpack dashboard. One of them being the site accelerator. This will help improve your site's overall performance, 
So go ahead and click the activate button at the top of the screen. And the one thing I want to point out is the image accelerator. This is a feature of the Jetpack Site Accelerator that loads images from Jetpack's global network of servers. The only issue with that is that it seems to decrease the quality of my images quite a bit. So if you're experiencing that as well, I recommend turning this off. And you can easily turn it off and on by flipping that switch next to where it says Image Accelerator within the Performance section. And then you'll get a notice letting you know that the settings have been successfully updated. And again, turning the image accelerator off is a personal preference, but if you notice a drastic change in the quality of your images after turning the site accelerator on, I recommend turning the image accelerator off to see if that's what's causing the issue. All right, next, let's do what we came here to do. Set up the social sharing buttons. Okay, so to access the social sharing settings, click the settings button in the upper right-hand side of the screen. Then we want to access the sharing settings, so click the sharing tab. And then within the sharing button section, you'll want to flip that little switch on next to where it says add sharing buttons to your posts and pages. Then once it's on, click the configure your sharing buttons link, and then you'll be able to configure your sharing buttons. So the first thing I want to change is the button style. I like the icon only, but feel free to use whatever you like best. And as you can see, they have different options for the button style, like text only, the official buttons, and icon and text. But I'm going to go with icon only. Then you could add additional sharing buttons by clicking the edit sharing buttons link. And you'll see that there are additional social networks to choose from and add to your social buttons. Then you can reorder how they appear by clicking on the reorder button and simply drag and drop these rectangular icons and that will give you the ability to reorder how the buttons look on your site. Then once you've added and reordered your social buttons, go ahead and click the close button and then the save changes button. And then one more thing you'll want to do is directly below that in the options section is to uncheck the box next to Pages and add your Twitter handle if one of your buttons is for Twitter. This ensures that your social buttons only show on your blog posts and that your Twitter handle is included in tweets when people share using the Twitter button. Then click the Save Changes button. And once your settings have been successfully saved, go ahead and head back to your blog and if we visit the site, and go to a published blog post, you'll see that whenever you scroll down to the bottom of the post, we have our new social sharing buttons. Now having your social sharing buttons at the bottom of the post is a good strategy because ideally people will want to share your blog post after they've finished reading it. However, a lot of bloggers are seeing success with the social sharing buttons at the beginning of the content. So if you want to place the Jetpack social icons at the very beginning of your blog post, here's what you'll need to do. And I should forewarn you, the next steps are somewhat advanced. So if you're not comfortable with editing your themes files in the back end, Watch this part of the video before you do anything to your blog. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is go back to your WordPress dashboard. Then hover your mouse over Appearance and click on Theme Editor. And this will bring you to your theme's files. Now before you make any changes, please make sure you're editing your child theme and you can tell which theme you're editing by this drop down here. Then the file we want to edit is the functions.php file. So under the theme file section, it should be listed there and go ahead and click on it. 
And then this will open the file editor where you can edit the content of the file. Now, if you're brand new to PHP code, I know this may seem like a lot to take in, but no worries, all we're doing is copying and pasting some new code. It's super easy. So all you're gonna do is head over to the code cheat sheet and under the first section there titled move jetpack social sharing buttons to top of blog post, highlight the code starting at where it says function and then ending on the semicolon and then copy it. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard. Then back at our blog, place your cursor at the very bottom of the function.php code, add a space, and then paste the code from the cheat sheet. Perfect. Then press the update file button. And this may take a few seconds to update, so once again, just sit tight real quick. And once you get the notification that the file was edited successfully, let's check it out. So go ahead and visit your site. And then when we go to a published blog post, you'll see that our newly added code has moved the Jetpack social sharing buttons to the top of the post. Again, this is a personal preference and you don't have to place your social sharing buttons here, but this gives you some flexibility and it's a nice little introduction to PHP code in the process. Pretty cool. All right, so once you start creating more content and publishing additional blog posts, your feed will start to look like this. And the Rosa 2 theme beautifully lays out your blog posts in an offset pattern and presents your posts in a cool and unique style. Remember to stay consistent when publishing blog posts as well. Even if you can only publish one post a month, just stick with it. Consistency is key. And once you get the hang of it, you'll be publishing multiple blog posts in no time. All right, moving on. Next, let's monetize your blog and set up your first revenue stream. So this is my favorite part, monetizing your blog. And in this tutorial, we're gonna cover two monetization strategies that have proven to be very successful when it comes to earning a passive income online. The first monetization strategy we're gonna cover is called affiliate marketing. Now, as you probably know, there are multiple ways to earn money with a website, but affiliate marketing is my main source of revenue for all of my websites and blogs, and it's allowed me to earn thousands of dollars of passive income every single month. However, just a quick disclaimer, results will vary, and by no means does any of this guarantee that you'll make any money with your blog. But for me personally, affiliate marketing has been a game changer when it comes to earning a passive income online. Now, if you're brand new to affiliate marketing, no worries, I'm gonna break it down for you in a few seconds. But first, if we fast forward real quick, you can see a quick example of what we're gonna be making. So what you're looking at right now is a resources page. And the purpose of this page is to list helpful resources to your audience. But the key here is that all of these resources are products that you're an affiliate for. And all that means is that when someone clicks on one of the resources on this page and then they make a purchase, you get a cut of the profits from that purchase. And depending on what type of products you promote and how much traffic you drive to your affiliate offers, this can add up quick. And like I said, my blog generates thousands of dollars per month through affiliate marketing alone. And when done right, it can be a very lucrative business model. Now, before we get into the specifics of your affiliate marketing strategy, let's build your resources page. This will be the foundation of the strategy, and it's a great way for you to get started with affiliate marketing. Okay, so back at the blog, head over to the resources page. And then click the edit icon to open up the WordPress editor. Then just like all the other pages, add your hero of the galaxy block. And just a reminder, your block pop-up menu will be a different experience than what you're seeing now due to all the updates, but still pretty intuitive and easy to find the hero of the galaxy block. And follow the same steps as before to change the image. So click the change media button. And then I'm uploading a new image, so Click the upload link and select files and find the image you want to use.
And then don't forget about the attachment details, of course. And then click the select button. There we go. And remember to adjust the height of it if you'd like. Then update the title text. And since this is our resources page, I'm titling this Healthy Resources. With a tagline of my most recommended products for better health. Then I recommend adding some intro text, letting people know what's on the page while also enticing them to click through your resources. Then the next thing you should add is an affiliate disclosure. This is not only recommended, but it's required by law. And again, I want to clarify that the following information should not be perceived as legal advice. I am not a lawyer, and by no means should this tutorial be used as any type of legal consultation. I recommend that you reach out to a legal professional if you have any questions or concerns when it comes to your affiliate disclosure. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let me show you a quick example of mine. If we check out my personal blog at blogwithbin.com, you can see that my resources page lists all the products that I use and recommend for starting a blog. Additionally, all of these resources are affiliate products where I've partnered with the companies and I get a percentage of the profits generated from these affiliate links. And then anytime you have an affiliate link on a page or post or anywhere on your blog, you need to disclose to your audience that they're clicking on an affiliate link. And the way you do that is with an affiliate disclosure. And you can copy my affiliate disclosure if you'd like, but basically you need to just tell your audience that there are affiliate links on the page and that you'll earn a commission if they decide to make a purchase. Again, I'm not a lawyer, and this should not be considered legal advice, but an affiliate disclaimer will not only protect you legally, but it ensures that you're following the FTC guidelines. But more importantly, it allows you to be transparent with your audience, which is always a good thing. This ultimately leads to more conversions because you're building trust with your audience by being honest. Okay, so back at the blog, you can add your disclosure with a simple paragraph block like so. And another thing to point out is that your disclosure shouldn't be hidden or hard to see at the bottom of the page. It needs to be upfront and easy for your site's visitors to see and find. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, it's time to start adding our resources. Now I realize that we may be doing this step out of order because if you haven't applied to be an affiliate for a company yet, then you probably don't have any products to promote. However, this gives you a good visual and understanding of how to structure a resources page for affiliate marketing. Then after we've added our products to the page, I'll show you how to become an affiliate and add affiliate links to this page. But again, I realize that we're doing this kind of out of order because ideally you should be an affiliate before you promote products. Anyways, I digress. Let's start building the page. So I'm kind of switching up the design of this page because instead of a common block heading for each heading, I'm going to use a headline block. So after the disclosure there, follow the steps to add a new block. So click the More Options icon, select Insert After, click the plus icon, and from the block menu, find and select the headline block. So it looks a little different. Then I'm going to title this Supplements, and then I'm going to remove the second line of the headline so that it's just that pink font. Just using a different design on this page. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Okay, next. I'm using the featured block for each product because it gives us everything we need in order to increase our chances for a conversion. So follow the same steps to add the featured block after the headline. And again, this should be somewhat familiar to you because we've used this exact block for our workouts and our meal plans pages. And then you'll want to update the title, font, image, and CTA. This is going to be our apple cider vinegar supplement. Then for the image, the companies that you partner with should more than likely provide images of the product for you, just a heads up. But once they do provide those images, it will just be the same steps to upload it and add it to the feature block. And for the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward through this really quick because we've uploaded images multiple times in this tutorial, so hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of how to do that. Next is the call to action or the button block. So to access that, make sure you're in the Style tab under the Block Settings and then find the Button tab. And again, yours may look a little different, but still pretty similar. 
and then within that find the link URL field. Then for the button URL, I'm just adding the pound symbol as a placeholder. But once we've built the page, I'll show you how to get affiliate links and then we'll add those affiliate links to these buttons. Then finally, I'm gonna change the button color like so. And then change the CTA text to say, learn more. Perfect. And remember in a few moments, I'm gonna show you how to get affiliate links and add them to the buttons on this page. But next, let's add another product. So instead of building the featured block again, I'm just gonna duplicate this one. So follow the steps to duplicate the block. And if you recall, you'll open up the three dot icon and select duplicate from the drop down menu. And then this product is going to be another type of apple cider vinegar. So I'll swap out the text and update the image. And you're gonna upload an image here. And again, you should be pretty familiar with this and I'm gonna kind of fly through it. But once you become an affiliate for a company, they typically provide resources, one of those being images that you can use of their products to promote on your site. Then I'm gonna add another line of products to this page. So I'll break this up with a headline block. So follow the steps to insert another headline block below this. So click the more options. and select insert after and add a block and find the headline block and this is going to be titled equipment and we'll be promoting fitness equipment here obviously then I'm going to add another product so let's duplicate the feature block real quick so click the more options tab there and select duplicate. And then I'm gonna to wanna to move this below the heading. So use the arrows on the left of the block to shift it down the page. Beautiful. And I'm gonna swap out the text and image. And this is gonna be some all purpose dumbbells. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna fast forward through the steps of uploading an image since we've done it quite a few times in the tutorial and hopefully you have a good understanding of how that's done. Then I'm gonna add one more product. And again, just follow the same steps as before to duplicate the block and then update the content within it. And I'm really gonna fly through this one, so I apologize if it's a little too fast, but like I said, hopefully you have a good understanding of how this process works and how to add images and update these feature blocks. And then the last part of content for our resources page will be an opt-in form. Now you don't have to do this necessarily, but I still wanna try and capitalize on traffic hitting this page. So I'm gonna add another heading and then paste the sign up form code from Aweber. And I'm just adding a headline block here and then adding the custom HTML block and pasting our code from Aweber. And there we go, we have our resources page. So let's go ahead and preview this real quick. and it looks great. Now, you'll obviously have more resources to promote than this, but I just wanted to give you an idea on how to structure the page and present the products that you're an affiliate for. Okay, so let's publish these changes and make them live. So click the update button. And you now have the foundation set for your very first revenue stream. And then with that being said, let's go over the affiliate marketing strategy you're gonna use and find out how to get affiliate links to promote on your resources page. Okay, so here's a quick rundown of how affiliate marketing works. At its core, affiliate marketing is a monetization strategy that lets you market other companies' products for a cut of the profits. There are a lot of ways to get started, but before we do, let me lay out the four main steps to affiliate marketing. So it's pretty basic, but here's the gist. Step one is you sign up for a reputable affiliate network like CJ Affiliate, Share a Sale, Amazon Associates, or Rakuten Marketing. 
There are many more to choose from, but those are a few of the best affiliate networks. Step two is after you join an affiliate network, you apply and join an affiliate program that lines within your audience's interests. Step three is you promote the affiliate offers on your blog through display advertising, affiliate links, blog posts, videos, email campaigns, etc. And step four, you get paid. So anytime someone clicks on your affiliate link and makes a purchase, you get money. So that being said, let me show you a few ways you can start setting up affiliate revenue streams on your website. All right, so getting started with affiliate marketing is a pretty straightforward process. One way is to go directly to the company that you wanna partner with and fill out their affiliate program application. And you can typically do this by going to the footer of a company's homepage and finding the affiliate link. And we're at the Adidas homepage, and by clicking on the affiliate link in the footer, this will take you to their affiliate program page where you can start filling out the application. Now I'm not gonna go through the entire application process, but this will give you an idea of what you'll need to do in order to become an affiliate for a company by going directly to their website. And then once you're at their affiliate page, you can click apply now and you'll be taken through the application process. I know it can seem tedious, but if you wanna start earning money with your blog, it's a necessary part of the process. Plus, once you're approved, you're free to start promoting their products on your site, which opens the door for you to start earning a passive income online. The next way to get started with affiliate marketing is through affiliate networks. And affiliate networks are great because they offer a platform that allows merchants and publishers to discover one another. If you're new to the concept, merchants are companies that offer affiliate programs and publishers are affiliate marketers who promote these companies on their site. Now, affiliate marketing can be a very lucrative strategy as we've already discussed whenever it's done right. And fitness blogging offers some of the most reliable and high converting affiliate networks around. For example, CJ Affiliate is one of the biggest and most popular affiliate networks out there. They give you the tools, data, opportunities, and guidance to grow your brand and extend your reach across a variety of platforms. They're a great resource for affiliates and they offer partnerships with thousands of companies that can help you earn money by promoting products on your site. Another great affiliate network is ShareASale. And ShareASale is another one of my top recommended affiliate networks for a few reasons. For starters, They've been around for almost 20 years. They also have an amazing customer support team that will allow you to talk to an actual human being if you have an issue or need some help with your account. Additionally, they partner with well-known companies, which in turn is good for affiliate marketers because that gives us the opportunity to partner with great companies and promote products that are actually in demand. Finally, we have Amazon Associates. Amazon is the most used e-commerce platform in the world, and it presents a great opportunity for you to add additional revenue streams to your site. Amazon Associates is the affiliate program for Amazon. It's free to join, and all you need to do is sign up for a free standard Amazon account and then apply to the Amazon Associates affiliate program. It's one of the easiest affiliate networks to join hands down. Okay, there are obviously many more affiliate networks out there for you to research and join, and in this tutorial, I'm not gonna go into great detail on how to apply and join these affiliate networks. However, once you've signed up for a handful of affiliate networks and you've been approved to partner with companies within these networks, here's how you can get your affiliate links and start promoting your affiliate offers on your website. Now, before we dive in, I wanna point out that I'm in the process of creating an affiliate marketing masterclass that will not only show you what you need to do in order to be approved by these affiliate networks, but will also take you behind the scenes and show you the exact affiliate marketing strategies that I use on blogwithbin.com and it's what's helped me generate thousands of dollars of passive income with my blog. Now you're still gonna learn a ton of great stuff in this free video, and you could still monetize your blog with what you're gonna learn here, but my affiliate marketing masterclass goes a lot deeper into the topic and pulls back the curtain on the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that have helped me earn a lot of money with my blog. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I've created a mailing list just for that course and I'll put a link in the show notes below the video titled Affiliate Marketing Masterclass. But if you sign up, you'll be first to know whenever the course is available. You'll also be first in line for enrollment periods. You'll receive discount pricing of the course and much, much more. So sign up by visiting the link in the show notes. Okay, back to the tutorial. So now it's time to get your affiliate links. So after you've joined some affiliate networks, you've partnered with some companies within these networks and found some products to promote, you'll be given a unique affiliate link. 
And the affiliate link is the most important aspect of this process because this is how you will track who uses the link and it's how companies can tell if someone makes a purchase through your link, which in turn leads to you getting paid. And each affiliate network and program is different, but they'll all have unique affiliate links designated just to you so that you can get paid. And just a quick example of what that looks like, if we go to my CJ affiliate account, you can see that this particular company I'm an affiliate for not only provides links, but banners to embed on your website as well. Now, most reputable companies will provide their affiliates with a ton of great resources because when you're successful, the companies are successful as well. So it bodes well for them to give you access to things like professionally made banners to use on your site. However, for this tutorial, we just need the affiliate link. So within the back end of CJ Affiliate, I'll find an ad I wanna use and grab the link to that ad so that I can direct traffic to that affiliate offer. And anytime I say affiliate offer, I'm referring to what I'm promoting. That is the offer. And please note that this particular ad isn't aligned with the health and fitness niche, so don't really pay attention to the actual product. But for this example, I'm promoting Grammarly. So the affiliate offer is the Grammarly software. Then to get the affiliate link in CJ Affiliate, you'll go to the company's page within the back end of the affiliate network, which is what we're looking at right now. And each one of these banner ads points to a different landing page via an affiliate link. So I just want the affiliate link. And to do that, click the get code icon next to the ad that you want. And then that will open up some additional options. And we just want the link. So click the click URL tab. And that's your affiliate link. So if we're promoting this product on our resources page, you would simply copy and paste this link to the CTA button within the feature block that's associated with this product. And we'll go over that process in a few moments, but that is how you would get an affiliate link from CJ Affiliate. Next is Share a Sale. So this is another popular affiliate network. And once you've joined and you're approved to promote products, you can access your affiliate links under the links tab by clicking on get a link slash banner. And this is where all of the companies you're approved by are housed and it's where you can access your affiliate links. And for this example, I'm an affiliate for WP Rocket, which is a great caching plugin. And then to access their affiliate links, click the Get Links button. And then this will take you to where all the affiliate resources are housed for WP Rocket. And as you can see, they offer one text link, a handful of banner ads and links, and you can even create custom links as well. Now we just want a link, so one way to do that is under the text link section. Just click the get HTML code, and then this will spit out the HTML code that you can use to embed on your site. However, we just want the link. So click the select URL only button. And there you go, you have your affiliate link. All right, the final affiliate network we're gonna get an affiliate link from is Amazon Associates. And this is the affiliate program for Amazon. As you probably already know, Amazon is the most used e-commerce platform in the world, and it presents a great opportunity for you to add additional revenue streams to your site. Now, you'll need to sign up for their standard Amazon account. This is the account you'd use if you were to purchase products on amazon.com. And then after you've established that you have a blog and an Amazon account, you can apply to be an Amazon associate. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through the process of signing up in this tutorial, but it's fairly similar to other affiliate networks out there. They'll ask you for your personal info, as well as your tax and payment information, and be prepared to provide some information about yourself, as well as what your website is about. All right, so let's start promoting products. So the first strategy for promoting products on Amazon is to create product links. Simply put, product links are affiliate links that are sending traffic to a particular product on Amazon.com. So to get started with product linking, hover your mouse over product linking in the Amazon Associates dashboard and click on product links. And this brings you to the product link management page where you have the ability to build out various links and banners for specific Amazon products. First things first, let's search for a product. So you have the ability to filter your product search. You can conduct an all product search or search within a particular product line by opening this drop-down menu. You can also search by keyword within this field here if you have a particular product in mind. So for this example, I'm gonna search within 
all of Amazon.com, so I'll leave the search drop down as is, but within the search field, I'll search for products around the keyword Vita Raw Apple Cider, or Vita Raw, however you want to pronounce it. All right, so Amazon will then display all the relevant products below there that you could choose from and promote on your site. And then once you find a product you want to promote, click the arrow next to where it says Get Link, and you'll have the option of getting the full affiliate link, or you can shorten it here to make it easier for your audience to digest. For this example, we're using the link for our CTA button, so it doesn't matter how long it is, so I'm just gonna copy this link, and you can click on the Highlight HTML button. And then I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command-C on my keyboard to copy it, and then we'll head back to our site and add it to our resources page. And then access the WordPress editor, and watch how easy this is. So we have our affiliate link from Amazon Associates that we just copied, and we want to add it to the CTA button within the feature block. So find the Vita Raw Apple Cider Vinegar block, and then click on the Learn More button to open the block settings there, and simply replace the hashtag we used as a placeholder with the affiliate link from Amazon Associates. Then one more thing, and this is important, click on that three dot icon there, and when you're using an affiliate link, it's best practice to have it open in another tab and mark it as a nofollow link. This ensures that your visitors aren't completely taken away from your blog and that the search engines don't follow your affiliate links, which will help your SEO. And that was your first affiliate link, great job. Let's keep it going and add another one. So we're gonna keep it simple right now and just add another Amazon Associates affiliate link. So back at Amazon Associates, this time, I'm gonna search for apple cider vinegar and then I want the Golly Nutrition brand, I believe that's how you say it. There we go. And then follow the same steps as before to get the link. So click that arrow next to where it says Get Link. And then click the Highlight HTML button. And then copy that. I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command C on my keyboard. And back at the website, find the product block and click the CTA button and paste the affiliate link. And don't forget to have it open in a new tab and add the no follow attribute to it. Perfect. Then for the sake of time, I'm gonna kinda of speed through the next two products, but you can still follow along if you'd like. So back at Amazon Associates, I'm searching for the dumbbells. And again, by adding these affiliate links to your CTA buttons, this will direct traffic to your affiliate offers. And when someone buys one of these products through your affiliate link, you get a cut of the profits. And then the final product is our resistance bands. So again, this is just the same steps as before. Quick and easy, we'll search for the product, then we'll grab the link and add it to the call to action button. Perfect. Okay, now that our affiliate links are in place, let's update the page and push these changes live. And then when we visit our resources page, And then let's scroll down and click on one of the call to action buttons. You'll see that our newly added affiliate link is working and is directing traffic to our affiliate offers. Again, depending on the affiliate program's commission percentage and the product you're promoting, this has the potential to be a very lucrative revenue stream of passive income. Think about it, let's say you get 10% of the sale for each paying customer that you refer. And let's say your product that you're promoting is around $300. That means that you'll earn $30 for each sale. That doesn't seem like a lot, but once you start building traffic to your site and you get 100 people to make a purchase through your link, that's a cool $3,000 from one affiliate product. And that's just one product. You can potentially do this with multiple products. That's why I love affiliate marketing. 
All right, congratulations. You just implemented your first revenue stream. I'm super excited for you. I can't tell you enough how much affiliate marketing has changed my life personally in terms of my business, my blog, and what I do for a living. So I'm super excited for you and can't wait to see what you do with it. All right, moving on next, let's add yet another revenue stream and create your online store. In this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you something that I've never covered in any of my videos. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what that is. So what you're looking at right now is the online store we're gonna create by using pre-existing blocks. And by leveraging the content blocks we already have on our blog, we'll be able to create a lightweight and professional looking online store without having to use a plugin. Additionally, and this is something I've never shown in my previous blogging tutorials, I'm gonna show you how to create digital products to sell on your site and also implement a few strategies to sell these products via PayPal and an online platform called eJunkie. This is the exact strategy that has helped some of my students earn thousands of dollars per month. And by selling digital products on your site, you'll be adding yet another passive income revenue stream that can help you earn money while you sleep. And I know that sounds cliche and I actually hate that phrase, but it's true. With digital products, you don't have an inventory to worry about, so you can literally make sales any time of the day or night. And with PayPal and eJunkie, they handle the entire sales process from the sales cart to processing returns. It's all automatic, and I'm gonna show you how to set everything up right now. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually build our store. And if you recall, Earlier in the video, we created a lot of our pages, but we just hadn't added content to them yet. One of those being the shop. And our shop page is actually where we're gonna build our online store. So let's access the shop page real quick. Then we obviously wanna edit the page. So click that edit link at the top of the screen. And then just like all of our other pages that we've built in this tutorial, we're gonna add the hero of the galaxy block. So follow the same steps as before to add that block. So click that plus icon. And then from the block pop-up menu, find the hero of the galaxy block. Then we wanna change the image. So click the change media button and upload the image that you wanna use. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna fast forward through this since we've done this quite a few times in this video. Next, I'm gonna adjust the height settings of the image. So you'll click the layout tab within the block settings. And then under the minimum height, select half. And also don't forget to change your headline. And this is our shop, so I'm gonna say, welcome to the BBF store. And then add a nice little catchy tagline there as well. Perfect. Then I'm gonna add some intro text. This is obviously dummy text, but this could be where you welcome people to your store and entice them to make a purchase. Next, it's time to build the sections of our store. So the first section is gonna be where we're gonna sell our online coaching sessions. And this is great because you're not only selling time with you, but you're selling your knowledge and you're helping other people with these coaching sessions. And also with all the technology that's available today, this is easy as sending someone a link and then having a meeting. So that being said, let's add our online coaching section. And then we'll get into how to add the actual coaching sessions a little later on in the video. So now let's add our first section of our online store. So follow the same steps as before in all the other pages to add a new headline. And you should be a pro at this by now, but click the more options icon and then select insert after and click the plus icon. And from the pop-up menu, find the headline block. And once again, this is going to be where we sell our online coaching sessions. So I'm gonna title this online coaching sessions for obvious reasons. Next, we're gonna add a pricing box. So follow the steps to add a new block this will give us the ability to showcase our product with a price next to it. And you'll wanna browse all of the blocks and find the stackable section and then select the pricing box block. And 
And as you can see, we have beautifully designed pricing blocks that will give us the ability to present our digital products in a professional manner. Okay, so let's start editing these blocks. So for this example, I'm gonna be offering two types of online coaching sessions. A one hour session for $150 and a two hour session for $300. So the first step is to edit the blocks so that they say that. And this is just like all the other WordPress blocks, you'll simply swap out the text and edit the call to action within the block. Next, we'll want to edit the CTA. So follow the same steps to change the color, click on the button, and then within the block settings under the style tab, change the button and text color to whatever you'd like. And then for the call to action, I'm gonna say reserve now. And don't worry about the link right now, we'll cover that in a few minutes. And below that is some description text. Use this to describe your product and tell your audience what to do in order to purchase it. Next is the image. And again, just click the image placeholder to upload your own image. And I've created a few images for this digital product, but you can use a real picture here or create one yourself or hire someone to create one for you. Either way, having a picture of your product is very effective. And again, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna bore you with you watching me upload these images. So I'm gonna fast forward real quick. Awesome, there we go. Let's move on to the next section and we'll come back to this in a few moments when I show you how to set up your sales funnel and sell your online coaching sessions to your audience through these two price boxes. All right, so go ahead and follow the same steps to add an additional price box. So find the stackable section and select the pricing box. And then this time, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, under the layout tab on the block settings, you'll see that you have additional options when it comes to how the price box is displayed. And for this section, I'm gonna use the pricing box two layout. This gives you a ton of flexibility on how your products are presented. And I love this layout. It really switches things up and brings a cool design to the page. Next, let's swap out the heading title. And this is gonna be our custom workout section. This is where we're gonna sell digital eBooks of custom workouts to our audience. Next, I wanna change the font size of the title so that it matches the rest of our site. So check this out. Within the block settings, under the style tab, find the block title section and click the reset icon there next to typography. And that will reset our heading font and make it match the rest of our site. Next, I'm gonna update the title of each price box. So these are gonna be essentially three different types of custom workouts. I'll have free weight workouts, kettlebell workouts, and a low impact workout. Then let's change the background image. So this is kind of a weird process, but you'll need to close the title tab in the block settings. And that allows you to access the custom background. So open the image tab. And then once opened, flip the switch within the tab so that it's on. And you can tell that it's on when it turns blue. This gives you the ability to add images above the title within the block. Like I said, kind of a weird process to get there, but nonetheless, now we can add images to help promote our products. So follow the same steps as before to add your images. And again, I'm using images that I created, but again, it's always helpful to have some sort of image that is representing your product on your sales page. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna fast forward real quick through me uploading the images. But again, I'm just uploading three separate images for each price block. Next, let's update the price. So I'm gonna price each one of these $49.99. And don't worry about the sub price below the actual price. We'll get rid of that in a few minutes. And let's update our button. So I'll change the color and update the CTA to say instant download since these are gonna be downloadable eBooks. Then feel free to add some description text below the buttons and update the tagline if you'd like. I'm actually gonna remove the tagline, so I'll just delete this text altogether. There we go. And don't worry, we'll add our actual sales funnel and products in a few moments. 
Okay, next we're gonna add our final section. So follow the same steps to add a new headline block. And I know you're probably tired of me saying these steps, but to add a new block, click the plus icon, and then from your block pop-up menu, select headline. And then I'm gonna title this eBooks, Fitness and Nutrition. And this is obviously going to be our eBook section that houses our fitness and nutrition eBooks. Then let's present our products. So for this section, I'm gonna use an advanced column and grid block. So go ahead and add a new block. And then find the stackable section. And select the advanced columns and grid block. And then we'll wanna make a few adjustments to the grid before we start adding our products. So if you look on the right-hand side of the screen under the layout tab of the block settings, you'll see the options you have for the layout. For this example, we wanna use the grid layout. So click on where it says grid. And we're gonna go even further and change the number of columns. So find the column section there and use the slider to change it to whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go with six for this example. And then next, we're basically gonna create a custom product block within each section of the grid. It's super easy to do. All we're using is an image block and a button block. So go ahead and click on the first section there and follow the steps to add a new image block. And then find the image block in the block pop-up menu. And then upload the image you wanna use for your product. Then you'll notice that directly below the image block, there's an additional plus icon within the block that we can use to add our button. So click on that and add a button block. It will be within the stackable blocks. There we go. And then follow the steps to change the color and text. And as you've probably noticed, I'm keeping the call to action buttons the same color so that the color is consistent throughout and it's consistent with our site's overall color scheme. And I'm pricing these at $24.99 a piece. Then I'm not gonna make you sit through me creating an additional five product blocks. So let's fast forward real quick. And you can see that after you've added your product images and buttons, you have a beautiful product display showcasing your digital eBooks that are for sale. Okay, now that the page is ready, don't forget about your SEO settings and the featured image. And remember, you'll set the featured image within the featured image plugin after you publish the page. And then let's preview our changes real quick. So scroll up to the top of the screen and click the preview button. And just a reminder, after you click the preview button, you'll need to select that you wanna view it in another tab. And our online store is ready for products. I love the fact that we don't need to leverage a plugin to achieve this. And the various blocks give us creative ways to break up the style of the page and present our digital products in a unique and stylish manner. Looks amazing. However, there is one thing I forgot to remove and that's the sub price. So let's fix that real quick. So back at the editor, find the subtext and just highlight it and delete it. Now I know it's kind of confusing because it's still showing after we delete it, but if you manually delete it on the back end, it won't show up on the front end when you publish the page. Okay, so let's preview it again real quick just to make sure. And much better. It's not a huge deal, but you don't want to create any confusion around your pricing. That could really hurt your conversions. Okay, so let's publish this page and make our changes live. So back at the WordPress editor, click the update button. And then let's view our changes. And it looks amazing. 
you now have a solid foundation for your online store and have set yourself up for an other revenue stream. But now it's time to create your digital products. Now it's time to create our digital products. This is exciting because you're actually putting your hard work out there and potentially setting yourself up to have a very lucrative passive income stream and business model. I love digital products because you don't have to worry about keeping your inventory stocked, you don't have to worry about shipping or adding shipping costs, and you don't have to worry about damaged products. Everything is automated and handled online, so you basically just have to create your products and link to them on your site. So the first product we're going to sell online is coaching sessions. And these are great because they not only give you a way to interact with your audience, but you can monetize your expertise. Plus, with the available technology we have today, creating your online coaching sessions is super easy and very user-friendly. So the first step we're gonna do is give our audience a way to reserve their spot and purchase some time with you. Now, there are a handful of ways you can go about this, and there are some useful plugins out there that can help you manage reservations and time slots, but I like keeping things simple and free. So the way we're achieving this is by linking to our contact page. Now you may want to create a completely separate contact page for your online coaching sessions, but for the sake of time, we're using the contact form page that we created earlier in the video. All right, the first step is we'll need to make some edits to our online store. So make sure you're at that page and then click the edit link at the top of the screen. And then we're gonna add our contact page URL to the button block within that first pricing block. So scroll down there and click on those call to action buttons and add the URL to your contact page. And the idea here is that whenever someone wants to reserve some time with you, they'll click the reserve now button and be taken to your contact page, which will essentially serve as your order form. They can then submit a message via the contact form requesting to purchase an online coaching session. From there, you have to do a little bit of legwork in terms of scheduling it and processing the payment, but I recommend replying to their email with your available time slots, session pricing, a contractual legal coaching agreement you need them to sign. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so I recommend reaching out to legal counsel on that one. And then include your PayPal information so they can pay for the session. And in regards to the coaching agreement, here's an example of a sample coaching agreement PDF. And I'll put a link to this in the show notes below the video, but feel free to use this as a guide whenever you're creating your coaching agreement. Again, this is just an example and it's not intended to serve as legal advice. I recommend using this as a guide and then once you've drafted your version, reach out to your legal counsel for additional input. All right, then when it comes to processing your payments, I recommend PayPal. But if you don't have PayPal, then I highly recommend signing up for a free business PayPal account and using that for your transactions. It makes processing online payments super quick and easy and helps mitigate your risk because it's a trusted and well-known payment processing platform that's safe and secure. Okay, so once you and the customer have settled on a time to meet virtually, you've hashed out the coaching agreement and you've received payment, it's time to send them the link to your virtual coaching session. And the way they're gonna achieve that is through Zoom. So if you're new to Zoom, Zoom is a video communications platform that's used for teleconferencing, telecommuting, distance education, social relations, and much, much more. Especially in the time of COVID-19, Zoom has become a very popular platform for video conferencing. Bottom line, you can use Zoom for virtual meetings and meet with people all over the world. All you need is a computer, internet connection, and a free Zoom account. So it's no surprise in this video, we're gonna use Zoom to facilitate our online coaching session. And the way we're gonna do this is through our free Zoom account. All we're gonna do is we're gonna create and schedule our meeting or coaching session through the platform, and then Zoom will provide us a link. Then that link is what you'll send to your customer, and when they click on that link, you'll be able to meet with them in your private virtual meeting room, and your coaching session can begin. Okay, so once you sign up for a free account, here's how you'll schedule your online coaching sessions. So I'm gonna to head to my Zoom account, Then within the account dashboard, select meetings on the left-hand side nav. And then this will take you to your meetings management page. This is where you could schedule new meetings, manage your upcoming meetings, review previous meetings, and much more. 
But right now, we're gonna schedule a new meeting. So click the Schedule a New Meeting button. And then you can start adding all the specific requirements for your meeting. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna fill this entire section out, but you wanna give your meeting a title and a description if you'd like. Schedule the time and duration, and then I leave everything else as is. And once you're done filling everything out, click the Save button. and your meeting has been successfully scheduled. Then this is the important part. In order for your customer to access the virtual meeting, you'll need to send them the invite link. So simply click the copy invitation link here, and this will pop up your invite. Then go ahead and click the copy meeting invitation button, and it will copy this text here, which is what you'll then send to your customer. Then when they receive the invite and put the invitation link in their browser, they'll be able to access your virtual meeting room. So I'm just gonna highlight the invitation link really quick, copy it, and then put it in my browser so that you can see what the customer will see on their end whenever you start your coaching session via Zoom. And the window will pop up and click start video. And there you go. You guys will be able to see each other and try to ignore the buzz cut I like to call that my quarantine cut, but Zoom is a powerful tool that can help you initiate your coaching calls and ultimately sell a digital product. Now, one final thing I should point out is that if your coaching sessions are over an hour, then you'll need to purchase a Zoom plan which starts at $14.99 per month. However, if you do 30 minute sessions, you can use the free Zoom plan for that. Okay, so that's your first digital product, nice job. Now let's move on to your next digital product, which will be in the form of an ebook. So if we scroll down to our custom workout section and our fitness and nutrition ebook section, these two sections will be where we'll sell our digital products in the form of an ebook. And I should clarify what I mean when I say ebook because people tend to get a little intimidated when they hear the word book because you automatically think of things like publishing and everything that comes with creating an actual book. However, we're not technically creating a book we're creating a PDF that will be designed to look like a book. This is how I create all of my eBooks and it's how my students have created their eBooks that they sell to their audiences as well. So before we get started, I'm going to update this page so that our changes to our coaching sessions get saved. There we go. And then moving on. Next, let's create our ebook, which will be our digital product that we'll sell to our audience. All right, now it's time to create our sales funnel and ebook. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what that will look like. So, this is our quote unquote ebook that is technically a PDF, but as I previously mentioned, I'm going to show you how to design this so that it looks and feels like a professionally published book. And the great thing about this is that we're gonna be using a pre-made template where basically all you have to do is just enter your content and swap out the images. Super easy to do and you get a really good result from it. Next, I'm gonna show you the sales funnel and how you'll facilitate the actual sales process. So whenever someone clicks the instant download button, they'll automatically be taken to your sales cart. And we're gonna create this particular shopping cart by leveraging software from eJunkie which is an online platform that is specifically designed to help people sell digital products online. And we'll cover all of that in a few moments, but first let's create our ebook. So the way I created my ebooks is with the help of an ebook template. And you can find literally hundreds of ebook templates through a website called Graphic River. I use and highly recommend this if you don't wanna spend hours upon hours trying to design your ebook from scratch. The ebook templates on Graphic River are professionally made and save you a ton of time because you don't have to worry about designing the layout. You can focus on creating content for your ebook and get your product out to your audience much faster. So for this video, I'm gonna be using the Fitness Bold ebook template for Keynote. I'm on a Mac, so that's why I'm using Keynote, but you can also use PowerPoint if you're on a PC and convert it to a PDF. Now the main reason I chose this template was because it was already using the health and fitness niche. 
And when we view the example, you could see that it looks absolutely amazing and is definitely something that you could charge money for. The layout and design of the ebook looks like something you'd see from a professionally published product, and it goes far and beyond what I would be able to design. Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you're going to use this template to create a product that you're going to sell to the end user, then you'll need to purchase the extended license for a one-time fee of $150. I know that may seem like a lot, but you have to look at this as an investment. No business starts from being free. You have to put a little down in order to see a return on your investment. Plus, depending on how many eBooks you sell, you could easily make $150 back and much, much more. Like I said, I have a student who is in the food blogging niche and his recipe ebook generates around $3,000 per month. And that's just one ebook. Plus, you can use this template for multiple ebooks and just change the content. That's ideally what people are paying for. So, if you find yourself on a budget, just use this template for multiple ebooks. Okay, so after you've purchased the ebook template and license, you'll download it from your Graphic River account to your computer, and then you can start designing. So for this example, I'm on a Mac and I'm using Keynote, but like I mentioned, if you're on a PC, just purchase the PowerPoint version and convert it to a PDF when you're done. Okay, so whenever you first open your template, you'll see that it comes with the default color, placeholder images, and dummy text. However, once you start customizing it, you can really mold it and make it your own. As you can see, I've swapped out the orange color with colors that match our website's brand, as well as using images that match the layout and design of our website as well. Okay, let's go over real quick how to edit this template so that it matches your overall brand as well as the look and feel. So let's go to a page that hasn't been updated. And then you'll notice that it's using dummy text and still has the orange color to it. But all you have to do is swap out the text. So for this example, I'll change the title to Bodyweight Exercises. and then change the orange text to the same pinkish color that we're using on our site. There we go. Next, let's add some images. So click on the placeholder image and replace it with an image from your computer. And then I'll do the same thing for the next image. Then when it comes to the content, simply swap out the dummy text with your own words. It's literally like a Word doc. Just start typing. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna fast forward through me typing out this content. I don't wanna make you sit through and watch me write every single page of this ebook, but hopefully you get the idea. All right, and the same thing goes for the text over the images. Just replace that with content that is relevant to your ebook and what you're teaching. Then I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to the exposure of these images so that they're a little darker. This helps the white font stand out. There we go. Then for the sake of time, I'm not gonna walk you through the entire process of doing these exact same steps for each page, but that's essentially what you'd be doing. Just change the orange color to match your brand and then adding images and your own content. And once you do that, you'll have a beautiful and professional looking ebook that is ready to be sold. And as you can see with our finished ebook, all I did was swap out the images, change the content, and it looks professional and also aligns with my website's brand and overall color scheme. Looks great. So the next thing we wanna do is convert this file to a PDF because the PDF is how our audience is gonna access and consume this content. Again, I'm on a Mac using Keynote, so these steps may be a little different if you're on a PC, but the idea is essentially the same. So to convert the file to a PDF, at the top of the screen, hover your mouse over File, and then Export To, and select PDF. Then before I export the presentation, I'm gonna change the image quality from good to better, and then click the Next button, and then name your file. and click the export button. And after a few moments, you'll have a PDF version of your ebook that is ready to be sold to your audience. 
and congratulations, you've successfully leveraged the ebook template and created a beautiful and professional looking PDF. And again, this is what we'll use as our digital product and is what we'll sell to our audience. So moving on, next, let's learn a little bit about eJunkie and set up the sales funnel using that platform. Okay, now that we have our digital product, it's time to set up our sales funnel and give our audience a way to purchase our product. Now you have multiple ways to set this strategy up, but for this tutorial, I'm leveraging software from eJunkie. eJunkie was created for one purpose, to help people sell digital downloads online. It's a great platform that a lot of my students have used and found success with. And like I said, one of my students who sells recipe eBooks used eJunkie and was able to generate over $3,000 per month with just one small eBook. eJunkie makes getting your product online super simple and they also handle the entire sales process. All you have to do is provide the product, configure a few settings, and you can start selling online. Now, one thing to point out is that this is a paid service that you have to buy a monthly subscription to. However, you can get started for free and try their service for 30 days to see if it's a good fit for you and your business. I should also mention that at the time this video is being recorded, eJunkie is offering one year free accounts to anyone who has lost income due to COVID-19. That's pretty amazing of them. Okay, so let's get started. So for the sake of time, I'm not gonna walk you through the entire signup process, but when you're ready to sign up, click the Get Started button to try eJunkie for 30 days with no credit card required. All right, now before we dive in, one thing I wanna let you know is that for our payment processing, we're gonna be using PayPal. So if you don't have a business PayPal account, I recommend you pause the video, sign up for that free business PayPal account, and then jump back in. Like I said, it's free to get set up, but that's how we're going to be processing our payments, and it's a requirement for this video. All right, so after you've set up your business PayPal account and your eJunkie account, this is what your dashboard will look like. Now I know it has a minimalist look and feel to it, but it is highly effective. All of your dashboard configuration settings are on the left-hand side nav, as well as a few settings in the toolbar on the upper right-hand side of the screen and the footer. Then you'll notice that eJunkie has laid out the selling process in three easy steps. They've also provided a quick get started video that walks you through the selling process as well. You can check that out if you want, but I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know step by step in this video. So let's start selling. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is set up our payment processing. So go ahead and click on step one. Tell us where buyers will pay you. And this will bring you to your profile settings. And the first thing you wanna check is your PayPal email. eJunkie's primary way of processing payment is through PayPal. So if you don't have a PayPal account, you'll need to sign up for one. And make sure the correct PayPal email is used in this field. This ensures that all payments are directed to the correct PayPal account. Next, make sure you update your display email and display name. These will be shown to all your buyers, so make sure that it's not your personal email and make sure the display name is using your website or your business's name. Finally, there are some advanced payment options that you can check out if you'd like. However, for this video, I'm leaving this section as is. And then once everything has been updated, click the submit button. And congratulations, you've successfully set up your payment processing. Nice job. On to step number two, which is where we'll add our digital products. So where it says, tell us what you're selling, click the add product button, and this will take you to the product settings. This is where you can set the product details, delivery details, configure the thank you message, and much more. But the first thing we're gonna configure is the product details. So let's give our product a title. And remember, this is the title that your customers are going to see, so keep it professional yet descriptive. And for this tutorial, our product is going to be a low impact workouts ebook. There we go. Next, it's time to set the price. So in the price field, enter the amount that you wanna charge for your ebook. And each price point may differ depending on your audience, but I'm gonna set this at $49.99. Below that is currency. I'm in America, so I'll leave it at US dollar. Then I'm also gonna leave the item number blank since we're not requiring a custom item number for a product. Then we have the sales tax and VAT. 
And we'll look at that a little closer in a few minutes, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna check that box next to add sales tax slash VAT. And if you're unsure what to do here, go ahead and skip this because we're gonna cover sales tax and VAT in a few moments. Next, I'm gonna leave the remaining two boxes as is. We wanna let buyers edit the quantity of products they can buy. And we aren't requiring a shipping address because we aren't shipping physical products to an actual address. Next is the digital delivery section. And this is where you can configure the settings for how your digital download is delivered to the customer. So the first part of this is deciding on how your customer is going to access your digital product after they submit their payment. And by default, eJunkie has single file download selected for you. This means that after the customer pays, they receive a unique expiring download link for every purchase. However, you have the option to redirect buyers to different pages on your site after payment. But for this tutorial, we're using the single file download option. Next, you have the option to have a remote product file, meaning that you have the file of your product stored on your server instead of uploading it to eJunkie. We're not worrying about that for this video, so you can skip this step. Then you could set the download attempts and time frame for those downloads. Five attempts within 120 hours is more than enough, but you can disable the time limit and set it to zero hours if you'd like. Next, there's an option to send codes with your product. This is used for things like license keys, phone cards, and pens, but we don't need to worry about that for this video, so go ahead and leave those boxes unchecked. Then moving on to the product thank you email. Here you can edit and configure the thank you email that's sent to your customers after they make a purchase. Anything you add here will be added to the standard message and link code eJunkie sends for digital items. However, if you check this box next to don't include default greeting and link, your message will replace eJunkie's standard message. You can also receive a copy of the email sent to the buyers if you'd like, but for this video, we're leaving the default settings in place and using the standard message. Then there's some additional advanced settings, inventory control, and thank you page configurations. However, we're not gonna be using those features in this video. In regards to the thank you page, we're gonna leverage eJunkie's new and improved thank you page experience, which is very well done in my opinion. And I'll be showing you how to implement that towards the end of the video. All right, we're done with our product details. So let's go ahead and click the submit button at the bottom of the screen. and then you'll be taken to another page where you'll see your product info has been successfully saved. Next, it's time to upload the digital product that you intend to sell. So simply click the Upload Product File button. And then from the pop-up, click the Choose File button and find the PDF file of your ebook that we created a few moments ago in the video. Then depending on the size of the file of your digital product, it may take a few moments for it to actually upload. But just give it a few seconds and we should be good to go. Then once the upload is complete, click the close button. And next we're going to upload an image of our product that will show up in the product card and shopping cart. And we'll go over what both of those are in a few moments but under the optional product details section, go ahead and click the upload product images button. Then you'll have the option to upload five images. And please note that your product images can only be JPEGs or PNG files with a maximum file size of two megabytes and should be at least 800 pixels wide and 640 pixels tall. Then to add your image, click the first square there and find the image you wanna use on your computer. There we go. And I'm just gonna add one image for now, but you can add multiple if you want. So let's exit out of this and click the close button. Next, we wanna edit the product listing. So click the edit product listing button, and this will bring you to your product card. And product cards can be used a few different ways. One is that you can link directly to this card by sharing a link with your audience. And we'll cover that in a few moments. Then the product cards are also used with the eJunkie shop. So it's important to make sure this looks professional and has the correct information. And you can see that our product image, title, and price are in place, but I wanna add a description to help 
entice people to click through and add it to their cart. So I'll add a quick description in that description box there. Then once your product card is ready to go, click the Save Changes button. And your first product is ready to be sold. Now there are a few more adjustments we need to make to our cart, but you now have a digital product in stock that is ready to be sold to your audience. Next, you have a few options on how to promote your product. If you look under the Get Button Code section, you'll notice there is a Cart option, a Buy Now option, and a Product Card option. All three offer different buying experiences and ways to promote your products to your audience. But for this video, we're going to be using the Cart Text Link option. But I recommend that you experiment with all options to see what works best for you, your business, and your customer. And just to give you a quick example of what our buying experience is going to look like, in this video, we're going to use the cart text link and add it to our call to action buttons on our sales pages. Then when someone clicks on that button, they'll be taken to our shopping cart, which looks super professional. Now, don't worry about the colors and the sales tax. We're going to update that in a few moments. But using the cart text link on your sales page is an effective sales funnel that can get your customer directly to your cart in just one click. Okay, before we move on, I want to upload another digital product to sell. So in your dashboard, under the Manage Product section, click the Add Product link. And then this will take you through the same process we just went through and will allow you to add a second digital product to eJunkie. Now for the sake of time, I'm going to go a little faster during this one, but you'd want to add your product details, set the price, add sales tax if you need to, which we're still going to cover, and configure the delivery options and thank you email if you need to. Next, I'm going to upload the file of my digital product. And again, this may take a few moments depending on how large of a file it is, but in a few seconds we should be good to go. Then I'm going to upload my product image. Then if we preview our cart by clicking the open button, you can see that both of our digital products are now displaying in the cart and are ready to be purchased. Okay, before we move on, I want to show you a quick tip. Under the Manage Seller Account section in our dashboard, click on Edit Preferences, and then under the Optional Information section, I recommend adding the URL to your website and logo if you have one. This will be displayed as a header image on your eJunkie shop, thank you pages, checkout pages, and your cart when it appears in a separate tab. This is just another way to create brand awareness and brand loyalty. Okay, now it's time to edit your cart and make it match your overall brand and color scheme of your website. So in your eJunkie dashboard, under the Manage Cart and Shop, click on Cart Preferences, and this will bring you to your cart editor. As you can see on the left, it's where you have all your editing options, and on the right is a preview of your cart and credit card page. So you can really go crazy and pretty much edit every aspect of your cart, but for this video I'm only concerned with the color. I want it to match my website so that there is a consistent look and feel whenever my customer leaves my sales page and arrives at the shopping cart. So to edit the color on the left hand side of the screen under the default theme section, click that drop down and you'll see all the preset color schemes options that you have for your shopping cart. You'll notice that the color scheme used changes the color within the proceed to pay section and the custom error button. Again, this doesn't seem like a huge deal, but the more consistent you can keep the experience between your online store, not only looks good, but it can potentially help increase conversions because the customer doesn't feel like they're necessarily leaving your site. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use a custom color here. So if you go to the very bottom of this dropdown and click on custom, and then click on the custom color bar there, you'll have the ability to either use the color picker or enter the hex color code if you know it. So right below the color picker, if you click on those arrows, you can toggle between how to enter your custom color. I wanna enter the hex color code, so clicking it a few times will bring up that option, and then I'll type in my hex color code, and voila, my shopping cart matches the color scheme of my website. 
Awesome. So once you've decided on a color for your cart, click the Save Changes button and your cart is ready to go. Moving on. Okay, now it's time to talk about sales tax. And a quick disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer and none of the information I'm about to give you should be considered legal advice. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's take a closer look at sales tax. So in your eJunkie dashboard under the Manage Shipping Tax Discounts section, click on Sales Tax VAT Settings. And this will bring you to your sales tax settings where you can calculate the sales tax and VAT to charge your customers. First, let's talk sales tax. So a sales tax is a consumption tax imposed by the government on the sale of goods and services. And the sales tax is levied at the point of sale collected by the retailer, which is you, and is then passed on to the government, meaning you pay the sales tax that you collect from customers to the government. However, when it comes to digital products, sometimes you won't have to charge a sales tax due to where your business is located. For example, if we take a look at this helpful article by TaxJar, they've listed out sales tax by state showing where digital products are taxable, and I'll put a link to this in the show notes, but if you scroll down and find your state, you can see what the sales tax law is when it comes to digital products. For example, I'm in California, so digital products are actually exempt, meaning I don't have to charge a sales tax on my eBooks. However, if you're based out of Connecticut, digital products are taxable, but at a reduced rate of only 1%. So, for this example, let's say I'm operating out of Connecticut. And back at our sales tax calculator, I'm going to check the box next to where it says tax buyers from state slash province to initiate the sales tax. And then I'll select Connecticut from the dropdown. Then I'll set the sales tax rate to 1%. Next is the VAT, which stands for Value Added Tax. And it's basically sales tax for European buyers. So if you have European customers, you'll more than likely need to charge VAT. For example, here's an explanation by Shopify stating that digital goods are downloadable files and consumers living in the European Union must pay a value added tax or the VAT on digital goods, regardless of where the seller is located. Here's a helpful infographic provided by Quaderno I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's how I think it's pronounced, that walks you through some simple questions to help determine if you need to charge VAT. Bottom line, if you're selling to consumers in the European Union, then yes, you need to register for VAT and charge your EU customers VAT as well. Now, don't let this scare you away. I know this all may seem a little intimidating, but it's actually not that scary. eJunkie makes it easy to set up and track your European customers. Plus, at the end of the day, you're running a business and selling products, so you'll need to adhere to the laws if you want to make money. Again, I highly recommend reaching out to legal counsel before moving forward if you're not sure what to do or how to register for VAT. Having a legal professional walk you through the sales tax and VAT process can save you a ton of headaches and money if you make a mistake. Okay, so back at our sales tax and VAT calculator. To set the VAT, simply check the box next to EU VAT calculation and then select where your business is located in the drop-down menu, and EU buyers will be taxed at the appropriate VAT rate for your respective country. Super simple. Okay, next there are shipping and handling and advanced sales tax calculations, but we don't need to worry about those for this tutorial. And then I'm actually gonna uncheck the box for the Connecticut sales tax since I'm in California, and then click the submit button to save your changes, and your sales tax and VAT calculations are set and will be handled during the shopping cart checkout process. Again, I know I sound like a broken record, but you're running a business and I highly recommend reaching out to a lawyer if you're unsure about what to do with sales tax and VAT for your business. Okay, moving on. Next, I wanna show you some new features that are available for you to try out. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, these options may be the default settings. However, when I recorded this video, these are some new features that you can implement on your account if you want. So on the upper right hand side of the screen, if you see a try new features button, go ahead and click on that. And this will take you to eJunkie's new features that you can try out, which are basically new and updated user experiences for your thank you page and the sales notification email that's sent to your customers. Both have been updated to look more modern and professional and for this tutorial, I'm gonna enable both of them. So click the green enable button to turn these new features on. Perfect. 
Next, let's get our product links to add to our sales page. So head back to the admin dashboard by clicking on the back to admin button. And now it's time to get the product links we're gonna use on our site. So that whenever a visitor clicks on it, they'll automatically add that product to their shopping cart and be taken through the checkout process. So on the side nav, under the manage product section, click on get purchase buttons slash links. And then the first thing you need to do is select the product you're linking to. So under the select product section, click on that drop down menu and select the product you want to link to. And I'm going to start with the low impact workouts ebook. Next, it's time to select how you want to link to your products. So by default, you'll start out in the cart section. And this is what I recommend because it not only takes the customer through the checkout process, but they can add multiple products to their cart, which I'll show you how that's done in a few moments. Now there's also a buy now feature that lets you create a link or HTML button that takes the buyer directly to instant checkout for the single item. And this isn't necessarily ideal for a sales page if you have multiple products, but this could be used for social media and email campaigns. Finally, there's the product card. And if you recall, the product card is what we edited a little earlier in the video, and it's just another buying experience for your customers. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna link directly to the cart. So make sure you're in the cart section. Then you'll notice that you have a few options when it comes to how you link to your product. You can use a text link or HTML button. For this tutorial, we're using the text link because we're using it to link to a specific product from a CTA button. And let me show you what I mean. So the first thing you wanna do is copy the text link for the product. And you can just highlight it and copy it from your keyboard or just click the copy button. There we go. Next, it's time to add it to our website. So back at our site's online store, you'll wanna access the WordPress editor. So click the edit page link at the top of the screen. Then I wanna to link to our low impact workouts ebook. So I'll find the product block on that page. And then I'm gonna add the link to the instant download button. So click the button to open the editing features and simply paste the URL of the product link from eJunkie like so. And then open the more options by clicking on that three dot icon. And then I recommend having this link open the shopping cart in a new tab. So flip that switch on so it's blue. There we go. Next, I'm gonna follow the same steps for our other digital product, the nutrition guide. So back at eJunkie, under the select product section, I'm gonna select the nutrition guide. Then within the cart section, I'm gonna copy the text link for this product. Then back at the website, I'm gonna find the nutrition guide product block and open the button settings and paste the URL of the product link from eJunkie. And don't forget about the more options. Make sure this opens in a new tab when someone clicks on it. Looks good. And then let's publish our changes. So click the update button to push these changes live. And then if we visit the page, we can test out our sales funnel and check out the process. So first, let's take a look at our coaching sessions. Remember, we linked to our contact page. So if someone is interested in your online coaching sessions, they'll click the Reserve Now button. And they'll be taken to the contact page where they can submit their name, email address, and the request via the contact form. And then you will reply to them and provide more details next steps, and the Zoom meeting link after they've made payment and signed the contractual agreement. Next is our custom workout ebook on low impact workouts. And when we click the instant download button, we're taken to our shopping cart and the low impact workout ebook has been successfully added to the cart, which looks great by the way. I love the matching color scheme. 
Then let's say the customer wants to continue shopping. So if they click the continue shopping button, they're taken back to our online store where they can buy more products like the nutrition guide. So let's say they click on the button underneath that ebook. The additional digital product has been added to the shopping cart. Now I obviously have many more products to create and add to eJunkie, but you would just follow the exact same steps for each one of these digital products. So you just create them with your ebook template, export that file to a PDF, upload it to eJunkie, configure the product settings and product link, and then add the product link to your website. And once you get used to the platform and process, you can start creating multiple digital products for your audience. Like I said, this business model has the potential to earn you a substantial amount of passive income. And when you're creating products that help your audience that are easy to consume and are set at a reasonable price point, the sky's the limit. That's why I love digital products and highly recommend making them a part of your monetization strategy. Okay, moving on. Next, let's configure the footer of our website. All right, now it's time to customize the footer. And this theme gives you a few options when it comes to how you want the content to be displayed along the footer. First, let's fast forward real quick to take a look at the finished product. Now, as you can see, we're going to design the footer so that it displays some contact info along with four columns of various links, content, social icons, and copyright info. The footer is a great place to encourage engagement on your site. And that's because when someone scrolls down to the bottom of your homepage, if there isn't anything to attract a click, chances are they'll bounce. So by having a footer that has clickable links and whatnot, it will help keep visitors on your site and interacting with the content. All right, let's customize our footer. So to make our changes, we'll do so through the block settings within the backend of our WordPress dashboard. So to access the footer, to start making changes, hover your mouse over the site title in the upper left-hand side of the screen and click on Dashboard. Then within the side nav, hover your mouse over Appearance and click on Block Areas. And this will bring you to your block management menu. And you'll notice that there are three main blocks within this menu, the promo bar, header, and footer. We obviously want to edit the footer, so hover your mouse over footer and click on the edit link. And this will bring you to the back end of the footer where you can begin to make your changes. Now for the most part, the edits are pretty straightforward. As you can see, each section of the footer is its own content block. So all we're doing essentially is swapping out the content and links with things that are relevant to our site. So the first thing I'm gonna edit is the telephone number. This doesn't even have to be a phone number. It could be anything you'd like, or you can even remove it. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna replace the phone number with some text. There we go. Next is the email address. Now, if you haven't set up your email address using your blog's domain, then I recommend you watch my free tutorial on how to get that set up in your Bluehost account. And I'll put a link to that video in the show notes titled, How to Create an Email Address Using Your Domain but I'm pretty sure you don't wanna use your personal email address here. So to change it, it's a text block and you should be familiar with how to edit these. And I'll just type out my email address. Now, if you have a long email address like mine, it'll start to move to a second line of text. It doesn't look too good. And we'll fix that in a moment, but first let's link to our email address. So click on the email address to open the URL settings and we're gonna use an HTML mail to link. And a mail to link is a type of HTML link that activates the default mail client on the computer for sending an email. So what happens is that whenever someone clicks on your email address in the footer, it automatically opens their default mail client and allows them to send an email to you. It's just another convenient way to let your audience contact you. So to add the mail to link, click the edit button in the URL field, type without any spaces, mail to, then add a colon, and then enter your email address. Then click the submit button. And now anytime someone clicks on the email address in your footer, they can automatically contact you with a click of the mouse. 
Next, let's fix the font size of our email address so that it isn't running off into a second line. So within the block heading settings, simply change it from an H2 heading to an H3 heading and the font will shrink and fit the width of our footer much better. Then you'll wanna be sure and do the same thing for the other text block so that they match in size and look consistent. So follow the same steps here. Looks great. Moving on to the four columns of content. Now, as you can see, the footer is broken down into four columns that you can easily edit and display whatever you want. This is some great real estate to drive traffic to important pages in your blog like landing pages, online store, and social channels. The footer is a great way to keep the user engaged and spending time on your site. So for this example, I'm gonna have the first column link to our workout landing page. And it's pretty straightforward. We'll edit just as we would in one of our blog pages or blog posts. Simply click on the text and edit each block of content. So instead of contact info, I'll title this workouts. And instead of the address, I'll add the name of our workouts and then change these to hyperlinks so that they link to specific pages on our site. Once you have your list, to create a link, simply highlight the text and click the link icon. Then enter the URL you want to link to and click the submit button. And then go ahead and do that for the other remaining lines of text. Again, this is yet another great strategy to help drive traffic to your landing pages. All right, moving on to the next column. So I'm gonna list out a few items that are for sale and I'll change the title to shop and swap out the text. So within this column, I'm gonna list out meal plans, supplements, and eBooks. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is just swap out the text for each list item. Then we'll wanna update the links so that they direct traffic to the correct page. So just follow the same steps as before to add a link to each list item. So the meal plan will link to our meal plans landing page. Supplements will link to our resources page. And the ebooks will link to our online store. Beautiful. Next, there are some operating hours. We don't have a physical location, so I'll just change this to office hours. This could let people know when you're available to answer emails and give online coaching sessions. And then before we move on to the final column, I want to publish these changes because we'll need to leave the footer in order to update the social network links. So click the update button to push these changes live. And moving on, next let's update our footer social icons. Okay, in this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna add our social icons to our footer. And unfortunately, there isn't a one-click option to add these next to your social links, so that's why we installed and activated the WP Code plugin at the beginning of the video. We're gonna utilize that plugin along with some code from my code cheat sheet in order for the social icons to display in the footer. Now, a quick disclaimer, what we're about to do is pretty advanced in terms of editing HTML. So if you're unfamiliar with HTML or brand new to it, I highly recommend that you watch this portion of the video before making any changes to your site. That way you can see if it's something that you're comfortable with doing. If not, you can always skip adding the icons and simply link to your social networks like they've done here in the demo. Either way, whatever you decide to do, I highly recommend that you have some sort of link to your social networks within your site. Okay, before we get started, let's take a peek at the finished product so you can see what our social icons are going to look like. So instead of just the hyperlinks to Facebook, Instagram, etc., we're going to add actual social icons next to each line of hyperlink text. Doing so can help drive traffic to your social media profiles because the icons draw your blog's visitors' attention to the hyperlinks, and they just look cool. Okay, so back at our blog, if you recall, we're gonna leverage the WP Coder plugin to display our social icons. 
But the first step in that process is grabbing a snippet of code from my code cheat sheet and adding it to the plugin. So visit the code cheat sheet link in the show notes below this video and find the font awesome icons code section. Then highlight the snippet of code there and copy it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard. And this snippet of code is going to give us the ability to access multiple types of social media icons. And I'll show you what I mean here in a few seconds. So back at the blog, we're gonna add that code to the WP Coder plugin. So in the side nav of your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over Wow Plugins and click on WP Coder. And without getting into the technical weeds, all this plugin is doing is giving us the ability to add snippets of code to specific places on our blog. And since we need to implement a specific snippet of code in our footer, we're gonna use this plugin. So click the Add New tab to get started. And then within the HTML code section, paste that snippet of code that you just copied from my code cheat sheet. Perfect. Then give it a title. So in that name field, I'm gonna call this footer. Then click the save button. And your code has been stored. Next, you'll need to grab the short code for this snippet of code. And again, without getting into the technical weeds, the short code is just a shorter version of the snippet of code from my cheat sheet, and it's easier to implement within the footer. So one place you can grab the short code is next to the publish section. Go ahead and highlight that and copy it. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C. Also, if you go back to the plugin dashboard by clicking on the list tab, You'll see our footer code that we just created, and you can also grab the short code here as well. Both are the same versions of the short code that we're gonna use in our footer. And speaking of footer, let's go back to our footer and add this code. So hover your mouse over appearance and click on block areas. And then under the footer section, click on the edit link. Then we're gonna place the code in a new block under the follow us block. So click on the text to open the block settings and then click on the three dot icon to open the more options. Then from the drop down, select insert after and then click the circle plus icon to add a new block. Then from the block menu, search for short code and there it is. And this gives us the ability to add short code anywhere on our site. Then simply paste the short code that we copied from WP Coder. And perfect. Now don't worry about what it looks like. The short code will be invisible to your site's visitors on the front end. Okay, now it's time to add our social icons. So click on those demo social hyperlinks to open the block settings. And then click on the three dot icon to open the more options and then select edit as HTML. And this will give us the ability to edit the block as raw HTML, which also gives us much more flexibility in how things look. So to add the social icons, head back to my code cheat sheet and find the font awesome brand HTML section. And you'll notice that I've laid out some example code for you to get started with. Now the spacing of this looks a little weird due to being separated by a page break, but it will hopefully make more sense after you paste it to your blog. So before we get into the specifics of the code, let me show you what it will do. So go ahead and highlight it and copy it. Then back at our footer, paste that code from the cheat sheet in the block so that it replaces the demo HTML and it should look a little more organized, almost like four separate paragraphs of text. Next, you can toggle back to the visual editor by clicking on that three dot icon to open the more options. And then select edit visually. And this will let you see what the code has done. And as you can see, our new code is displaying four social icons next to four separate social network hyperlinks. And don't worry if you don't have these specific social networks or have less than these four in the example you can easily edit them and remove them by making some changes to the HTML. 
So let's say you don't have a YouTube channel. All you need to do is go back to the HTML, click the more options icon, and select edit as HTML. Then find the snippet of code that is designated for YouTube. Now you'll have to get used to reading the HTML, but due to the spacing, it's the third section of HTML there. Simply highlight it and remove it. Then if we go back to the visual editor, you can see that YouTube has been removed from our list of social networks. Pretty cool. Now let me show you how to add social networks. So for this example, I'm actually going to re-add the YouTube code that we just got rid of. And the reason for that is because it's going to be easier to edit the code rather than have you try to retype all of it out from scratch. And you'll see what I mean here in a few moments. So I'm just gonna re-add that snippet of code for YouTube. Then let's head back to the cheat sheet. And then within the snippet of code, I've notated in red, all of the aspects of the code that you can edit. One of them being the icon, which is called an I class within the HTML. And as you can see, each I class for each social icon has its own unique tag, so to speak. This tells the browser which icon to display. Then if you wanna change what icon displays, all you have to do is grab the I class tag that is associated with that particular social network. And here's how you do that. For example, let's say you want to promote your Reddit profile. So head over to w3schools.com and access their font awesome brand icons. And here you can pick and choose between a ton of social icon iClass tags to add to your HTML. And I'll put a link to this in the show notes titled W3 Schools Font Awesome Brand Icons. But you can also access the link to this page on the code cheat sheet as well. Then once you find the icon that you want to use, Simply highlight and copy the tag there. Then back at the site, within the footer HTML, I'm gonna replace the YouTube icon with the Reddit icon. So find the YouTube iClass section and replace it with the Reddit iClass tag that we just copied. Then, since this is now referring to Reddit, you'll need to update two additional aspects of the snippet of code that mention YouTube. So within the HTML, swap out the label from YouTube to Reddit, and then update the YouTube URL to your Reddit URL. Then finally, change the hyperlink text from YouTube to Reddit, and we're good to go. Now I know that was a lot, but if we view the visual editor, you could see that our new iClass tag and HTML are now displaying the Reddit icon, hyperlink, and text. Nice work. The great thing about this is that you could do this for multiple social networks. If you want to add a new social network to the list, I recommend copying and pasting one of the social networks that you've already created. Then all you have to do is swap out the iClass, label, link, and text so that it displays the new social icon and links to the correct social network. Remember, I've notated everything in red on the cheat sheet that you can edit, so be sure to refer back to that if you're unsure what needs to be changed. Also, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or if you're having trouble with the code. I'm always happy to help. Just drop me a comment in the video with your question. Okay, the final portion of the footer we're gonna edit is the copyright text. And this theme has conveniently placed it within its own block, and all you have to do is swap out the text and links to match your brand and business needs. So this is just a paragraph block of text. All you need to do is click on it and start editing. So I'll change this to 2020 since that's our current year. And then I'll change it to my site's name. Next is the hyperlink. You can change it to whatever you want. I recommend linking to your about page. That way you can still drive traffic to internal pages within your site. This keeps the visitor on your site, which is always good for SEO. And there we go, our footer is complete. So let's update our changes and make them live. Then let's visit our site and check it out. So on the upper left hand side of the screen, you can hover your mouse over your site title and click on visit site. And then if we scroll down to the footer,
you can see that the footer has been successfully updated and looks great. Love the simplicity of it. Remember, the footer is a great place to encourage engagement on your site. And that's because once someone scrolls down to the bottom of your homepage, if there isn't anything to attract a click, chances are they'll bounce. So by having a footer there and having clickable links and media, it will help keep visitors on your blog and interacting with your content. All right, moving on. Next, let's configure the Instagram full width plugin on your homepage. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna configure the Get With Instagram block so that you can display your Instagram feed across the bottom of your website. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what that will look like. As a health and fitness influencer, your Instagram account is your lifeline to your audience and sponsors. So having an additional way to promote your Instagram feed on your website is a great growth strategy. Plus, this type of feature is usually something you have to pay for. However, this Get With block allows you to promote your Instagram feed for free. And I gotta say, it looks really professional and is super easy to set up. Okay, so back at our site, the first thing you'll need to do is make sure you're at the homepage, since this is where we'll be placing the block. Then click the edit link at the top of the screen to access your WordPress editor. Then scroll down to the bottom of the page, since that's where we're gonna place the block. And then click the plus icon to add a new block. Then within the block pop-up menu, find the Instagram block, and that's gonna be within the GitWid blocks. And if you recall, we installed and activated GitWig during the setup portion of this tutorial. This will give us access to these blocks. So if you can't find this particular Instagram block, then you'll need to install and activate GitWid before moving on. Okay, so after you've added the block, you'll have the ability to connect your Instagram account from the WordPress editor. Now, as you can see, GitWid explains that you'll click the Connect Instagram Account button to authorize the app and receive your token. So go ahead and click that button. And then you'll want to authorize access to the block, so click the Authorize button. And after a few seconds, you'll see that your access token has been updated and you can actually see it and access it under the GitWid settings where it says Instagram access token. And let's head back to our site and within the block, this time click the update button and boom. The connection is established and your Instagram feed should be showing up. Now we still need to make a few adjustments in order to achieve the full width look. So on the upper left hand side of the block in that toolbar, click the change alignment button and then from the drop down, select full width. It's a little better, but we still need to make one more adjustment. So on the right hand side of the screen, under the block settings, change the columns from three to six by either sliding that lever or swapping out the number three. And look at that, looks amazing. Our Instagram feed is now full width. All right, let's preview it really quick. So click the preview button. And then you'll select preview in another tab. And then if we scroll down to the bottom of our home page, you should see your Instagram feed displaying across the entire width of your screen. Additionally, whenever you hover over each image, there's this cool effect that adds a unique and professional touch to the block. Love it. Okay, so let's go back to the editor and let's update this and push our changes live. And then back at the editor, click the update button.
And then when we visit the page, and scroll down to the bottom of the page again, You now have a professional looking Instagram feature on your homepage that can help you promote and grow your social network and following. All right, moving on. All right, we're almost there. Your website is a few minutes away from launching. But before we finish up, there are a few tips that I want to share with you. The first has to do with SEO. By default, WordPress hides your site from the search engines. That's because your site isn't optimized for the search engines when we're just starting to build it. However, now that you have a search engine friendly website that is structured correctly and has content, you're ready for the search engine bots to crawl your site. So one way to let the search engines know that your site is ready can be configured in your WordPress dashboard. So with that being said, let's head back to your WordPress dashboard. Hover your mouse over your site title and click on Dashboard. Then on the left hand side of the dashboard, hover your mouse over Settings and click on Reading. Then towards the very bottom of the Reading Settings, you'll see an option for Search Engine Visibility. And like I said, by default, WordPress discourages search engines from indexing your blog. So to encourage them to crawl and index your site, simply uncheck that box. And then click the Save Changes button, and you're good to go. Now one thing I should mention is that none of this guarantees that your blog will be indexed by the search engines. So you'll also need to submit a sitemap to all the major search engines in order for your blog to be properly indexed. Luckily, the Yoast SEO plugin takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting and automatically creates an XML sitemap for your site. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a sitemap is, it's basically an easy way for you to inform search engines about pages on your site that are available for crawling. A sitemap is a file where you can list the web pages of your site to tell Google and other search engines about the organization of your site's content. And search engine web crawlers like Googlebot read this file to crawl your website. So you can view your sitemap by going to the Features section of the Yoast SEO plugin. And to get there within your WordPress dashboard, on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over SEO and click on General. Then at the top of the Yoast SEO General Settings page, click on the Features tab. Then just make sure that the sitemap lever is switched to On. And it is. Another useful tip is to check and make sure the sitemap is configured correctly. And you can do that by viewing the sitemap URL and then copying it and pasting it on xmlsitemaps.com. And here's how you do that. So to access the sitemap URL, click on the little question mark icon and then click on the see the XML sitemap link. and this will take you to your sitemap. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but this is very important to your website's SEO. So now that you know how to access your sitemap, you'll wanna check the validity of it to ensure that Google can crawl it and index your site correctly. So to check the validity of the sitemap, copy the URL, and then go to xml-sitemaps.com. I'll put a link to this tool in the show notes. And once you're at the site, click on the SEO tools menu item. And then click the validate XML sitemap link. Then simply paste the sitemap URL in the field provided. And the tool will check if your sitemap is formatted correctly. And it is. No issues detected. Perfect. Now remember, this doesn't automatically guarantee that your blog will be on the search engine results. You'll still have to submit your sitemap to the search engines. And this is different for each search engine, but the most common search engine is by far Google. And the way to notify Google is through the Google Search Console, which is what you're looking at right now.
Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to walk you through the entire process in this video, but all you need to do is sign up for a free Google Search Console account, verify your site, and submit your sitemap. It's fairly straightforward, and I have a video that walks you through that process that you can access in the show notes titled, Verify Your Site with Search Console. But once you have your Google Search Console account, you'll just go to the sitemap section by clicking on the sitemaps tab in the sidebar. Then where it says, add a new sitemap, simply paste the URL that we copied from Yoast a few moments ago and click the submit button. This will ping Google and let their search engine bots know that your site is ready to be crawled. All right, moving on. Next, let's make sure your SSL certificate is in place. The final thing I want to cover before you launch is the SSL certificate. One of the many reasons why I recommend and partner with Bluehost is that they provide a free SSL certificate whenever you sign up with my affiliate link. Now, if you're new to the concept, an SSL basically creates a secure path for information and data to be passed back and forth online. Here's how it works. Whenever a visitor enters your SSL protected blog, your SSL certificate creates an encrypted connection to the visitor's browser. This means that any information like passwords, usernames, credit card information, etc. that's passing between your blog and their browser will be scrambled and virtually impossible for hackers to access. Additionally, when your blog is protected with an SSL certificate, a padlock icon and the HTTPS prefix will display on your visitor's browser bar. This not only notifies them that your blog is safe and secure, but it also assures your readers that you take their security seriously. Luckily, Bluehost makes it super simple to set up and check. And since your SSL certificate comes free, you can determine whether or not your SSL is activated and the HTTPS prefix is displaying all within your Bluehost customer portal. So let's head back to Bluehost. So hover your mouse over Bluehost in the upper left-hand side of the screen, your WordPress dashboard, and click on Home. And then from here, in order to get to your Bluehost account and customer portal, in the upper right-hand side of the screen, click on the Person icon. And from the drop-down, select Bluehost Account. And in a few moments, you'll be taken to the back end of your Bluehost account. Then once you're back at the Bluehost customer portal, click on the My Sites tab on the left-hand side of the screen. And then hover your mouse over your site. You should only have one, but if you have multiple, find the site you want to configure and click the Manage Site button. And this will bring you to the overall site management dashboard for your website. Now, one thing I'm going to point out is that for this portion of the tutorial, I'm using a pre-recorded video that I used for a previous blogging tutorial. As you can see, the site title is The Travel Bug and not our fitness website, but just wanted to give you a heads up that the steps are going to be the exact same. When you have some more time, I recommend you get yourself familiar with this part of the portal, but for now, we're only concerned with the security settings. So click on the security tab. Then you'll just want to make sure that the free SSL certificate switch is turned on and is green and you'll be good to go. If it's showing as unavailable, I recommend reaching out to Bluehost to make sure everything is technically in the right place. Their technical support team can get you squared away if you're running into any issues. Okay, moving on. Let's go back to WordPress really quick. So click the log into WordPress button. And here we are, it's finally time to launch your blog. This is it. After all of your hard work and after hours of following along in this tutorial, the moment you've been waiting for is here. It's time to show the world what you've been working on and it's time for you to shine. So, if you remember, Bluehost displays a coming soon page in place of your actual blog. But now that you're ready to launch, it's time to lift the curtain, remove the coming soon page, and showcase all of your hard work. So, to officially launch your blog, you'll want to go to your Bluehost dashboard. 
And a quick way to get there is to click the Coming Soon Active button at the top of your screen. Then all you got to do is click the blue Launch button. And congratulations, your website is now live. So that's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. As always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.